magic for you. Yep. So you can do basically anything. Unless you're trying to play Falling Star or Ring of Maroof, you're probably probably fine. Yeah. Our players are allowed to watch chat during the draft. I mean, they can if they want. I, think, I don't see how it could be helpful. I think we. I mean, I think last time we didn't just because that way. In in case draft in case a chat says, well, why didn't you pick this? Nope. Right. No, cons no conspiracies. Right? No conspiracies. No conspiracies. So the cards that aren't legal are like the that's the standard kind of like vintage ban list. It's yeah. Like the dexterity cards, the anti cards, uh, and then conspiracy cards don't really. There there is no right. zone for them. Really. Yeah. No conspiracies. No silver bordered nonsense. Nothing like that. Yeah, so, and everything else is fine. Like, no white bordered cards, uh, silver bordered, no white yeah. bordered cards. I mean, so I'll take a 7th edition. Right. Like, like yeah, here's no, my, you can't do that. Here's my ninth ed Teferi's puzzle box. Yeah, like, no, 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 that's banned. Yeah, you can't, you can't play that. You're going to have to play the original. Yeah, we're, sorry. We're so sorry. Yeah, but, um, no, so you have so many things. Uh, to draft that you can lose a lot like it's very easy to get lost or forget cards exist yeah I remember one of the drafts I played in we simply forgot that Dig Through Time existed oh yeah like, like we just literally forgot one of the best card drawing like card selection yep. powered with card draw cards it's so easy existed. because yeah. you you get you get into your into your pick order right you have your notes you have your plan whatever yeah. it is and you just really drill down into that and then you, you tunnel vision and you forget mm -hmm. that other cards exist you you forget you know okay well somebody else picked this card you forget that there's analogs for it you forget there's similar things mm -hmm, for sure it's tough but um it's really fun uh, you can draft a different deck literally every time. Everything is honestly viable. Yeah. Uh, you have to kind of be aware that certain cards exist, and you just have to respect those cards. Uh, like, you can't simply say, like, oh, Black Lotus doesn't exist. Like, Mox exists in this format. Tinker is legal. Right. Green Sun. Like, really disgusting you can't ignore these like unfair strategies because they're they're so they're so prevalent is there a way to access that data without completely spamming up chat not uh, double fried are you talking about the pick for uh oh i see what you're saying yeah not really honestly we don't mind uh it's fine um and as these picks get put in like you can kind of see and we'll talk about it if you have any questions as well just let us know and we can kind of talk about the history of what we have seen and think of those cards. Yeah, I've got my I've got a spreadsheet up as well that lets me search stuff up. So I'll be talking about like when stuff gets picked and what similar cards could and should be picked in these circumstances. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I guess while we're waiting, we can kind of introduce ourselves. Yeah, uh, I'm Alex Worth. Uh, I was I play a lot of Magic the Gathering. I used to play a lot more Magic. Mm -hmm. I've been a yeah. little. Uh, quiet in the scene recently. I was one of the people who kind of helped bring Popper to St. Louis. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was one of my, like, pet formats forever. It's a great format. Uh, it's a phenomenal format. Sorry, hit the mic. <laughs> uh, phenomenal format. Um, even as things have happened to it that I might not 100% agree with. Uh, basically, as far as I'm concerned, the worst thing that happened to Popper was when Magic when Wizards said, we're going to start supporting Popper. Right, um, so this unification thing is not really well, what you're looking for? Well, it's designing or? cards for Popper. Oh, okay. Popper was an accident format. Yes. That was just a beautiful mistake, honestly. Right, and I've and heard the same thing from Commander players, like, you know, people who say, oh, when they started printing these cards for Commander, this format started to go downhill. I've heard yeah. that same thing. Okay. Well, we're going to refresh our uh, our pick order sheet here and just make sure that we – it's the middle one. Oh. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. And where – Oh, okay. Well, there it is. Perfect. Yep, yeah, good. I think we're good. So it looks like we're going to get started. Yeah, we can talk about that yeah. later. Uh, basically, cards designed, like the Horizons 
like Modern Horizons right. added like seven cards to Popper that are all instantly became must plays. They're hugely powerful. Right? Yeah, it's like it's fine, it's cool. Like the car, the format's still really fun. It's able to adapt, but it's kind of rough seeing like so much happen. Yeah. Uh, so quickly, but yeah, uh, looks like they're about to start. It's going to be Alec Deshaw. Uh, I have a feeling he's going to make a pretty hard pick at first pick. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got a prediction up. It looks like. Yeah, and I will be uh, running the um, card reader. So if there, I'm falling behind. Uh, well, <laughs> that's my problem. You guys can yell at me. The players are hyped. They're they're yeah. just they're typing away in their their Excel spreadsheet here. I don't know if it was the same for you, but uh, double fried. Yes, forty five picks total. Make a 60-card deck, you get any number of basic lands, but you have to choose Wastes or Snow-Covered Plains, and you have to keep choosing those if you want that many. Like, if you want four Wastes in your deck for some reason, you'd have to yeah. dedicate four slots. Uh, I wonder what will go. Pack one, pick one. Yeah, it, it, it could be anything. Kappa. God, I love Kappa. 40-card <laughs> um, main deck. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry. Right. No, sorry, 40-card yeah. main deck. I'm sorry, I said 60. 40-card <laughs> main deck, just like any other limited format. They are um, shouting they like... They are really getting hyped up. Let's check that that uh, that sheet again. Yeah, I'm going to refresh uh -oh. it. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, one second. We did break it, so that's yeah, good. That's cool. Hey. Mark! We broke it. Mr. Mark! <laughs> Mark! <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna figure this out. Apparently, Blyden's gonna run for president. We're not. I'm not really sure what's happening, but you know, I res I respect that. I respect his candidacy. Is this spreadsheet easier to use than Word? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's a Google sheet. It should be fine. Uh, while Alex is gone, I'll introduce myself. I'm Eric Levine. I'm a I'm a judge. I I play a lot of Commander. Uh, if you go to a U.S. Magic Fest, you'll probably see me, because I'm in a lot of them. And here's Mark. Hi there. Mark's here to fix it, because we broke. Fix. He's here to fix what we broke. We don't really know how we broke it, but we did break it. Somebody drafted. Uh, somebody drafted Time Vault too late. Oh, I see. So we're gonna we're gonna be g g joining the draft already in progress here. We are about. We are eight picks in, and more picks are being made as we speak. So let's let's see if we can run these down real quick. We've trapped Elaine in here. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we've got some pretty uh, standard picks early on. Black Lotus for Alec, followed by Recall for Elaine. This is honestly pretty much the way it always goes. That's what we expected. And uh, and then the the Moxen are sort of going in in short order. Sapphire and Ruby, Ruby coming in in fourth. Is that what that's do you think about early. that? Uh, I believe that's pretty early. There's so many good dual lands and other things that you can usually draft an off color to just make like your sideboard or other cards better. Yep. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Time Vault came really late. As far as I'm concerned, that is a late Time Vault. Time usually number three. As, and honestly, there's a really good uh, reason to call number two. Yes, uh, fast bond. That's legitimate. Honestly, that's a fast bond's a, a fantastic early, card. A, fast bond's usually a second round, maybe even third round card, but I think uh, that's fine. Jet, emerald, pearl. Yeah, those are great. I like, think we may have forgotten about fast bond in the last draft. I don't remember it being taken in. in uh, time walk is still up for grabs. Yes. Yes, time time Alex walk is still out there. Quiet. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, how about now? Uh, we'll find out. But. Um, I think we are getting echo on Alex's hmm. Hmm. Well, let me try something. Oh, it's better now? Okay. Oh, cool. I just had to move it. <laughs> As it turns out, speaking into the mic helps. Oh, talking into the mic is good. I see. Uh, but yeah, so we are... That is a pretty late soul rick, I gotta say. I think. Yeah, it, it really slowed down. Yeah. Uh, which is honestly not uh, the craziest thing in the world. Soul ring is late. Uh, fast bond... I don't think Fast Punch should be a first round draft pick. It's fine. When you do something like this, what Brandon has just done, you are... He's making a statement. He's he's putting a target on his head a little bit. DC Sports, I will get back to that. That's actually a really great question that I've talked about previously. On Manifold Key, yes. Yes, yes. so um, I'll get back right back to that. I'm just going to pull up Fast Bond real quick for the chat. There is a lot more redundancy to the... There, there was already plenty of redundancy to the uh, to the time vault deck between um, Mirage Mirror, Voltaic Key, Galvanic Key, uh, 
Tezzeret, other other untappers, and adding manifold key, which is just a better voltaic key, is yeah, fantastic. So the catch with the time vault deck and why it's so good is once you have time vault, there's only really like null rod, stony silence, and the oof, the one that was just printed. Yep, the collector oof. The collector oof that really shut it down. Alex, I have echo. Hmm. I'm gonna try getting that fixed. Sorry. Uh, so that, uh, I think I see it now. It looks like in the 13 drafts that we have data on, Fast Bond has gone in about the 70s on average. Yeah, it's really early. So that first pick is, Voltaic Servant is playable in that deck. Yes. That is another good uh, Time Vault enabler. Yeah, but as I was saying, and I'll get back to Fast Bond in a second, that deck has so many enablers, but only a few actual payoffs, Fast Bond being one of them. Not fast one. Uh, time vault being one of them. Uh, is Traxxas playable? Maybe. Like, I mean, uh, towards the end, if you're like in a slow grindy deck, I think there's. Card. <laughs> like, do you think the sheet is updating? Uh, let me double check the. Because you know, Brandon. Little... Okay, it's it's not. That's interesting. All right. Yeah. All right. So one second. Okay, guys. so we just we just need to keep that up up there. It looks like oh, if I we see. minimize that, I think we. We oh, because it refreshes the screen. Yep. It's sleeping the screen. Cool. Um, great. So we'll talk about Mana Crypt. Very good card. Crypt is fantastic. Although... Um, channel. Okay, so Brandon took Channel. So Brandon did what I did yep. in my first draft. Was I knew Blue was going to get fought over incredibly hard. And said, I don't want to draft Blue then. I'm just going to fight everyone else on green. Right. He's making, a, he's making a statement. Staying out of Blue is his plan. Yeah. Um... Mana Crypt is a little dangerous in the Time Vault deck because if you have you you need to get rid of your Crypt when you when you go for Vault Key because yep. otherwise you risk you, just you blowing die. yourself up. Yep. Uh, mana Drain. Uh, it's a little early for that card, but sure. Uh, it's the best counter spell that's not free. Um, time Walk. Mark got it, so Mark saw what was getting left. Elaine actually made Wolf. What I, I did a hour long podcast with Mark about hate cards, and mm -hmm. Elaine just took the best hate card. Narset is an incredible card in this format, and it's one that went uh, pretty early in the in the last draft as well, along with uh, another War of the Spark Planeswalker that and has I, not come on the list yet. Um, Ashiok? Uh, Karn. Karn. Oh, yeah, that one as well. Yeah. Uh, Ashiok, I think, deserves being drafted in this format. Oh, I agree. Um, so Alec actually just took Tinker, mm -hmm. which is interesting because Blyden took Time Vault. Right. And Tinker, uh, you can get other great things, obviously, but Tinker and Time Vault kind of usually go together. Yes. But so Blyden's deck gets a little bit weaker because of that. Yeah, uh, breaking those up is, is a good choice by Alec. I think it, it, it weakens Blyden's deck, and it positions him well to pick up more artifact stuff. Yep, so now we see Grim Monolith. Elaine took Chase the Mind Sculptor, which is... early. I think, uh, she, I think she could have gotten Jace later if she wanted to pick up pick up some stronger counter spells, some other artifact mana, things like that. I think this would have been a good opportunity for that. Malstorm, I'll get back to you in just a second. I just want to make these last two picks. Uh, Library of Alexandria, it's a good pick. Um, Strip Mine, it's a better pick. Yes, uh, Strip, Strip Mine is an incredible pick. pick here. Uh, Mystic Forge, okay. Widen's going crazy. Uh, Mystic Forge is one of the cards that I uh, put in my notes for new, new cards that are going to be very impactful in this format. I think Mystic Forge is going to be insane. Yeah, for let me Blyden. pull up Mystic Forge real quick. Sorry, I'm trying to keep track with this draft while also keeping track with chat. It's a little... It's tough. It's a little tough. Sorry, guys. And for organizing your own Vintage Root History drafts, the, the hardest thing, just like anything else where, where you're dealing with a large group of people, is scheduling. So just figuring out, just finding people who are familiar with, like, legacy, vintage, other old formats, and getting them together in one, in one room is the hardest part. If you can do that, you can make this happen. So we're seeing, um, we're seeing something that I notice happens which I disagree with, is Brandon took a pretty early Demonic Tutor, and mm. Cody immediately took... Oh, the yeah, tutor. these reactive picks. These reactive picks, which, honestly, you can ignore. Like, you, yep. there's, remember, you have the entire history of Magic. There are other tutors. It's better to find what you win the game with and the cards you absolutely need for your deck to function. Right. Like, Steven currently just took Bayou Vernon Catacombs. That means now he can play any combination of green, black, red, blue, anything... And as long as, like, green is in there, he can now pretty easily fetch black or vice versa. 
I think I think fetch lands are criminally underrated in this format. Yes. They usually they go so late. They yeah. should be third to fourth round picks. They go they go in the the seventies to the to the hundreds, and they they really should I agree be third third fourth fifth round. Hey, Chris Piccolo. this is sweet. Thank you. We Thank you very much. much. Yeah, we really also, enjoy this format. You're my favorite Magic player. <laughs> you're one of the reasons I play Magic. Um, cool. Uh, but yeah, honestly, yeah, find people that are interested in it. It's even people who are like, oh, I don't play Vintage or I don't play Legacy. It's like, I'm a popper and modern player, right. and I play this format. Like, I love this format. I write about casual Commander. I've never, ever yeah. been good at Magic in my <laughs> life, and yet I still, I can still play this format. Yeah, if I can great. play this format, so can you. Um, did Chris tweet this out? Oh, That's awesome. Thank you. Chris. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, I'm going to check the... Uh, That's unreal. Yeah. Uh, Cody is doubling down on this tutor pick with Imperial Seal. I mean, I assume Cody... So Cody has fast mana and black tutors... He could be playing Reanimator. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate it. Wow, that. that's amazing. We yeah. really appreciate it. I think what Cody is doing is is his plan was disrupted by Brandon taking the demonic tutor, and so he's he's reacting to that by just, you know, pushing cards up in his pick order that are, are related to the tutor. And and you know, there's there's Vamp Tutor, there's Imperial Seal, there's Cruel Tutor, there's Grim Tutor. There are plenty of other ways to get the cards that you need out of your deck. I guess I don't think Cody might have this in mind, but one thing you could be doing is he's taking all these tutors super early and people might just be like, Oh, I need to take tutors now and wasting other high value picks. Okay. And maybe like diluting. Like there is honestly uh I only did one of these. Uh, <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> nice job, Chris. Uh, what a surprise. <laughs> Shocking. Good uh, magic there player is, wins. There is a level of like chaos you can honestly sow by like taking cards earlier and just being like, oh, God, I, gotta, I need to do this right now. Oh, yeah. You can create like a run on the bank on tutors effectively if that's yeah. if that's your goal. And then everyone looks and they're like, wait, I don't have my game plan anymore. Yes. Like, but you have to capitalize on that. You yeah, have to take really that tough. opportunity and turn it into something. And only, I think, certain spots can do it. I yes. think only one, two, seven, and eight can really get away with it's it. It's much easier on the wheel. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. Looks like it, it slow down a notch there. Oh, uh, Brandon's, Rainforest. Brandon's taking Misty. I think that's a great pick here. Yeah, I do too. I actually, of everyone's deck right now, um, I really like Elaine's first two picks. Yes. A lot. I don't really like the Jace pick. The Jace is not. Um, Mark's picks are all defendable, even though I think Library is slightly overrated. Library is fine. I think I think Library is a reasonable card, but you have to have ways to get it going. And Mark has missed the boat on a lot of the the opportunities yeah. to keep his hand full, or yeah, some yeah. of them anyway. Well, I mean, like, there's still plenty. Yeah. Uh, I really like Joe's deck. Um, I don't think I like the Mana Drain, but I like the Strip Mine and Ancient Tomb. He's basically capitalizing. Lands are really important yes. in this format. Uh, people, I think, forget. Uh, Lands are Jeff super underrated. seems to have a plan, and he's no one's really interrupting him, so it looks like he's going to be playing like some artifact. Just big, big mana artifact yeah, stuff. Yeah, which is fine. Brandon's deck looks like where it's shaping up. I really like as well. Uh, and then we have Cody. I don't really know what Cody's doing. Yeah, Cody I mean, He did get Black Mox, so right. he does have... That, okay, uh, Prismatic Vista went. That's a good pick. That's a fantastic yeah, pick. Yeah, it's literally a fetch land in this format. Um, do you think... So, okay, do you think Joe or Brandon... Oh, there it was, oh, Karn. Karn the Great Creator is here. Never mind. Let's talk about Karn. I was Karn. waiting for it. <laughs> yep. So, so when's, that, uh, when's that lattice going to come? Is Alec going to gonna pull that on the wheel or uh, here? He wait. I, I would wait, too. But yeah, uh, it can get hate draft. It, I, if someone hate drafts that, congrats to them. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, right. he took Blightsteel. That's, Steel. A, That's a, a, win condition. a great win so, condition with Tinker. So Alex's deck is playing Tinker. Uh, it's a Tinker deck. He's yep. going to tutor. Like He's probably going to get Mystical or going to try getting Mystical. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine is confused. <laughs> She's just terrified by, by the current state of yeah, affairs, which so, I understand. Um, Alex... <laughs> <laughs> it is the end times. Thank you, Elaine. So Alec is going to try basically turn one, like play Island or uh, Island. I guess Solar Ring's gone. So he's going to somehow generate right. some fast mana. Yeah, like Vault is gone, Crypt is gone. Island Black Lotus, Grim Monolith, Tap Grim Monolith for mana. Uh, 
tinker tinker out blight steel on one. Yeah, smile at your opponent. Uh, like, and and that's a I think that's, that's not a, a that's not a crazy combination. In, in a forty card format, that's very achievable. And and with the London Mulligan continuing to be in play, because last time was obviously our our first draft with the London Mulligan. Mm -hmm. That's you know that's still a possibility for him even on six cards. Yeah, so that's Alex's deck. He's going to basically take tutors payoffs, fast mana, and consistency, like card draws, ponder, or other things like that, and then protection at the very end. Uh, although protection's going a little early, force of will, I guess only force of will and mana drain. Yeah, like force of negation still around. Force of negation will come around uh, pretty Lotus soon, most likely. I mean, DC Sports, that is a real line. Like, that's a thing. Yep. Like, he can get Ornithopter at the very end. As yeah. well, too. No one's going to draft an Ornithopter. Just, you know, so. an, an Ornithopter, a Phyrexian Walker, whatever flavor of zero mana artifact Alec is looking for. Yeah. So we kind of have an idea what Alec's going for. We can now look at Elaine, uh, see what Elaine looks like. Elaine's drafting blue white control, yep. as far as I'm concerned. That is, that is the. Well, she's, blo she's drafting blue control. Elaine in almost every format. Yeah, Elaine will will draft blue control any any time she gets a chance. She'll play that deck no matter what. I ooh double fried just showed Pixie the sign on. See the sign on yes. on um one sixty nine round twenty two. That's honestly too early for it as well. Yeah, you uh, can get you can get that thirty fifth round. Yeah, I mean, uh, but and there's there's other artifact lands too. You don't need like it doesn't have to be seed. It's nice to have the blue mana, but it doesn't have to be seed right. at the sign on. And Elaine revealed her hand unsurprisingly and took New Teferi. Oh my gosh. New Teferi is really good at locking out a lot of these decks with instant speed interaction, just saying, hey, you have to play on my terms now. And I think yeah. that that's huge in a format like this where everyone's trying Look to... Look how fast everything else just went. Snapcaster Mage into Ren and Six. You, so, Ren and Six before Crucible. That's interesting. How do you feel about that? The minus one doesn't really pick off very many right. relevant things. So I feel like I, I was surprised. I would take Crucible. I would have thought Joan, I, if I'm Brandon here, I I'm very excited. Actually, I would have taken the creature first. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, Ram and Excavator? Excavator, Excavator, which I'm not going to spell today. I would, um, I would be surprised if Brandon doesn't take either Excavator or Crucible he here. Did. He has... Actually, he can wait until it comes back around from Stephen and Coey. Which Cody. I would take both. You could, yeah, you could just snap off both would, and leave that's Joe. That's I did yeah. my, on a wheel pick, and it was like, oh, no one can touch what I do now. Right, uh, and if Brandon just if if Brandon just does that and takes fetch up, oh, he's got the polluted delta here, so it does look like he's on the fetch land plan at least. Yeah, yeah so, so this, this is where, where these can, can yes, strip, strip mine. mine. Um, uh, uh, but this is, this is where these picks can affect other people's picks and their game plans. So we see fetch lands go honestly fairly where I think they should be. Going. This is right for fetch lands yeah, in my opinion. But like I see them drop to fifteenth round all the time. It's, um, just, it's too late. But then we see a little bit like Teferi Time Raveler and Ren and Six and people are like, oh God, like Ren and Six, what's gonna happen? Here's Cody showing his hand with the Entomb. He's he's showing us Crystal that he's... is less redundant than Ren and Six. That's fair. Yeah. Um yeah. It's fair. I just think with cards like uh, Fast Bond existing in this format, or Asusa, or Oracle of Moldiah. Ren and Six is great, but Crucible allows less interaction. Yes. <laughs> um, oh, uh, Cody got Entomb, so now we know. Yep, he showed his hand with the Entomb here. We know he's going for a reanimator strategy. Steven, meanwhile, sees Brandon just pushing the fetch land train along, and, yeah, is, Steven and is getting on. Kind of, this is actually a little rough, because they're both taking a lot of fetch lands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're in competition here. Okay, so let's see. So we have Jeff on Tolarian Academy. Unsurprised, he's going to make a lot of mana. He's yes. going to play some really scary things. He knows where to put Tolarian Academy. Unlike unlike some people, he knows what deck to put that in. <laughs> Ooh, survival of the fittest. Oh, wow. So, okay. So Steven has a creature-based plan. So, And he's getting the mana ramp, the mm -hmm. mana fixing to play whatever he needs. Right. Cody taking the reanimate here, I think, is... is uh, I mean, it seems early, but... I don't know. Like, he's going to need cards like that. It's hard to say. I think it's fine. I mean, the thing is, no one's going to hate him. Right, that's true. Um, it's impossible to hate draft in this format, as far as I'm concerned. It's very difficult. You can draft silver bullets. Yes, you can take... And there's there's a lot of great hate cards. There's some new hate cards, actually, that came out in M20 that yeah. I'm wondering if, we'll, if, if those cards will come up. I'm not going to say their names, just in case they can hear me. But... If if they don't get picked, I'll talk about how sad I am. Is it S T O and E Y? S T O N Y. I'm just bad at spelling. That's all good. So like cards like Stony Silence, you'll often see make it to almost the last round. Right. Uh, 
I didn't do it correctly. Whatever. It's once um, it's once people are are convinced. Once people know what the other people are yeah, drafting, and they, they and realize they, they can't beat it. Oh, it's time for hate picks, right? Yeah. It's it's round thirty seven. So I guess reanimate was pretty. Like no one was going to draft it. Right. Uh, it could have gone for something else. Which reanimate usually goes in the nineties. It looks yeah. like. Oh, thank you. Uh, appreciate that. I'm it's exclamation point. Ah, uh, the exclamation point goes first. Yeah, I use a different, uh, uh, not Discord, but a Discord-like app that you do it afterwards, and it's oh, yeah. me for all <laughs> other um, types of things. Oh, speaking uh, of of those chatbot uh, commands, we should talk about the interview command because we are about halfway through this yes. pack, right? Yeah. So we're gonna interview our drafters in and around uh you can at interview and then their name if i remember correctly mm -hmm. so exclamation point interview uh their name so i'm going to put so a, yeah we're going to do an example here uh view and then i think you just type mark just mark yeah, yeah. yeah. that's their first names and so i have voted to interview mark caterberg uh if you want to see us interview someone you just at interview them, and we will interview them. Yeah, and we're going to do two interviews. We're going to stop basically between the 15-card packs. So after wow. after round 15 and round 30, we will interview somebody. Look at this. Mishra's workshop for Alec. I was going to say, Mishra's workshop, yeah, but Jeff just took a Mox Opal at number six. Wow. <laughs> That's really early for Mox, because the thing about Mox is... It's hard. It's a good card. Obviously, yeah, it's a good card. But like, it's hard to make work. You do need a lot of artifacts. It is a lot of work to make opal. Yeah. Know, opal happen. And like, we look at people like Brandon will never take a mox opal. Nope. Cody probably won't take a mox opal. Stephen might. But it's Joe possible. Like but I don't think Stephen is is interested in the opal. Uh, pulling off that survival the fittest there, I think Stephen is going to go a different direction with with some of his mana. Yeah. yeah no. Jeff is going unbelievably hard on the Mystic Forge plan. Yep. It's, uh I'm excited to see it. I kind of want to see him just like play, just play Cheerios. Yes. Oh yes. I if 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 I had been drafting today, Mystic Forge was going to be my plan, and so I'm really excited to see Jeff take this take this to the limit here. Yeah. Change your vote, DC. Go for it. I won't stop you. <laughs> Yeah, Another Elaine. Fetch land taken. Arcbound Ravager. Wow. wow. That's that's a gutsy pick. I'm not. That's a pick for Jeff more than it is a pick for. Yeah, I'm not sure what Alec plans to do with the Ravager here. Um, unless he's doing some populate shenanigans, that is, which he doesn't have anything. Yeah, for. he's he's not proliferating here. He's so only got the, the Karn to proliferate onto other than the Ravager. So this is like that. Oh, and Elaine took Force of Negation. Yep. At six. That's a good pick. That's a great pick. I think Mark taking spell pierce sort of missed out on on the he better out of our spell. Yep. 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 Um, so so Arcbound Ravager. Ravager, this card looks great. great. It is great. Yeah. And decks that can support it. Uh, Blyden's deck, for example. Yeah, Blyden's deck looks like it would be a great Arcbound Ravager deck. This is the part where you see someone doing something scary, and I think you get scared. Yes. And you take something. Oh, I'll ruin you. But the thing is, Jeff still has. There are picks. thousands of cards for Jeff to choose from, and some of them are even good. Uh, hundreds of them are good. Mental misstep, um, not the greatest. It's just a little too... You're only stopping fast mana, which seems good, but this isn't like traditional vintage where like everyone has everything. Yes. Like, everyone has a Black Lotus and three mocks minimum, and you need mental misstep to protect from their mental missteps. Uh, there's only one. Null Rod, there we go, yep. finally. Uh, Null Rod, and then Wasteland from Joe. Wasteland showing you know, showing up in the deck with Ren and Six and Strip Mine. I yeah, think I really like deal. Joe's deck, I'm going to be honest. Um, yeah. I don't know what it's doing yet. He doesn't have a win condition, it doesn't need one. He doesn't need to, he, his win condition is to is to get his opponent to concede out of frustration <laughs> with no I, lands. I have like. won multiple <laughs> games in Vintage Rich History. Oh, yeah. Doing. Like. Yeah, they just say, all right, well, I can't win this game. Yeah, this like, is terrible, let's just move on. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, sometimes you win with a Rex Age. Yeah. And that's all you need. I mean, win conditions are overrated. You just you just crush your opponent's dreams, and then you you slowly. Brandon took Mox Diamond. Mox Diamond, yes. That's a good one. Especially that would be honestly better in Joe's deck. It looks like. No one's taking Joe's payoffs. He obviously is going for. Um, 
I could see Brandon. This is where Brandon, if he wanted to, could honestly make a pick for uh, Ravnock Excavator or yeah, I think, Crucible. I think and really hurt Joe while also helping his deck. Having taken Mox Diamond now, he's really cemented himself in a place where he wants Excavator and Crucible, mm -hmm. and I think that would be huge. Uh, Thalia is a really good card. Yes, uh, Thalia is great. There is a hate deck in this card of just like making things more expensive. It's blue white, maybe red mixed in for like a blood moon or something random but it's a good deck it's fine stuff uh weeb kiba thank you for yeah following. thank Appreciate you it. yeah hope you're enjoying the we're seeing more uh, uh, fetch lands go. i'm actually very excited to see all these fetch lands go this is jeff good since divining top for the Ma mystic forge it's very obvious what jeff is doing i don't know exactly how this deck is going to win but it's going to be fun to watch well i mean jeff can jeff can Generate a lot of storm Seth with Demand. Mystic Forge and Sunsea's Divining appreciate Top. Follow and Chris Pakula. Oh, thank us. you both. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Uh, Windswept Teeth. Steve Hagen takes. Don't change your name, Hagen. The Fetchland <laughs> Wars continue. Yeah, it's fine. DC Sports following. Oh my gosh. Frozen Ice 16. Look at all these followers. Guys, thank this you. This is awesome. We're having a great time. Hope you are as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, the face thing just to make it easier, so you kind of see who it is. Uh, Dak on Darkblade, I hope you have enough lands. Appreciate the follow. This um, is amazing. Oh, it's so fun. Okay, so uh, Elaine took Ponder. Um, it's a good card. It's a really good card. It's a fantastic piece of card selection. The cantrips, though, going so early, man. Like, this is a kind of hotly debated pick. Um, what's your thought on, like, these cards like that going as early as possible? I think there's a lot of redundancy between, you know, Ponder, Preordain, Serum so Vision, Brainstorm, Scour All Possibilities, Opt. Um, Echo's getting a bit worse. Sorry, one sec. There's there's such a huge amount of redundancy in those cantrips that I Oop. think taking one that... Oh, here's the Crucible. Here's the Crucible. Uh, Wall Snuggler, thank you for the follow. We appreciate it. Uh, Deathrite Shaman, good pick. Uh, Great pick. Good for... It hates sideboards. It hates graveyard shenanigans. It gets around things. It accelerates you. <laughs> That's a good card. I think uh, I think Stephen taking that here is also a statement to Brandon. He's saying I'm not going to back yeah, off yeah, of yeah. my it's land like, related plan. Weird. You need to blink first. <laughs> and this is this is how Stephen successfully bullied me out of some cards in the last VRD. And his persistence is going to pay off, I think. And meanwhile, Joe's just sitting there like, could you guys stop taking graveyard? Meanwhile, land matters cards. Leiden has has gone full combo with Ethereum, Ethereum sculptor, sculptor, divining top, and Mystic Forge. Do you think he's going to get the um? The helm that makes things cheaper. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Uh, helm of. Uh, oh. Geez. Awakening. Yeah. He's going to do the helm of awakening. Sensei's divining top. Right. Commander combo works with Ethereum sculptor too. It's the same. It's the same thing. He's going to generate infinite storm, and he's going to do. How does he win? Something. Is he just going to grape shot a guy? Yeah. I mean, he can. He can grape shot you to death. He can play Aether Flux Reservoir, which I think would go well in his Mystic Forge deck. So why did Jeff? This is what we call a softball in the business. Mm -hmm. um, why did Jeff? take uh, Ethereum Sculptor instead of Helm of Awakening. Well, Helm of Awakening, this soft, this is a very soft ball. Helm of Awakening is, is a wonderful slow. card <laughs> that, that reduces the cost of your spells, but it also reduces the cost of your opponent's spells. Ah, wow, that's true. Yeah, it's a, it's a symmetrical effect, and if you can't go off and win the turn that you play it, um, it's a lot worse than the Ethereum Sculptor, which I was you can gonna speculatively say, leave in play. A it is a creature. It can attack for one. You can go get that Ren and Six with it, keep that keep that planeswalker down yeah because i don't think uh jeff's plan is to win by attacking but <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> having a creature can be good and it's not like there's a ton of lightning bolts flying around in this format yeah for sure uh exactly one lightning yeah bolt <laughs> well one. there's you lightning know. strikes once lightning bolt lightning, lightning strike, strike. <laughs> just one card yes <laughs> I mean, it just you know, there's there's infinite burn spells, but also no one's no one's gone full red deck. Which... I haven't seen a full red deck in a while, and yeah. I think it's legitimately good. I um, I agree. I think it's a, a good deck, and I'm scared of it. It's just not a deck I want to play. It's a hard deck. To, it it takes some guts. Yeah. Um, also, the white weenie deck, the just like low to the ground, one drop, one drop, yeah. two drop. Like Isamaru and you know other two ones for one. Has a red card even been picked? If you count Mox Ruby as a red card, um, <laughs> yes, it has. But, but no, there has not been a red card picked. Um, Alex is is com Alex is committing with Foundry Inspector and Lodestone Gold. I here. don't like either of those. Ones. I don't think these are great picks here. Let's take a look at Foundry Inspector. Yeah. I think Foundry Inspector is a really good card. It is. But it's really it's seeing a lot of play in Vintage. I've heard. Yes, but it costs a couple mana. Three, if I remember. Three, yes. Uh, energy Flux. Uh, Elaine is just Ooh. giving a big middle finger to Jeff, Alec, and to a lesser degree, 
I mean, everyone playing ev Mox. Everyone. I think I think uh, Energy Flux is a huge pick here, just because there are there are multiple decks that she can lock out with it, and a couple decks that she can just really tax with it. Uh, Let, it's less Alex, appreciate one. you in stream. Good seeing you. How's it going, uh, Alex? He is a uh, control player in St. Louis who has a really fantastic. Uh, Eric, there's a book on the wall next to you that you might want to grab. Is it the Gush book? I think it's the Gush book. Where is the Gush book? Um, Do you see it? It's by Medina. It's the Gush book. I don't know where it is, but it's there. <laughs> it's the Gush book. Uh, Alec, Les Alex runs a really awesome... Uh, someone audible in a mono red. We won't judge. I agree. I yes. want to see it. Uh, Les Alex runs a really awesome uh, control podcast. Yep. Uh, really good. You should check it out. It's on his Twitch you can just click on his name and see it. Uh, people are putting like weird little things. <laughs> Sylvan Library, great card, good card advantage. You'll find the right card. The deck is the, it just finds the right card. Transmute Artifact, another good yeah, card. Yeah, Spliden picking up the transmute artifact. transmute artifact for you see that's a card that Alex should take. Right, because yeah. he's playing Tinker. He already. can take he can take Tinker, Transmute Artifact, reshape. Um, you can go red for cards like Goblin Engineer. There's a lot of possibilities for that sort Joe of effect. Could, Joe could do mono red with... Uh, Joe could play like medium red, splashing green, and it'd be pretty fun to watch. I don't know how good it'd be. He'd need a little bit more prison art pieces, like mm -hmm. Blood Moon yeah, and you, other things Blood like Moon, that. Crucible, stuff like that. Or not Crucible, uh, Chalice, rather. Uh, Who's going to grab the last fetch? And the last fetch has been taken. Yep, uh, Cody's Cody got that Arid Mesa. Yep, and then Savannah. Now we're seeing a smattering of dual lands. The dual lands are less important, honestly. One, you have the shocks and the duels. Two, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, there's um, other. There are other fetchable dual lands besides the 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 alpha yeah, duels even and the, the shocks. cycles and the battle lands. Yep, those are all totally playable. Yeah, E Witness, good magic card. Mm -hmm. Survival of the fittest with E Witness is a fun combo. That's a fantastic combo. Uh, shockingly, Alex is really digging. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the blue white control deck is right up his alley. Yeah, yeah no, no surprise there. I want to look at Transmute Artifact just because I really think that's a pick Alex should have made. It's a great card, and it's yeah. a card that that I played. Uh, and like to his credit, I'm not like crushing Alex at all. No. This is a really hard format, and this is his first time doing it. And you're gonna make mistakes. Like that's kind of the that's we're we're playing this yeah. at kind of a it's a Sunday morning. We're having a good time. Uh, no one's gonna get mad at each other. Yeah, and like, we we're we are at level of investment. Our level of stress is is basically zero. We're not. You can see that room. These these players are shouting at each other. They're they're memeing. They're memeing really really hard the whole time. And there's there's a lot yeah. more pressure in that room than there is in here. For sure. Uh, Mark took gush. That's a terrible pick. Um, but don't let him know I said that. Yeah, it's no good. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's a very high cost. Uh. Two islands is a little bit more uh, than you think it is. Yes. With the amount of lands you're going to be playing. And you could wait. You could wait and get Gush. He could have gotten Gush whenever he wanted. How unreasonable is it to force Hyper Aggro Mono Red? It is not unreasonable at all. It's super fine. Here's the thing, though. You do it, everyone knows you're doing it. Yes. And the sideboard cards against you are devastating. They're incredibly powerful. Yeah. All of these, all of those old-timey color hosers are in play, and they are unreal powerful. Yeah. Um, on this channel, there is a interview with me and Mark Caterberg where I talk about color hosers, hate cards, sideboard hate, and all that. And I talk about the validity of drafting it, and I talk about what's good in it and like what to avoid. And the color hosers are what I talk about a lot, like the final 20 minutes. Yep. Does everyone get access to cop red in this? <laughs> 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 Ooh, one person. topical. Uh, but well, we won't we won't be showing you any pictures of deck lists today. I can promise you yeah, that. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> um, typically, it's not fast enough. It, yeah, I mean, sometimes it isn't, but sometimes it just beats people down. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Like sometimes you play a sulfuric vortex and you just kind of oh. stare at your opponent. And you're like, hey, like you have one and a half turns left. Um, and then sometimes people play channel. And they're like, hey, I just 15 with myself, and I'm like, cool, I fire blast you, you're dead. Like, <laughs> Weissman messaged you last night? I'm not surprised after uh, some of the tweets that got sent out. <laughs> I am glad that they're they're replaying the uh, the kind of the, the, the back end of that tournament with the X ones. That is pretty cool. Um, 
Yep, here go the, the ABU duels. It's yeah, happening now. I think, honestly, people are looking to see which ones haven't been taken yet. Yep. Because, <laughs> like, once one of them goes, they all kind of start. Right. It's the, that reactive draft. They all right. come in right around the same point because, yeah, people... It just reminds you. And here's Helm of Awakening. Blyden is staying on plan. Yeah, good pick. Uh, he doesn't need uh, very much mana fixing. He's no. playing a colorless deck. Volcanic Island is good. So I do see Joe playing some kind of, like, teamer value. I don't know how good it's going to be. Yeah. It's going to be fun to play, but it's going to it looks a little weak. The too. games that it wins are going to be really entertaining and they're going to take some they're going to take they're some gonna time. They're going to frustrate the hell out of you. Oh people. yeah, but um, but, but I think like, that the these linear decks are just going to run over this strategy a lot of like the time. Unless like Joe starts filling his decks with hate pieces. Yep. Which is totally viable. I'm not sure what to think yet, but do you think it's possible? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say, right? Not being there, it's 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 pretty much impossible for us to evaluate any kind of claim in the absolute. But like, anything could e either thing could have happened. Neither thing looks very good. That's my my overall feeling on the matter. Uh, Elaine taking dig through time. Ah, the forgotten dig through the time. First vintage Rits History Drafts in St. Louis. Uh, around round 42, we all kind of looked up and was like, oh, Dig Through Time's a card that exists. We forgot. Yep. Alec is, is, is leaning into the uh, the mana here with City of Traitors and has taken a new direction with Chalice of the Void. What do you think about this? Um, you, don't seem, you don't seem to love it. I don't think it's great. I mean, you can Chalice on zero. Yes. On turn one and just kind of get you, but... Elaine can't lose. Uh, Elaine, for sure, 100% can lose, let me tell you. Elaine's deck looks fine, but there are some very linear decks that are going to get underneath what Elaine's trying to do right now. Yep, it's going to be it's going to be hard for her to, to interact with uh, with Brandon's deck, potentially, if he can, or, or with Joe's deck, if Joe can get his strip mine nonsense going. Yeah, for sure. Um, Chalice is a tough pick. It's just, like, so yeah. narrow. When I think of great hate cards, I don't think of Chalice. I think of Collector. Right. <laughs> like, it's not... This This is not necessarily, like, a, a Chalice or three ball type of format because you're not playing against these decks that are just, like, here's every Mox and every low-cost card yeah. in the world because that's not how this format works. Yeah, like, if I'm Joe right now, I actually look at... Uh, Collector Roof. Yes. Pretty seriously. I'm like, oh, that's a really good card. Collector Roof is fantastic. I look at... Like the, the cards that have the ability to interact. I look at Slime Ball. Like, mm -hmm. yep. I look at Rex Age. I look at cards that like one, like get me up a card while also putting a body on the board that will kill my opponent. Because like you can stall as much as you can, but a linear combo is still a linear combo. Eventually, will acquire the resources to beat what is against it. Right. Even if you you're playing, pressure. you know, just just Seal of Primordium or Thought of Adele. That's a little. That's a, that's a spicy pick. That is um, a spicy pick. I think it's main deckable. Yes. Uh, it's a creature. It's not like an embarrassment. Uh, and all you got to do is hit him. And is you... relevant. It's yeah. a two-two. And if you hit like if you hit Jeff before he can do his thing, oh my you just gosh, take Mystic Forge. You just kind of smile at you Jeff. Can, yeah, you can just pull pull the key piece out of his deck and say, "Good luck, uh, man." I like the Day's pick as well. The Honestly, Day's that, pick is good. That's a much better pick than the Gush pick. It's better than the Gush pick. It's better than the Spell Pierce pick, I think. I think Day's is an amazing piece of interaction in a format like this. Uh, just to get back to some followers that I missed, uh, Callie Galetto, I uh, appreciate the follow. Uh, QVDV, thank you again. Appreciate it. And CG, CJ Deathblade. There's a lot of Deathblades yeah. following us today. Yeah, Deathblade, Blackblade, a lot of, you know, a lot of sword a lot imagery. Of swords, a lot of swords and magic. Um, we appreciate that. Defense Grid, that's a good pick. Ooh, Defense Grid, this is a good hate card. Uh, Venusaur, appreciate it. Uh, man, spelling <laughs> is hard, guys. Sorry. It's uh, hard. And then Thurst, uh, Thrust and Falco. Uh, terrible player in Smash, but uh, appreciate the pick. Yep, yeah. Falco's trash, sorry. Falco's terrible. I'm, I've, I've been a Sheik main for my, my entire natural life. So. Captain Falcon, baby. Nice. We needed that buff. <laughs> I love how the pick bot, when you put the Kappa emoji, <laughs> says Nexus of Fate Kappa doesn't exist. But it would like you to know when Necromancy is <laughs> You ran a Pauper Rotisserie draft. Ooh, I'd be interested in that. That is awesome. Yeah. And I want to do that. That sounds great. I'm actually going to talk to Mark about that because I want to do that yeah. so bad. I would do a Pauper Rotisserie draft. 100%. 
It'd be tough, man. Blue would get picked over so quick. Oh, so quickly. Green and white would actually be really good just because of the uh, just creatures. Yeah, just, just like, a lot of... Like, here's a 2-3 flyer for 3. Yeah, just with... just good rate. Just, yeah, you're... Oh, Time Twister. Oh, Twister is here. Which is a little weird in his deck, but... Um... What is Brandon doing? And I say this knowing full well what Brandon yeah, is I doing. Say, you were <laughs> I know you know it. I just wrote Time Twister. And uh, Cody's picked up his first reanimator target with Gristlebrand here. It's the big one. Yep. Um, honestly, Iona and Gristlebrand are the top two reanimating targets. They in this are format. huge. Uh, after that, what? Like, Chancellor's annoying. There's... Yeah. Oh, Dak Faden by Joe. Joe's playing Teamer. Yeah. Just... and stuff. I actually am excited to see Joe's deck live. It's going to be really hard to build correctly. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a deck that honestly is going to at best go like 5 2. Yeah. Like if he plays it really well and he gets the right cards. Right, but he can play top four. He can get, you know, into another draw VRD sevens. with it. Draw uh, sevens with fast bond. Yikes. Can't be yeah. Good. <laughs> um, That's a you know scary what? deck. I appreciate that. I deserve that. <laughs> You're right. And uh, Alex, thanks for the uh, shout out. Uh, STL paper popper dog. Oh, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to change my uh, insta to that. Nice. Uh, giver of runes. Ooh, uh, giver of runes. I mean, Mom is better. Well, right? but he's valuing the one two here, maybe as a reaction to Ren and six, I, or or is he looking for protection from colorless? I'm not. I think the protection from colorless yeah. is more valid than Ren and six. Yeah. Because you have three decks that are currently playing colorless. There's a lot of colorless stuff running around and being able to. But it doesn't save you. You know what I'm saying? No. Like, um... It just it just creates another blocker. Okay, so I think I'm figuring out what Brandon's doing. Oh yeah. It's starting to make more sense, but I'm going to wait a couple more You see the wheels? So yeah, we'll... I'm seeing the wheels. We'll, we'll be able uh, to talk about it soon, it looks like. Cody. Uh, I don't know if Cody's deck is a Yogg deck, but hmm. sure, it's a good card. Yeah, it's a good card, but I'm not, I'm not sure like, what he's going to... he doesn't have gonna... Black Lotus. He doesn't have... Yeah, he's, you know... I mean, I guess if he gets disrupted and, like, gets his reanimate... Sure. ...in the he graveyard. Can, and he can pick up some rituals and do whatever There's it is the he's trying key. to do. Yep. DC, you called it. Now, you see how manifold he got key. to wait so long for it? Yes. He could honestly have waited longer. He could have waited longer because if somebody else takes manifold Although key, I that's see, fine. I can see him getting a little jumpy with Alec uh, kind of being all over the place. It's hard to... Uh, it, it, one of the scariest things about drafting is when you're drafting with people who are like all over. You're like, yeah. well, I have no idea what you're gonna take. When it's hard to when it's hard to predict what these what the other drafters are doing, and with seven other people at the yeah. table entering things into a spreadsheet, it is hard. Yeah. yeah. Um. Like you look at Elaine, she's just been drafting. She's on plan, right? Yeah. It's like you know what Elaine's drafting. You know Elaine doesn't care about your man. Whereas right? Joe just took mission briefing, and you you sit there Predicts and you go. Has not been picked. What's yet. happening? Are you sure it's playable? <laughs> Thanks, Draftbot. Um, no, predict, predict could come up, uh, probably in Elaine's deck, um, theoretically. Elaine or Mark. Yeah, Mark could play predict too, that's true. Manifold Key is such a, such a good time vault enabler though, and it's, I think it's going to be good in, in Jeff's deck regardless, just because of the ability to untap other things. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that's, the time vault's not the only thing he'll be able to key, but obviously that's what he wants to key. Yeah, for sure. I didn't miss everything. No, you didn't, Lone Raider. No. Uh, Hesh Seed, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Sorry, I didn't see you get there. Uh, Mark on this true name nemesis, taking a, a win card. condition. It's, I yeah. mean, it's a great... I had it in my... You, you equip a GTA to it, and the game ends yeah. very quickly. Uh, I had it in my Time Vault deck last time, and, you know, when, when somebody honestly, said, what's your win condition, I was like, well, here's my true name nemesis. Okay, yep, I won't be able to interact with that no matter what. Yeah, um... Man, that's a hard one to say. Uh, Euripides13. If I butchered your name, I apologize. <laughs> but thank you for the follow. Uh, brain freeze. Uh, that's a legitimate way to win the game. That is um, a that is a that possibility is a for Blyden here. Yep. A creature-based permanent untap effects playable in a format like Fature. Yeah, they're fine. That, that's DC. That is why it's impossible to hate on Jeff's deck. Yes. Is because at the end of the day, he can play a cure as follower and. It still gets the job. Yeah, he can play Vizier of Tumbling Sands if he needs to. Does that untap everything or just creatures? Uh, tumbling Sands untaps anything. Anything, okay, yeah. It's you can permanent. You can cycle it and untap your Time Vault. That's adorable. Um, I hadn't even thought of that. I think Elaine's a little stuck here because I think she might have gotten her pick stolen. Right, <laughs> oh no, I think I think Mark sniped, sniped her true her. name. V-Click is good. Um, yeah, it's fine. 
I like your name better than VClick. But... Oh, for sure. But but Click is at least you know it, it it'll disrupt some of these other decks yeah, if she can get it down. Scales. Okay, so we see. Oh, Alec is doing something. So he's doing like the Throne of Geth deck. Right? Yeah. Is that what it is? The Populate Modern deck. The yeah, the, the the Hardened Scales deck in Modern, right? With yeah. with all this proliferate or nonsense. Or he might be playing Tron Dice. Mm. <laughs> oh, Dice Factory. <laughs> yes, yeah, we could might... see a core tapper out of Alec here in a few yeah. picks. Well, uh, hopefully. <laughs> A few picks. Yeah, yeah but right about pick Around 43. 43 yeah. <laughs> walking, he, he, walking Ballista is the pick here from Alec as well. So he uh, is going he, in. Yeah, it is super hard to hate on Time Vault. Mm -hmm. It's tough. That's a first for me as well with that hardened skill. Can we explain Manifold Key being better than Voltaic Key? Well, sure. I'll, so you have Manifold Key right there. I'll pull up Voltaic real quick. Yeah. It should speak for itself. Well, take he's just missing that other ability. Yeah, it has another ability. Yeah, and that That's makes it. that makes manifold key just slightly better. Yeah, sometimes you have a three three, and your opponent doesn't has a bunch of two twos, and you're like, I'm just gonna make this unblockable. Yeah, once in a while you just need to get in there. You know, there's there's a scenario where Jeff needs to attack his Ethereum sculptor into a planeswalker and can't get it blocked. Is Mythic Champion five competitor? I believe he is, but very nice. Yeah. Uh, Jace Rin's Prodigy, Prodigy, good looter. Uh, I mean, the best looter. Also the looter. Game. Uh, sorry, uh, Merfolk looter. Yep. But Jace's Rin Prodigy. Sorry, hey, Angie remember, Falcon Wrath. Do you remember? Oh, I actually love that card. That card's uh, great. That card is sick. Uh, do you remember that four and five color uh, Magic Origin standard where everyone was just playing good stuff? Oh, was, like, I loved that format. So do you know what I played? What? I played a Tarka Land Destruction yeah. in that format because I was just like, <laughs> I was just like, this sucks. Everyone's playing like four color good stuff. This is standard. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to do this. Let's so ruin just, their mana. So right. I literally was like, turn three, blow up a land, see if I can. I'd oh have my like gosh. three Tarkas and one Omnath were my win conditions back then. That's great. And I would four O and five O F and M's all the yeah, time. Yeah, because people are not prepared to have their mana messed with in a yeah. format and like then that. People hated it. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, Naveen, uh, Naveen uh, has played with me back in the day. Villainous wealth, one of my personal favorite yeah. cards. That was, just a, that was a, the deck he played at that standard. Oh, that's he played fantastic. this like insane soul type mana ramp villainous wealth deck, and he would like because Ugin was floating around. Yeah, so he'd like villainous wealth you for fifteen, get like an Ugin, <laughs> an Ugin in like a butcher of the horde. Oh my like gosh! That, and be like, hey, what's up? just like here's here's your deck. It's on the table across from you. Good yeah. luck. So Joe went with spell seeker. It's a good card. Yeah, uh, it's a great let's card. Look it up, actually. I think uh, I'm a. I mean, it finds what you want. But what does he want? What does he? You know, he's got. He can get mission briefing. He can get brainstorm. What is he looking forward to? Do you think? Mana drain. Mana <laughs> ma oh, <laughs> ma drain. Yep. There's the drain. Missed that one up top. Yeah, you can just grab a drain, protect yourself. Chromox. Oh. Is he gonna do like Isochron Scepter? Yeah. I mean, he's got a lot of. He's got. The drain and the the briefing. I just mind twist. Good. So Whoa. he's trying to capitalize on the. Um, he's gonna make a lot of mana with his fast bond. Yeah. Channel and fast. I mean, honestly, he could go. Swamp. He could go. Uh, there's a world. Excuse me. I have a hiccup. Um, <laughs> there's a world where he can channel mind twist his opponent out. Yes. Of cards on turn one. Yeah. There is. There's a. There's an enormous. Enormous possibility of him only has two colored cards so far. Right. Um, Venusaur, don't worry, he's going to get them. Like, yeah, he'll get them, and it's also a zero mana artifact. It plays very well on his deck. I did that. not realize this. Mind Twist has been picked 12 of the 13 times at yep. average round of seven. I think that's an over pick. I think that's that's a very early pick for Mind Twist. I think people just see this abjectly powerful card. So let's. Cody took Cabal Therapy, which I thought was a great pick. Yes. Because he can Cabal Therapy himself. Yep, he can therapy himself for whatever it is he wants. Um, but right before that, Stephen took Devoted Druid, followed immediately by Vizier of Remedies. So his plan is out on the table, right? Yeah. So he's, he's a creature based his, combo deck. His, no, he's playing Alex Modern deck. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, sorry. Uh, that's hilarious. So um, Dr. Professor PhD Hagen. <laughs> is stealing Alex Shaw's modern deck basically right now. He's right. playing the Vizier combo. Uh, there's a lot of payoffs. There's a lot of mana sinks in that combo. Oh, yeah. So it's really hard to hate. The only thing that really stops it is like Linvala mm -hmm. um, and things that stop creature abilities. Yes. Or just like permanently wiping the board like a resolved Elish Norn. 
means that deck can't do anything. There's a uh, which honestly gives Cody reason to draft Elishnor. Yeah, because it's just a one shot answer against Hagen that also is fine against other decks as well. And there are a number of of cards that just give you know creatures minus one minus one, or you can play. Um, Dread of Night? Dread of Night is the card I'm thinking of, not Blanket of Night. That, that Black Lotus, Lotus deck is spicy. Yes, yes that Black Lotus, Lotus deck is incredibly spicy. Yeah, we are very curious. And if if you are looking at one of these decks and you think it's really spicy and you want them to be interviewed in about two minutes here, go ahead and type exclamation point interview and then their first name in the chat and vote for them. Because we're going to be yeah. interviewing one of these players in just a few minutes once I we get past Jeff round 15. Is currently in the lead. Yes, Mark I think has so. Votes, but we can always take more voters. Uh... And I think if you type exclamation point interview, Herbamins, you can see the standings. thanks for the follow. We appreciate it. Sorry I didn't see you when you just followed. Uh, yeah, Naveen, I agree. Uh, Mind Twist is nice. It's not seventh round nice. Interview Joe. All right, you can see the votes right there. It looks like Jeff at three, Mark at two, and then a few others. Uh, sneak attack. Ooh, here we go. Something's happening. Joe's all over the place. Yep. Joe's walk. Thank you for the follow. We appreciate it. I'm not sure Joe has totally decided on his plan here. He's trying to stay open, maybe to his detriment here in, in round yeah, 14. Yeah, so he's getting to the point where it's getting a little diluted. Yep. Um, he at first had what looks like a red-green lands deck, which is a real deck. He then looked like he was going to play a Tamir like, mid-range stacks deck, which is less of a real deck, but still a deck. Right. And now a sneak attack. That's an unfair card. Yeah. That's a... You bust out a sneak attack, and then you emrakul your opponent. Like, right. Or you uh, prime time your guy out, and then yeah. you still have four lands. But, like, there's not much he's doing with the sneak attack. And it's all over the place. Like, he has Dak Faden. He has Brainstorm. He has Renin Six. He has Ancient Tomb. You can't cast Dak Faden and Renin Six and no, Ancient Tomb. it's too much. It's a lot. Like, he's putting a lot of uh, two adjacent blue players. Pretty silly. Yeah, it is silly. And it's called... No cowards. You have the two blue players of the table yeah. sitting right next to each other, Mark and Elaine, and they are just going for they it. They are lifetime blue players, and they're not going to change yeah. their ways no matter what. Uh, oh, uh, four spikes. <laughs> yep. Taken Mark. Wow. That's bad. Does this is Now, does Elaine react by taking Mana Tithe here? <laughs> do, you just, do you just snap off Mana Tithe and say anything you can do? Is better than Sneak Attack? Yes, Twin is a better deck than Sneak Attack. And, and that's, that's where, where Joe's, Joe's never drafted this format before. before. Uh, I don't know how much studying he's done for it. It's but hard. It's hard, man. Like, There's not a lot of material out there to read about yeah, about we, vintage rotisserie draft. We have a couple articles I think you've written for Channel Fire. I wrote an article. Um, um, there's have, the the previous VRDs that you can watch, but it's it's tough. Thanks for the heads up. Sorry, my mic has been acting up about the echo. I can fix it, but it goes back in every couple minutes. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's the previous VRDs, there's the STL VRDs, and then there's Mark in, Mark's interviews with STL VRD players. Yeah. There, that's about it. There's this not a ton of material. Yeah, if you can catch Randy Bueller yeah. talking about it on a VOD, maybe you get some more. And if you can catch Randy Bueller in real life, you can get, you know, what I assume would be a three-hour seminar about the format, which would be fantastic. DC, I think you're right. He just keeps yelling at me, and it's <laughs> making my mic explode. Uh, the secret is that I'm, I am I, I have two volumes. They're off and on, <laughs> They're just loud which and Alex, Alex is learning today. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we have Lion's Eye Diamond from Jeff. That card is just great mana yes. for a deck that's playing off the top. It's fine. Right, he doesn't um, care about his hand. He's got Mystic Forge in play. Again, I do think the most interesting drafting happening right now is the dynamic between Elaine and Mark. Yes. Because they're both in blue-based control decks. No one has no one has blinked. No one has and pulled off their plan. Pulling, yeah. And uh, Elaine is a little bit more divested because she's in blue-white. Yep. She's a little bit in the tank here, making her pick. Yeah. Um, and then Brandon and Hagen uh, has been pretty fascinating. Is there any chance Jeff ends up snagging Future Sight? I would take. I would honestly take Experimental Frenzy before I took Future Sight in his deck. Yes. Like, uh, yes. You don't need. You don't need to pay triple blue. You don't need to cast the cards in your hand. You just need to fire things off the top of your deck into play until you win. Yeah, and he has the main acceleration that he can just kill the experimental at any time. I bet he takes both. Honestly, he probably will. It's quite... Uh, I mean, he'll be able to get Future Sight pick 45 if he wants it. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm really interested to see how Alec and Jeff fight over some cards. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, but then, like, if I'm Cody, I'm just feeling great. I'm like, no one's in my yep. deck. No one's in my colors. I get it, the full run at whatever I want. Mana leak here from Elaine. I don't know. I think... I don't... I would take miscalculation before I took Mana Leak, to be perfectly honest. I'm like, pull up miscalculation. Being, having that cycling is absolutely worth just 
just that that small discount that you give your opponent because most of the time that mana leak is good enough so is miscalculation yeah, yeah it really is Alec, uh, graph diggers cage with an early so graph diggers cage that is that is the definition of early graveyard hate it That's, also um, it also it also hates on his own tinker he can't elaine already grabbed all the plans lockers mark's in a bit of trouble yeah i agree uh Mark is going to either have to do creature-based control, or he's going to have to go to like blue-red. Twin is still open. Yeah, if I were Mark, I would I would shift into blue-red here if I if if I were in his seat. But I yeah I do I don't uh, I don't know about that cage here. Alex Walk, uh, thank you for the follow. I don't know if I count, shouted that out a couple minutes ago, but appreciate it. And if we did, you get that you get that good double, double follow. Sick. Um, search for his Kanta, really good. Great card. Yeah. That's a pretty brutal one for Mark to lose. Uh, yeah, if I'm Mark, I have to go blue red twin. I, like I think Elaine is getting the better of this this blue exchange. Mark has chosen the the mono blue route maybe with Delver here. I mean, he could he could still move. He the, the red he could be recognizing that the red is incredibly open. It's so open. And he, uh, he could just breach. So Joe is playing. I mean, it's good. Like he can play teamer breach and yep. just like. I could see something happening there. Sneak attack it's through so the breach. Um, is Delver actually good? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if it's um, good. It doesn't, like, flip. it doesn't flip on artifacts, it's just a big a, deal. It's just a creature. Like, it's, uh, it's just a creature. Wasn't taken already? Or did misstep? I no, we were talking about misstep, we talking but it didn't get taken. Bad, sorry. Yeah. And oh. Brandon takes the Emrakul. I mean, which, he was the channel deck. Right. But he knows right now, now that Joe has taken sneak attack and through the breach... He's got to cut that off yeah, right now. He's got to take that Emmer cool. Big take. Mark can switch. I 100% yes. agree. Um, Chris, totally. I just don't think Delver, like if I... Cody takes Sire of Insanity, good reanimation yeah. call. If you're not on the wheel and you want to go into Twin, do you take Twin first or the XR? You take Twin. You take Twin because there's, there's XR, and Kiki. there's Pestermite, there's Village Bellringer, there's Restoration Angel. There's a lot of ways to do that. Yep. Um, all right, so that's the end of this round. We're actually going to bring someone in to interview for a couple minutes, give them a chance to look at what they've done to themselves. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to step out for a second. Sounds I'll bring, good. Uh, it in. Uh, I believe if anyone wants to put any last-second interviews in, we'll wait like 30 seconds or so, and then we'll bring someone in. Um, I believe it is Jeff in the lead at three votes. I think so, and we'll check in just a second, but are we? I guess we can just scroll up because nobody's voted in a minute. Sorry, just scrolling up right now. Yep. Uh, yeah. So it's Jeff. I'm going to give a last second. Uh, oh, who do you want? Um, we want... Uh, oh, we got to type in the... I got to find my mouse. mouse. We got to type in there. <laughs> yeah, bring Jeff on in here. We need that man. All right, I'm going to let you go. Uh, to shout out anybody, and uh, I'll get out of the booth. Guys, I'll be right back. Uh, let me just switch... Yeah, if you right switch here. yours to... Our Mystic Forge expert, Jeff Blyden. Yeah, I get to ask him about his spicy spice. You're, you're close. You, oh, sorry, I'm close. No, 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 you're close. You almost spelled his name right. You can be close to me. I don't mind that. That's fine with well, me. you keep yelling into my mic. <laughs> but I want, I just want, I just want to spell his name right. That's all I want. You know, we've got you with the keyboard over here trying to type into a monitor that's facing away from you. It's a, it's a, it's a fun, it's a, it's a unique fun challenge. challenge. Uh, try not hitting the mouse. Yeah. Jeff, I'm going to give you this mic. Uh, here you go. Cool. Yeah, have a, it's, it's, oh, I, I get it. That's why I'm over here. My, my plan is just to move as little as possible. All right. All right. Let's, uh, let's click, if you, if you would, you've got the mouse over there. Yeah. Oh, no, we've, we've, we can see the, the, the draft right here. Never mind. So, Jeff. How'd, yeah. this, how'd this go for you? Was this your plan? Was this what you wanted to do? I came in with three plans, mm -hmm. and this was plan A. I actually told Elaine on Friday that I was taking Mystic Force. <laughs> she did not believe me, and there it is. Yeah. Third. There it is. Third. <laughs> Just like you said, Mystic yeah. Forge was one of the cards that I picked out from from the newer sets as something that I think is really powerful in this yeah. format. So, what do you? How do you, do you feel like any of the key pieces of your deck got hated out? Do you feel like you lost anything from these I other did. players? I lost Tinker and Grim Monolith and Karn the Great, Great Creator. Mm -hmm. uh, Mistress Workshop didn't matter. Yep. Uh, too much because I'm gonna. I plan on taking a lot of blue cards. Sure. In the second half of the draft. So I, I really don't care that much about losing Workshop 
but losing an additional acceleration piece. Right. Because I had to forego my first pick, which would have normally been a mox. Yes. For time you time. had to take the time vault. When it comes that late, you really yeah. just you oh, just have to do it. Might I add yes. that with the time vault, all morning I told everyone how bad it is and they <laughs> shouldn't take it early because everyone was convinced that it was going to go third. I was like, right. you shouldn't take it third. Like, it should go like seventh, maybe eighth. Let someone fall into that. Just so that I could get it. I was going to say, do you really think that? But <laughs> I no, of course it. not. You gamed I, it. That's I beautiful. I gamed it. <laughs> so I, ga- I pretty much came in wanting either Time Vault, Mystic Forge, the deck, or if either of those cards... If, if Time Vault went, then my first pick was going to be Bizarre Baghdad. Yeah. I was going to draft Dredge. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So, so people were talking about the uh, the Chrome Mox pick a little bit in the chat and saying, well, he doesn't have any any uh, very many cards that he can imprint on the Chrome Mox Correct. at this point, and that's 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 the plan, right? That's mm-hmm. that's on purpose. That's on purpose because the next half of the draft, I plan on taking cards that do go there. Mm-hmm. Like, I think the first card I'm going to take is going to be Oriox Salvagers. Ooh, to yes. With LED. Yep. Um, after that, depending on how it's going, there's not very many red drafters. The only no. person here is Joe. So I want to also get uh, Experimental Frenzy. Yep, that's that's one that was being talked about as well, yeah. was, was the Experimental Frenzy, because your deck just wants to play off the top. Exactly. And especially with LED, mm-hmm. you, you don't really care don't about care. your hand. I don't yeah. care at all. Your hand is irrelevant. Yeah. So who are you worried about when you when you're looking at these decks? Obviously, you can no worries. You can see you can you can see everybody else's plans. You can kind of see what people are formulating. Who are you concerned about here? Um. So, Alec has uh, Chalice of the Void and Grave Diggers. Mm, yes. So that actually matters. Him taking Grave Diggers Cage is the only reason I took Mental Mist up. Okay. Because that also hoses Cody's deck. But yep. I need an answer to Cage without. And he has Chalice, so yes. that kind of limits my ability, because normally Nature's Claim and stuff like that would be, you know, high right. on the list, but because he has Chalice, I feel that I should have an answer beforehand. Yes, you want to so, preemptively answer the cage. Yeah. So, I, I took Mental Mist up there because of that. Uh, afraid of those two cards, Elaine's <laughs> deck is just tailor-made to beat me, Right. but I'm just going to ignore that problem <laughs> altogether. <laughs> Uh, I feel like I can power through uh, uh, Mark's deck. I feel like I can power through Joe's deck because I don't really care about, you know, a slow, strip mine lock. Right. And then Steven has a plan. Yes, he does have a plan. He has a distinct plan. Yep, you can see it right there, picks 13 yeah. and 14. So <laughs> I feel between he and I, that's going to be a race. Yes. Uh, I played Reanimator in the very first VRD, so... Mental misstep hurts that deck a lot, too. Yes. So I'm going to try to bank on the power of that. Being able to hit that Entomb or that Reanimate or, the Vampiric, or one of the or Tutors. The yeah, or that's the Imperial Seal. Or the Cabal Therapy or the Thought Seize. Misstep like, is huge against that deck, yeah, absolutely. I'm surprised that I was able to take it that late. I feel yes. like it's much better than, say, Mandalik. Sure. Uh, arguable with Force Spike because no one ever plays around it. Yep. Yeah, Force Spike, nobody ever plays around. I, I got, um, not, not Force Spiked, but the white one. I got manatized oh, in the last yeah, uh, yeah. VRD, and yeah. I felt I, I felt that pain right in my, <laughs> right in my soul. Yeah, it hits you deep. <laughs> yeah. So when you talked about, you, you said that with Elaine's column, you're just like, I'm going to ignore this column. Is that is that like a conscious decision? Do you think, I know in, in fantasy sports, sometimes people will like punt a category. They'll just say, I'm not going to worry about saves yeah. in fantasy baseball. Is that like a viable strategy in VRD? Can you just say, I'm gonna i'm just gonna auto lose to this person but i'm gonna try to go six one i think it is at, there's seven matches that you play. right so going six one that's, that's yeah still gonna push you in first place probably. right and even so I can just ignore it. and even five two is you know yeah, you'll so be in yeah. contention yeah absolutely i just want to go home with a bottle of blues and game by the right? absolutely well i think you've put yourself in a really good position to do that mm-hmm. so far and we'll see what the other 30 picks have for you absolutely absolutely anything else you want to say to the fine folks watching the stream um working yeah <laughs> the plan is working the plan is working <laughs> we can, and we can all see it right here on the screen yeah, yeah. well thanks jeff i appreciate anytime, it anytime anytime good luck in the rest of the draft you. You. you got it um 
do we want to do if Mark wants to do another interview, just send uh, send him in because he was next on the list. But if he wants to get going, then send in Alex. I'm not sure what he wants. So I'm not sure if we're going to do another interview next or if we're going to step back into the draft. But it was nice to get that insider insight, I guess, into uh, Jeff's deck. It's a pretty cool one. Mystic Forge is a really cool new card that I've seen a lot of discussion about in actual vintage. So to see it here in the VRD is not really super surprising, but I also think it's a very interesting card. All righty. Hey, guys. Hey, Alec. What's up? Pretty good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing all right. Uh, it's, in, it's in the kitchen. Um, I just wanted to ask you about this deck because I think it's a, a very interesting interesting deck that you're drafting. We we saw you early on going for this these artifact cards, the Black Lotus Tinker, Monolith Karn, and then your deck sort of took a you you, you took a left turn. Can you tell us about that? Uh, well, I saw Jeff start to go towards that that side, and I was like, well, nobody seems like they're being very aggressive. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously not until. Uh, Hagen picks Devoted Druid and Vizier. Right, yeah. And now we're getting pretty aggressive, but I, I, I figured <laughs> I, I figured if Elaine's not going to go start to get some some spot removal, then I'll just be able to run people over with all my aggressiveness. Right. So your plan is just to to get that hardened scales going and just and just run people down just with get the engine going with Lodestone Golem, Arcbound Ravager, all this good stuff. Yeah. Okay, I like that. So people were talking about the the chalice pick a little bit. Who are you? Who are you trying to lock out with that chalice? Also, can you hand me the mouse? Probably <laughs> Jeff. Jeff, you think? Honestly, yeah. If he starts to get any of that voltaic nonsense going, right? Taking extra turns. I don't. I think he'll be. He'll. He will probably be my hardest. So my that's the matchup you're worried about the most. Yeah. I'm just because uh, I was going to ask who who you who you're worried about here, but it sounds like Jeff might be the answer to that question. Yeah. All right. Um, is there anybody here you feel like you're just gonna you're just gonna run them over? You're gonna call your shot now, just to get that that Twitch clip that we can replay later when inevitably the match goes the other way because that's always what happens, right? Hmm. It's between Elaine and Brandon. Okay. Honestly, I think if 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 Brandon just like. Turn one plays an Emrakul, then I you know, right. I of course, you can't beat a turn one Emrakul. Other than that, I, I don't think his his deck will be fast enough. Mm -hmm. um, and Elaine, like, she's not picking a lot of removal, so right. I think I'll be good there. So you think you can you can sort of get under her control strategy with your creatures? Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, what's what's your plan with the Karn? Is do you have do you have grand designs with the Karn? I'm gonna get a little quieter just because I don't wanna I don't wanna give away your tech. But um, I'm thinking as I start to get to the to the later picks, um, I'll start looking at things to maybe start slapping into the sideboard. Yeah. Um, but as of right now, I don't have any big things in mind. Just sort of you know. Probably a Michael Synthlattice. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Michael, you know, the, uh, the obviously Michael Synthlattice. Yeah. But you're keeping your options open for later. Yeah. That makes sense, and that way you can you can leverage that workshop for things like Lattice right. and uh, and just use that big mana to do powerful things. Actually, yeah. Well, that seems pretty cool. I like it. And the uh, did we talk about the Graft Tigger's Cage yet? Uh, no. Ooh, um, let's talk about the Graft Tigger's Cage. As soon as I saw Jeff grab the Mystic Forge, mm. I wanted I wanted to take it. Yep. I wanted to take it, but there were there were other things I had in mind. And were you um, expecting the Mystic Forge deck coming into this into this draft? Was that something you foresaw? No, definitely not. But it was something I had in the back of my mind because when I was thinking about I, if I wasn't getting first seat, Tinker was going to be my first pick. Right. Really? Um, I, okay. Yeah, I was. I immediately. I was like, mm, I th I th I, artifacts. Artifacts always. You're gonna snap off Tinker. Snap off. Even in, so. So in seat two, I, do, I just I want to see if this is true. In seat two, if you're a lane instead of that recall, you're you, if those were swapped, you'd be taking Tinker there. Yes. Wow. And just because you think the artifact strategies are that much more powerful than everything else? Yes. I okay. mean, there's there's way too many options. There's yes. so many di different directions you can go. And it's, I mean, everyone can try to throw in the hate, but if they start picking up hate, then they hurt their own They're decks. hurting their own deck, yeah. yeah. And it's really hard to hate out just a linear strategy in this format. You can do a little damage to them here and there. You can pick up cards like Energy Flux, but you can't just beat them every time just by having a card like Energy Flux in your deck. True. All right. Anything else you want to tell us about? Uh, no, I've got some spicy picks coming spicy up. Spicy picks? Okay. So we'll keep an eye out for that. We'll watch for your spicy picks. Well, thanks, Alec. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. And uh, good luck in the rest of the draft. Yeah. All right. 
Here's your mouse. I borrowed it. All right, they're going to get started. Am I on mute? No. No, you're not. Cool. I'll take this back. Oh, yes, this is yours. I just had to... I changed your name because you weren't here. Oh, I appreciate it. Uh, no, you didn't. What? Um, <laughs> I changed it enough. Enough. Uh, so, how were your interviews? They good? were good. It was it was interesting talking to Jeff about his uh, his Mystic Forge deck. I really liked that. Did, did he give you some uh, what's in the future? Uh, he, he, he said he's going to be drafting some blue cards in the future. Uh, he also did mention Experimental Frenzy. So, Sick. he's got that uh, in mind. Boltabird, thank you for following. Uh, and Baberin. Baberin? Baberin? You. Thank you for following. We appreciate it. Um, Even if we don't know how to see your name, we do appreciate it. It's nice to see people here yeah, in the chat really enjoying awesome. it. Uh, let's see, check it, chat. Sorry. Uh, Cube is different, though. Honestly, I consider it just must be a very experienced pilot. I drafted Monoreddit and Usman's Cube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it is different. The Usman Cube is a very good, it's a very cool vintage like cube. Uh, Dave Ardvark, or Devard Vark. Aardvark. Thank you for following. <laughs> we appreciate it. Uh, it's a very cool cube. It is different from the digital history just because it's curated and this is not. Yes. Uh, yeah. Trying to check. Just catching up with chat real quick. They're going to be starting up and again. Um, final pick was Court of Calling. Good green card. It finds anything. I think uh, Green Sun Zenith and the new one. Finale, Owl, of, Finale of, Devastation? of Devastation. Yes. Almost better. I agree. But uh, it's fine. Like They're all replaceable. Uh Someone who wants to win, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, just checking. Yep, we're going back just through the chat. Just checking chat real quick while I was gone. Uh, uh, yes, I do want to join your Popper Rotisserie draft. That sounds cool. I really want to join your Popper Rotisserie draft. That sounds phenomenal. Um, all right, so I got this up and back. And they're going to start in, looks like, just a minute. Thanks again, guys, for sticking around. We're yeah, we appreciate starting, it. Uh, pack two. Yes. Uh, <laughs> As we, we don't call it. Pick order. Um, yeah, let's get it ready. If you come back to STL for a weekend, think you can get in on one of these? Well, we could have used you this morning, buddy, if you were if you were in the area, but I know you're not. Um, yeah, talk. I mean, talk to Mark. He's the he's in charge. You'll see my very professional. Uh, yes, <laughs> telling them to. We got to do it somehow, right? Yeah, yeah. We got to let right, them know. Finale of devastation. Hey, wow! Look at it. that finale of devastation coming out. Let's see that. That that good that good dinosaur summoning card up on the screen. It's just a great mana sink. Yes. Uh, and then into Groyo's Vengeance, which we'll get into, but everyone kinda knows what that card does. You can't spell. Oh yes. Yeah, if you just click on Oh, it's AS. Deva, yeah. Can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. Oh man. Dev. Your eyes go a little numb after. Uh, oh, I totally get at it. These screens for a while. I sat down here. I had my contacts, and I sat down for two minutes, and I was like, "Nope, uh, yeah. my eyes are dry." We're so switching. finale devastation. It's a court of calling at sorcery speed, but it gets any creature, and if you pay X, it's ten or more. It pumps your entire board and gives it haste. I think one uh, of the most important parts of finale of devastation, creature. yes, is that you can get the creature out of your graveyard. Yeah, so if they kill the creature, you can always bring it back. Uh, nurturing Peatland. That's the green black Horizon can of Peatland, right? Yes. Uh, Jeff gets Orak Salvager, so he's now playing Bomberman. He did say that he was going to get that to go with Silly D. Joe took Kiki. Joe stole the Kiki Cheeky. Okay. Uh, hey, Mark took Miss Calc. That's yep. a card. Um, that's pretty rough for Mark. He's going to have to kind of. What do you, somewhere else. What do you do here now? Do you become. I mean, a lot of the. Some of the black discard spells are gone. You can't. It's it's a little harder to become a blue black control deck than it is to become this blue, blue green. You could do blue green, yeah. Blue green, big stuff. Okay. Um, with Trigon Predator and like other yes, like good stuff. There's a lot of great green cards. There's a lot of great blue cards. He could snap up a card like Collector Oof and and sort of move in on that. Yeah, I think blue green's open now. Uh, because green's really not getting like the big crazy green stuff is, but no one's taken Oracle Moldaya. No one's taken Azusa. There's like a green blue land. Yes, deck. there is a land uh, deck. Tatiova Benthic Druid. Ooh, Tatiova, what a Some, card. Uh, that's where I would shift to, but I'm whatever. Uh, Kiki Jiggy, yep, we got taken. 
Finale over GSC. Uh, I think Finale being able to get cards out of the graveyard is so huge. Yeah, yeah. Green Sun's seen this one mana cheaper, but, but you're able to generate a lot of mana, and honestly, like, like the bigs are at, at six, and, and the difference between six and seven mana in this format, with the amount of like mana ramp and consistency and when you're able to do it, it's not isn't huge. Super much. Like, and also, Finale just has a I win the game. Like, yep. your Lana War Elf hits for 11 if you ever get it to go. Yeah, 10. Like, it's insane if you can get that to like happen. You can finale a Devastation for a Land of War Elf and make it swing as an 11 11 Haster that turn. Like, that's what it allows you yeah. to do if you wanted to do that. Um, need to see Joe go into Blue Red Tempo to win now. Elliot Woodstone. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I could see that. Um, Goblin Rabble Master, please. Yes. Ooh, Rabble Master. Rabble, that's what I'm saying. Like, red cards are good. If you can, like, survive and, like, have enough interaction to, like, take care of problem tournaments, which means, like, having strip mine. Yep. Know, uh, just slowing them down a turn or two. Red aggro will just kill you. Yeah, and, and cards like Rabble Master, cards like Legion War Boss, Najeel of the Blade Blossom, all of those cards are great ways to just, like, create an army that, that your opponent has to, they have to have a removal spell basically immediately to deal with, or they're going to lose to it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> You're surprised Mark hasn't taken Doomsday yet. We're always surprised when Mark doesn't pick Doomsday. Elaine going for the lesser miscalculation in the form of Complicate. I like Complicate. complicate. <laughs> I like Complicate a lot. Um, I, I think Complicate's great. I just, you know, obviously... I used to play Complicate in a... Um, I played a five-color cycling deck with Progenitus as the commander in EDH. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and the deck would literally... Lab Man was one of its only win conditions. <laughs> and it would just aggressively cycle through, like... So I played everything. You just drop your fluctuator and you just fly through your deck, right? Uh, I'm going to copy that. Very nice. <laughs> uh, open in a new tab, and I'm going to get on that Discord in a little bit, guys. Nice. When I get a break. <laughs> um, Revoker into Metamorph for Alec here. So he is really committing to this more aggressive artifact strategy by taking the Revoker. Yeah, Revoker's... Pretty solid. Nature's like Chant? Nature's Chant is from it's from Modern Horizons. It's the Disenchant uh, uh, Naturalized Hybrid. You know what deck um, Alec is reminding me of right now is that Vintage Inspector Foundry Walking Ballista. Oh, yes. I'm, it's like Foundry Stacks or something like yep. that. Uh, is that what it's called? I think that's the name of the deck. That's that's interesting. That could be what we're getting here. I know he talked about wanting to do sort of a more aggressive artifact strategy and just try to run people over. Yeah. Nature's Chant, that's, uh, it's fine. It'll get main decks. It destroys something. Right. Um, it's castable. Uh, it's flexible, and if she wants a Disenchant effect here, it's a good one. I... Uh, you know, I, I I think that there are there are so many disenchant effects that she could have waited, but yeah, I mean that's the thing is like no one's gonna take a nature's chant, and if someone does, you good still for have, them, right? Like, you still have disenchant, you still have other cards earlier. Yeah, but whatever, uh, it's fine. Like at the end of the day, it's one pick. Yeah. Get probe, splinter twin. Splinter twin. All right, so Joe is really committing to this uh, this I blue mean, red he, unfair deck he here. He took he took the parts. Like, yep. And there was a lot of yelling when that happened. Yeah. Uh, someone got really mad that Git Probe was taken, and then <laughs> while they were yelling, Splinter Twin just got slammed in. And then um, everyone got mad, right? Uh, uh, Git Probe, classically unfair card, uh, makes your card, makes your deck one card smaller. Yeah. Uh, it's fantastic. Do you do 45 picks? We do do 45 picks. Uh, you play a 40 card deck and you have sideboards, best two out of three. I think, uh, I know some of the other drafts do like 40 or 42 for various reasons, but. We just do it as standard draft 15 yeah. picks, three times. Um, yep. Uh, Splinter Twin. So Joe's going to be getting Zealous Conscripts, Pestermite. He's in blue, green, yep. red, which is actually great because it means he has everything. Founding Crisis. Like, yep. He has every possible, basically. Uh, Card. Anything, anything, but but the you know the bell ringer and the the restoration angel. But that's like there's so many options for him. Yeah. Uh, Jeff just took Thoughtcast. Upper All Star Thoughtcast. Uh, and a fantastic card in his deck because he's he's going to be paying a blue to draw two cards a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, fragmentize. Ooh, fragmentize. Fragmentize is a great card. I like in this that. Format. Um, yeah, it hits everything. There's yeah. not really a lot of white players right now. Uh, yeah. Really, Elaine just a lane. Pick that, and then maybe a uh, mark won't go into white because no. of Elaine being in white. Uh, 
Brandon looks like he's playing like four to five color good stuff. I still don't exactly know. Yeah, he's uh, he's executing his plan. I can tell you that so far. He's yeah, you executing know, his you, plan. You were told earlier. He's <laughs> like, so what am I playing when I was out there talking right. to the players? Uh, and he's like, well, uh, you just have to find out. And I'm yeah. Like, Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I tried to get some intel, but but I'm I'm sworn to secrecy yeah, on him so secrecy. far. Sworn to secrecy. Heard. Uh, there's not really white decks ever in BR uh, D. It's tough. Um, I do think a white weenie with like some stacks elements might be okay. Yeah, or you can go the white black route like Mark has in the past. Whoa. Kareek whoa. has been called. Kareek, one of the new cards from Commander 2019, allows you to use black mana as Phyrexian black mana effectively. Yeah, I can't wait to pull that up in the card reader. One second. <laughs> it's with a K. Yep. Of course it's with a K. My favorite horror minion. Uh, spoils. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was definitely a reaction in the room for that one. Uh, Eldarami's call, green white gets yeah. any. It's a good card. Uh, and and Shalai to protect himself and his creatures from from interaction. Yeah, I like those picks. Um, How do you follow up Karik though? I don't really get the card. Like I know it's strong. Force of dis. Is the, that's the the new that's black, the black force one. That's that the one that kills all creatures that the, enter the battlefield. The creatures that entered. Okay. Uh, Brandon takes Toxic Deluge. Very good card. Honestly, a better card than a Force better of Despair. Card. Force of Despair does seem like a reaction to uh, to Hagen's pick here. I mean, it shuts Joe's deck down. That's true. It does Force stop. Force of Despair is one of the few cards that like says no, stop that, please. Yeah. Thank you. No more no more show and tell type nonsense, right? Yeah. Turn two, Carrick with Soul Ring down <laughs> for five turns. If if it happens, it happens. Uh, as I was saying, white decks. It's Probably the least played color in Vintage uh, Rotisserie. I do think it's real, though. Like It has mm -hmm. some of the best hate cards. It has some of the best aggro cards. There's real pressure being applied when you just lay beats. And it also has these like weird... like One of my favorite cards that hasn't shown up yet um, in this format, and this is because I like playing green, because no one ever fights on green, and yep. I just like drafting alone, is uh, Dryad Militant. Oh, what a great card. Uh, Dryad Militant's really good on turn yeah. one in this format. Uh, because it just... Everybody's trying to use their graveyard, and yeah. it just shuts it out. And it just shuts it out while also being a 2-1-for-1. One one. Yeah. And, like, this is a card that mono-white decks can play, and just be like, hey, going Dryad Militant into Thalia, into, like, Old Thalia, or some, like, random 3-drop, or even, like, a Hate Spot thing, it's fine. World Spire Worm just got drafted. So. World Spine Worm has been called for the sneak attack um, deck. Jeff also just drafted Cedar Synod at... 18th pick. It yep. was early. The only person who was ever going to draft it was Alec, but he wanted it. He needed it for his deck. Now, is this the this is the new Ashiok, right? This is the new Ashiok. That's the one that I've mentioned in previous uh, conversations. Yep. Uh, this one is a graveyard hate card that also is a Shadow of Doubt attached to it. What a great effect in this yeah, format. Yeah, this card um it shuts down your uh, your tutors. It such such then yeah, shuts down your fetches. It makes Hagen's deck really weak. Yep. Um, this is the type of card, so blue-black is a way to go, honestly. That's still kind of open, where you yeah. can just play, like, Demir good stuff. Play, um, the 2-2 two -two flyer. Uh, oh, Thief of Sanity? Yeah, Thief of Sanity. Yes, That's great a card. card. Yeah, like, cards that if they hit, they're gonna hurt. That's a pretty late Ashiok, right? That is a really late Ashiok, as far as I'm concerned. I think, I think that card so. should be top 15. Yeah. It's, it's, hard to, it's hard to say with a card so new. You know, yeah. this is the second VRD that we've done in St. Louis where that, that card has been eligible to be chosen, but I Elaine think the card's swords, fantastic. That's the best white removal spell yep. in the format. Um, Elaine is very solidly in blue-white control again. Yeah, the swords, uh, swords being so much better. One day she won't draft it, but uh, <laughs> until we see that, we see it. She drafted Grixis last time. Um, she Little 20 cards to win the game too. Yeah, no, yeah. it's a really good card. Um, it's it's fantastic. It nukes the graveyard too, which is not irrelevant. So this card just does it all. Mark's perspective, it has game against the Tinker deck. Yep. It has game against the uh, Green Sun deck or the Eldarami's Call Finale mm -hmm. of Devastation deck. It has game against any deck playing Fetchlands. It affects the Reanimator deck. It hits everything. So this is the type of card that you can play in your main deck, and it still not be a complete embarrassment in six or five to six of your seven opponents. Yeah, 
I'll play it. I'll hedge my bet. Absolutely. And that's something that Jeff and I were talking about was, you know, in, in fantasy sports, sometimes you'll punt a category or whatever. And whether or not in, in the VRD, it's it's a reasonable choice to just punt a matchup to say, I'm going to ignore this person. Elaine probably shakes her fist really angry. Double pride. <laughs> if, if, she, if, like... if Mark plays as she gets her, yeah, she's sad. Uh, Alex Shaw, Shaw Aspire of Industry, just a mana fixing card that will come relevant with the mm-hmm. amount of artifacts he has. And the Steel Overseer here, he's really committing to the, the hardened scale He's deck. definitely doing that, like, vintage yep. uh, deck. It's like Affinity meets um, Stacks, basically. Green Ramp does uh, yes, happen. Yes, I have yep. drafted it. It's fantastic, because uh, no one fights you. Yeah. Um, you get everything you do, everything you want. Uh, you need Oracle Moldaya, you need Ramanak Excavator, you need Fast Bond, you need Channel, you need some big stupid green creatures. No one's going to draft elves until the very end. Yeah. So you get your pick on all the one drop elves, you can get all of them. Literally. Yeah, you can you can like, run the table on your, your Hierarchs and your Lanoir elves. Yeah, and your... no one's going to draft them. Uh, and there's so much redundancy there's too. There's so much redundancy to the deck. It's a deck that preys on the artifact decks. It's a deck that preys on the greedy mana decks because you're yep. going to be blowing up lands. Yep, you can blow uh, up lands, you can blow up artifacts, and you can do all that while committing creatures to the battlefield. Yeah, yeah. it it pl- applies constant pressure. I played it. I went four three, and on two of my losses, I mulliganed to three. Yes, I, I, mean, I just how it goes, I right? literally just didn't draw lands on like two of my games. And with like, the you know with the London Mulligan now, who's to say how those matches would have oh, gone? Yeah, that right? was pre London Mulligan. Yep. Yeah, it's a great deck. Um, it honestly, I think probably should get drafted at every tur- table. Elaine's been in the tank a lot. I feel like Elaine's due for a little bit of bullying on the hurry yeah. up, but uh, whatever. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Elaine, Elaine did go into the tank a few times in the last draft. That is, oh, Kataki. Kataki is so, here. So mean. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's just, she's just really, really wants to, to lock up her win against Jeff before they even yeah. start the match. I love Kataki. What a great card. Have you ever played Commander against Kataki? Like oh, someone like flips it over, like I'm playing Kataki. I'm it's like, some, horrible. Someone in your meta really did something wrong. I know you? who. Yeah, it's 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 one of those commanders. I look at the person. I say, who hurt you? Who hurt you? Who did she this? It's a more diverse interaction suite. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she has the, not honestly a lot of interaction for a blue white control deck. It is. Yeah, she's she wants to she wants to commit some planeswalkers to the boards. Her. Or Jace Friends Prodigy type of cards, and just you know, get out there and generate card advantage. No, uh, spell snare. Spell snare. Pretty good. Strong card. Yeah, Council's Judgment could be incoming from her, but I think she knows no one's she gonna can wait it. for that. That's the thing. Like no one else is in white. It's double white. Nobody's gonna try to splash Council's Judgment. You know, you can get the, you can get your your grasp of fate. You can get all kinds of nonsense there. Especially when the only card currently on the battlefield in the entire pick. Uh, that Council Judgment hits that Oblivion Ring couldn't is a card in her deck. Yep. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It's actually in Mark's deck. True name. True mm, name yes, true name. Card. Yep. Preordain went the slate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's just a lot. There's a lot of cantrips. So, I mean, it is late. It's probably the best cantrip without access to fetches. Yep. So, it did go late, but then you look at what people are doing. Uh, Jeff doesn't need Preordain. Brandon can't play it because his mana base is all over the place. Uh, Cody's in mono black. Yep. Hagen is in mono green, splashing maybe some random colors here and there, but probably not blue. Alec is in uh, whatever. Brown. <laughs> whatever yeah, that just is. brown. <laughs> just brown. Um, and then Joe could make it, but honestly, I can see why he hasn't made it yet. So you really only have two players going for it. Another, Another draw seven for Brandon and Windfall here. I we'll draw what's seven-ish. What what could be happening? What could be happening? Could it could be anything? Grasp of Fate is a multiplayer card. I mean, it's also a it card works. that you can play in this format. Like Does it's take Grasp of Fate. It's been sense? picked before. No, I, I was I was talking about oh, Grasp okay, of Fate, then. but it, it has been picked in a VRD before. Cody took Dark Rit, uh, Professor Hagen. PhD, MD, to Path to Exile. Our conspiracies and anti's banned. Yes, that's about all there is to say. Um, they don't work, uh, as far as we're concerned. Yeah. <laughs> Grass of Fate picked round 16. That one, a, one time. That's a very early... That's I would, a wild. Mm, somebody, somebody made Someone a choice. Up. <laughs> yeah. Someone made a mistake. Uh, ooh, my boy finally yep. showed up. Collector Oof is here. 
So these you're are typing it into the chat. This is such a. I am typing into the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Now Oof. Cody is paying off his Yogwill pick here with some rituals. Yeah, I don't really. I don't know what the plan is with that, but he is doing it. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Vincent Lull. Oh God. Yeah, you're right. Vincent did pick that. Vincent picked a lot of memes in our draft. In the yeah. meme. Um, Collector Oof is a. I think one of the best reasons to be a mono green. <laughs> what a great card. So good. Activated abilities of artifacts can't be activated. It's yep. no rod on a 2-2 two, two, or 2. That's searchable. That kills your opponent. Yeah. It is so good. And then Brandon it, looks like he will auto-lose to Narset. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> there is nothing else to say to that. <laughs> but I think I do think that in, in Steven's deck in particular, cards like Collector Roof are going to be huge. Oh, there's the pizza. <laughs> so um, we got a pizza from a local pizza joint that makes... It's literally bigger than the door it, frame. It, yeah, you have to you have to turn it sideways to get it through the door. It's enormous. Uh, but So that's obviously delaying the draft, but... <laughs> As people um, just well, think they're about figuring it. about their pizza situation. Let's yeah. talk about. Uh, let's talk about collector. <laughs> let's talk about collector because that card's better. Who has Cruz? Cruz has not been taken yet. Um, yeah, we dig. Dig got picked round ten by Elaine, but Cruz is still out there. Yeah, so Cruz, I don't think is actually as good as. Uh, sorry. Um, as dig. Dig. Thank oh, abso I absolutely agree. Because Cruz, it's a big delve and it draws three, but it's sure. sorcery speed. And the sorcery speed hurts. It's a pretty big commitment to filling your graveyard. Yeah, sure. Eventually, sometimes it'll cost two. Draft the pizza. Yes. Um. But but having like just getting the choice from dig to dig through time. Two out of seven is worse than is better than three off the, off the top in a format like this. Yeah, it's just especially with the power of cards. Uh, obviously, like one mana. Uh, instant speed draw three. I'll turn tweet. one is fantastic. I'll but, tweet a picture of the pizza. Yeah. Uh, Basalt Monolith got taken. Yes. Oh, Jeff, great card. Exploration, which honestly went late. Yes. Um, Exploration, I'm surprised that we're seeing it this late. Um, you know, certainly a better card than its its cousin burgeoning. But uh, but Exploration is, is a fantastic card for a deck like Joe's. I mean, Joe and... Hagen both yeah. would have loved that deck. Brand Brandon could have used the exploration as well because, you know, Fast Bond's not going to come up every time. Like, this, this is where I'd rather have Oracle and Moldaya. Uh, yeah? Uh, I don't know, this might be wrong, but okay. these green decks, having played them, sometimes, like, sure, you need Sylvan Library and other stuff, but they can really struggle. Uh, well, I wonder if Drawn from Dreams is better than Dig. Dr Drawn from Dreams is a card I was thinking about this morning when I was thinking about like sleepers from M20. Uh, it's the am I totally blanking on it's this the one? two blue blue sorcery version of Dig Through Time. It's more consistent. Yes, it is. Uh, probably not better. I don't think it's, it's better because of the sorcery speed, but it's definitely a playable card in this format. Yeah, like just being safe and doing it at the end of their turn is so. Yeah, holding it feels so much better than holding up mana. It makes you so secure. What's left if not embarrassing counter magic? Mm, it's uh, it's getting a little grim out there for counter magic at this point. Um, disallow. Disallow. Disallow's good. Three mana, hitting the planeswalkers and the activated abilities like it hits a time vault. Yes, that's true. Uh, like, so speaking of activated abilities, what are your thoughts on Tails End? That's what I thought you were about to say. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I couldn't remember if it was the Lost Legacy, not Lost Legacy, the Legacy, the Black One and a Black new one. Oh, Legion's End, yeah. I was like, Tales End or Legion's End? I always forget which one's yes. which. Tail, Tales End is the... Uh, yeah, I think I think this card has game in this format. I don't think you want it yet. I think you can get it, you can get in, it in the 40s. Yeah, you can get it in the 40s. It's good. Uh, Mark takes memory lapse. I don't know how Mark wins the game. Dovin's Veto has not been taken. Only mm. Elaine is really ever going to be able to take it. Yeah, and so I think Elaine can get Dovin's Veto whenever she feels like it. Yeah. Negate, not been taken yet as well. Negate, also a reasonable card. Um, you you can take Swan Song in this format if you're if you're really feeling it. If you really need it, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you need it. Uh, um, yeah. So there's only like four or five truly not embarrassing counter spells left. Does anyone have Stifle? No, I don't think they no should either. No Stifle, no Trick Bind, or anything like that yet. Uh, it's like we are in the tank again. Yep. Stifle does not seem amazing. There's not going to be fetch lands in every deck. There's not going to be candidates in every deck for you to stifle. Yeah. 
Uh, Tendrils of Agony probably won't get picked. Yeah, I, I don't I don't see a storm deck here other well, than I mean, Jeff other has... than Blyden's, but Blyden is not going to want to generate black black. Yeah, it's really hard to do storm in this format. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't need to to cast uh, tendrils. He can... Memory lapse yeah. just got picked actually. Yep. Cody is backdooring in this. He game? kind of is with the with the double ritual pick, but I don't think I think he's just going to be diluting his draft by doing this. He doesn't need. I was actually talking with Cody while you were interviewing. Mm-hmm. No remand, interesting. Mm, yeah, it's just a tempo card. Like it's a good tempo card. Yeah, I think I think it's if fine. Mark, I'm if, being rude. Like it's no, fine. I think if Mark were to move into blue green, the remand would be would be a, gr a strong consideration. But he's clearly not doing that. So Papo had, um, I totally agree. Like Carrick is really good in a dedicated storm deck. Uh, but Cody is not a dedicated storm deck. Yeah, he's not there yet. Cody is playing Entomb, Reanimate, uh, Grizzlebrand, Thoughtseize, Cabal Therapy, Sire of Insanity, Garoyo's Vengeance, Force of Despair. If he wants to move into Storm, he can move. He can move he into can, a Storm deck, but he, he's lost a lot of the cards that he would be looking. Yeah, he's for. lost his cantrips. He's yep. lost a lot of just good things you need for that. Like I 100% agree. Yeah. That he could do it. Tin fins. Okay, you got me. <laughs> Never mind. Papa, I'm so sorry. You're right. so right. Oh my gosh. Well, when 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 he picks when, when um, he, this is the last time you saw tin fins get played. I I mean it's it's been a minute. But when he picks uh, Autocathon Worm and, and goes into in, and nourishing shoal and starts going off with Gristlebrand or or whatever else crazy cra whatever other crazy thing happens. I'm getting hit foolish. with some ridiculous like. Children of Coriolis. Don't don't pick the children. That's not <laughs> no. Leave the children no, no, out no, of no, this. No. Let's pull them up. Let's see what we're looking at. Uh, the wheel where you untap six lands. Which wheel is that? Time spiral. Time yep. spiral. Yeah, that's a great card. Yeah, I don't think that's been taken yet. No, it is not. It's a hard card to use, I guess. It is. It, you you got to pay. The down payment is tough. Of six mana. What's the new one that um has the flashback? Echo of Eons. That one's very cool. Uh. God. You were you just type children. It'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> There's not a lot of children. There you go. Three types. I forgot they were human rebel clerics. I don't see a lot of three type. Clerics. No, you don't. Alec uh, just took Karn Scion Eve of. Wow, sorry guys. I have hiccups. Um, <laughs> Alec just took Karn Scion of Urza after yes. taking Ink Moth Nexus. And and Elaine has found a new win condition with Monastery Mentor here. Yeah. Um. She In a reactive deck, it's not as good. Like, yes, that's about all I can say. Like, Serum, it's still, still good. Uh, that's bad. Like, I Ceremonious don't know. rejection. I mean, you can't main deck it. How how afraid do you have to be of Jeff's deck to take Ceremonious rejection? Very. Here? And I don't. I guess I guess what the problem with Elaine's deck is Jeff's deck seems incredibly streamlined. Mm -hmm. Sure, its main pivot point right now is Mystic Forge, and I wish there was like another axis it could operate. Yes. On, but I think. Elaine's really going to struggle to beat Jeff's deck in game one. That's interesting because Jeff seemed like he's he is the most afraid of Elaine's deck. Oh my that God. was Mark the matchup. Steel sabotage. Woo! That's a good card. That's that's the card you want instead of ceremonious rejection. That's him. That's him telling Elaine, "Hey, here's the card you should have picked. It's yeah, Steel it sabotage." Ceremonious rejection, basically, in this format. Uh, Hang on. Yeah, I don't think Chaos Orb's legal in this format. I don't think. I don't think the dexterity cards are legal. Let's wait, wait. <laughs> you can't, <laughs> Jeff. No. <laughs> I mean, I'll go home and get my tape measure. I'll do yeah. it. I'll be, I'll be chaos as a, orb as judge. a level three judge. Right. Eric, like, Look, I, do I you really want to resolve a chaos orb. I've judged old school before. Yeah. I've, I've, I've held the magical chaos orb stick many what a time. Is, what is the? Uh... What is the format? It's not old school. It's like where you actually follow the rules of it, where it says like, if this card would be buried or destroyed, do you then like rip? Oh, it? Iron Man. Iron Man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we played. Have you ever judged an Iron Man game? Before? I've never judged Iron Man, but I have played Iron Man. We played Iron Man with like, you know, like a box of 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 M something that had had the rares taken out. Okay. And so we just, you know. Uh, at the Powers. end of the right. <laughs> it wasn't my box i would have left the rares in i don't okay. give a crap but we we like there were pieces of cards all over my floor it was great 
have you judged Flavor Magic? Uh, I actually am a level three Flavor Judge. Oh, so, uh, we have yeah. we have six levels of Flavor Judge in this room. That's yeah, fantastic. It's oh, you're a level three Flavor Judge. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> very unofficial rankings, but don't worry. Yeah. Uh, I have unfortunately read most of the books, all of the articles. Oh and yeah. All that stuff. Uh, most of the flavor texts, we can do it. Jeff tanks for five minutes and then gets contract from below. No. <laughs> Please, no. I mean, I, if... if, if... Um, just as a heads up, a real pick that was made, Joe picked Swan Song. Uh... Yes, Joe did pick Swan Song. <laughs> Jeff pick... Now, if Jeff comes back and, and yeah, does Jeff... take... Does Jeff take is just pissed that, like, four <laughs> anti-card... Jeff's just like, come on. Like, I'm I'm placing a call right now to my demonic attorney, just in case Jeff does pick a uh, contract from below really here. <laughs> I just <laughs> looked up Iron Man, and oh my god, yeah, Iron Man's yeah. insane. If you want to like feel high anxiety. Oh. Um, what's the other format? Uh, so there's a format that I just found out. Uh, I was watching Loading Ready Run, mm -hmm. which they're fantastic. Oh yeah, content creators. they're great. Uh, Beige Lander, Beige is one of their content creators, and it's like you get the dollar store repacks. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, we don't know how bad Jeff is. Well, I can't see him right now. <laughs> I just want you. To... Jeff, if you want us to know how mad you are, you got to put your face in the in the draft cam. Yeah, 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 we got to see like you. That. Um, but Beige Lander, yeah. So it sounds like some. But in chat knows what it is as well. So, so it's, it's the dollar, dollar store repacks. Oh. Guaranteed one rare. Yes. And one um, foil. And it's just a bunch of cards. And you have to make a 60 card, no, a 100 card Highlander deck out of it. You're given as many basic lands as one. But you can only use that as your pool. Oh my gosh. And if you get multiples, tough shit. Yeah. <laughs> you get, um, basic lands, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> And I oh. want to play Beachlander so bad. Oh, I'm so ready for this format. I love formats with terrible arbitrary restrictions. Y'all, it's real. Yeah. Um, let's get. Let's all get on eBay. Artifacts and Monolith is a combo. Those yeah, it's infinite mana. Shady eBay sellers all over the world are just so hyped about Beachlander. I am so stoked <laughs> about Beachlander. So Jeff took Power Artifact. It combos mm, with like half yes. the mana rocks he has. It's incredible. Brandon took Genesis Wave, which is a way to play his entire deck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, chainer Nightmare. This is the new Chainer. This is the black red Chainer from Commander 2019. Uh, I just saw a really great question from Mike. If you want to start talking about that, how does a rotisserie draft work? Yes. Well, so a rotisserie draft work. Uh, basically, it's it's a it's a concept fall, borrowed from fantasy sports where there's a big draft board and you set a pick order. And in order, each person picks one card from, in this case, the available pool, which is all vintage legal cards. And you keep that order. You st whoever gets the first pick, um, every, it's you go one th first through eighth pick. Um, you decide that order before the draft, and then whoever has eighth pick also gets the ninth pick. So if you have last pick, you you end up with two I picks hope in a row. Next man, you have no idea how excited I'd be to see Angie get drafted. <laughs> so uh, yeah, instead of instead of drafting by passing uh, packs around a table, you draft by basically passing one big pack of all vintage legal cards around one at a time. How did we get the name Rotisserie Draft? I think um, there's some store, old it's, story it's, about... Um, so it's a fantasy football... It's actually a baseball Yeah, it's a baseball, baseball thing. Baseball. Uh, this is like 1960s, 1970s Yeah, it was a while baseball. back. Uh, back. Uh, so the way people visualized it when explaining it to people... Uh, Costco chicken instead of a pizza. I mean... The, but the pizza uh, will come to us. So it spins like a rotisserie chicken. Uh, so you're constantly rotating through, which means you'll get the wheel effect of the two picks stacked to each other. Yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, so, but yep, but Chainer, let's let's talk about Chainer let's talk about for a Chainer. minute. There was a Force of Vigor and a Leyline of Void and then Stitched Together, which is another quick I feel like we're going to be talking about. Chainer is a great discard outlet. Uh... <laughs> And it allows recasting. Like, it's a really good card. So this is a way to cast reanimate when your opponent has made you wheel it or discard it or something like that. Was it a... Did they bring rotisserie chickens or something? I don't remember the I history of it. I think that's not correct. It. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, it was the name of the restaurant. Oh, okay. Thank you. I there knew it, it was is. fantasy baseball, and it I knew was, it had to do... Yeah. Dang it. You're I right. knew it was a baseball thing, and that's that's all I... They literally drafted a rotisserie chicken place. That's very cool. Thanks. Appreciate it, Chris. Sweet, I've been corrected yeah. by Chris. Well, now we know. Um, we learned so something. Chainer, uh, 
it's a very interesting card. Like, yes. It's one of those cards that people are very excited about. And there's a lot of picks we're missing. We're going to catch up to them very quickly. Uh, so you discard a card, cast a creature from your graveyard this turn. You can only do it once a turn. Uh, you can do it on other people's turns if you so feel like. And creatures have flash, which is a side note to notice. There's a book you can read about. It. Okay, cool. I will have to check that out. Uh, the Gush book. Um, yeah, the Gush book. <laughs> yeah, obviously There's a Gush the book Gush here book. somewhere. <laughs> yeah, we um, have it on this bookshelf behind us. Um, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it didn't cast it from your hand, it gains haste, so you can bash in with it. Yep. You this card is really good in reanimator. It's a great reanimator card, uh, because it doesn't just affect the cards you recast with Chainer, it affects other cards that you reanimate as well. Alright, so Force of Vigor, that's the new Force Cycle yep. green. It hits artifacts and enchantments, it exiles them. I it's think this card this is format. great. Leyline of the Void... It's a hedge against all the graveyard shenanigans. Yep. Uh, Stitch together. Stitch together a threshold card from Judgment, I believe. Um, it's a it's a great reanimator tool. Yeah, uh, return target card, creature card from your graveyard to your hand, and if you have threshold, uh, battlefield instead. Double black. Meanwhile, Brandon picking up Leovold to lock his opponents out of the <coughs> the draw sevens that he's going to be casting. I'm so sad to see Gush was banned in Popper. I am not. And I used to play Mono Blue Delver exclusively. Gush was miserable uh, to play against. Sorry. Uh, as a guy who won several multiples of tournaments <laughs> playing Mono Blue Delver Ugh. at for the better part of seven years, it was time for Gush to go. It had to go. Once Foil got printed, it was time for Gush to go. Sorry. It's, uh, well, it certainly wasn't. Can you click on the Leovold? Oh, I'm so sorry. Can, yeah, my bad. I, uh, it's all good. Yeah, uh, I love looking at Leovold's operative. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Leovold, it's great in this format because it draws you a lot of cards and yeah. prevents your opponents from drawing a lot of cards. It's amazing with those wheel effects. Yeah. Uh, sculpting Steel uh, five for Five Tron, yes, Popper in the <laughs> SEU. It's the new hotness. It's very good. The rotisserie scoring system. Those are 1980s. La Rotisserie Française. Okay, that's awesome. really cool. That's super cool. I'm going to have to read about that more, because I knew it was fantasy baseball. I just didn't know. I thought it had to do with the chicken and how it spun, but I right. was totally wrong. Yeah. I heard it from a guy who told was told by another guy. Oh, of course. It's always these apocryphal facts that you hear fifth hand, right? Sculpting Steel, that's just another way to get a good artifact. Um, yeah. Protein Hulk is oh. for the through the breach. Yes, this is this what's is the, a. Uh, what's the combo that you get with that? Well, you there's there's a few different options. You can do a disciple of the vault combo with some. Uh, uh, that's not a hate draft, by the way. The microsynth lattice. Yeah, that is he has the Karn. That goes with the Karn, the great He's creator. He's doing that. So. Now, ensnaring bridge in his deck. That's a little confusing it to me because he wants Joe to from attack. Killing him. That's true. That's he has true. a walking ballista as a win con. Yeah, that's right. He has the ballista. Uh, it keeps the reanimator deck and it keeps the uh, teamer deck from killing. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't. And the, with the Hulk, he doesn't even need the flash because through the breach, uh, sneak attack, things like that, will still get the get the Hulk trigger going. How do you win with the Hulk uh, trigger again? Um, What's you can. The usual move? I mean, you can you can Hulk out Kiki Might, I think. I think you can, yes. If uh, I remember the text of 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 Hulk correctly. Uh, Mark takes cryptic. Uh, sorry, Elaine Mark takes treasure cryptic, cruise. Yeah. Elaine takes cryptic. And then we have the microsynth ensnaring. Now we have containment priest. Great hedge against the Hulk and the reanimator decks, uh, as well as anything trying to tinker. So if you might go tinker for white steel, and I in response containment priest you, you're very sad. Oh right, it's it's is it CMC? It I guess it's oh right, it's it's converted mana cost because you can get as many zero cost pieces of garbage as you want. It assumes. Okay. So you can get. You can't you can't do Kiki Might, but you the can thing do. Thing that makes fancy is the way. The right. Works. And I'm gonna have to just completely reread this. Um, yeah, because yeah. I appreciate the I appreciate you guys keeping me honest. It really helps. Uh, Mox Jet. Thank you for following. We appreciate it. I should have done that because my 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 fantasy baseball league we do auction draft, but we do roto yeah, I do, scoring. I do auction draft. I do an auction keeper league. Nice. And it's awful. Well, it's, it's fun, but <laughs> it's man, so it's much tough. work to do stuff it's like so that. It's so much work. Yeah. Serum visions is crying in a corner. I, I agree. Guess. Serum visions probably should have been picked by now. Yeah. Um, Containment priest. Any number of creatures. Totally CMC. Thank you, Carrick. I appreciate the 
update on that. Yes, thank you. Uh, Slide so. hand taken over serum visions. Oof. Porton taken over serum oh, visions. Oh no, we've all forgotten about <laughs> serum visions. City of Solitude coming in from Jeff's deck just to stop interaction. He's like, he's tired of this. Yeah, people have been hate drafted, which is funny because I think Jeff has probably gotten. Uh, yeah, he's on. He's the most on-plan person in the room. Yeah, yeah, and people are recognizing it, and they're like, "All right, I gotta do something." And he's got City of Solitude. He's got Defense Grid. He's got Mental Misstep. He's got some okay ways to defend himself here. Yep. So, guys, as we're ending the twenty-third round here at this draft, um, we need natural selection as a country. <laughs> Thank you. That's the uh, one with the bird holding yeah, the orb, yeah. right? Is yes. that card? <laughs> yes. Important to poor serum visions. <laughs> I uh, leave Jeff alone, you other drafters. I want to see him pop off. I do too. Um, regrowth from Brandon, just a good card. Yeah. Uh, there's aren't there creatures at like three mana with the regrowth effect? I mean, you can Ewit get Ewit is already out. You could get like Den Protector, but I think at that point you'd rather just cast Regrowth for for for, for Jeff two mana. Jeff is also really loud IRL. Yes, <laughs> that was my problem too. I'm you know I'm the least understated person. In, in the room most of the time, so I'm I, I have trouble not getting hate drafted. Did he freeze this? He did freeze this. All right, I'm gonna scroll the thing down just a notch so we can see. If you guys want to see any of the earlier picks, uh, let me know and I'll scroll the sheet back up. But we're getting pretty close where our overlay starts interrupting. Yes. So I'll keep it there. Right Sounds now. good. And if it you want to see the older picks, let me know. Also, um, I believe the Google Doc is a. Yeah, I think there's a command to get look at the sheet. Probably. Let me double check. I'm gonna. We'll find out. Yeah, yeah, we'll find out. If not now, we'll get it to you by the stop in yes. the third pack. Speaking of that Speaking stop, of the third yes. Pack, geez, um, I don't know what's going on with this 23rd pick with Hagen not making a pick. I hear him talking. Uh, yeah, I hear him thinking really hard. Uh, Liliana the Veil, good pick. Mm -hmm. uh, Great Very card. good pick. Good mid-range card. Disrupts people. Puts people under pressure. Uh, if you want to hear interviews with people who are not named Alec Deshaw or Jeff Blyden, mm -hmm. uh, put a command uh, exclamation point interview and then the first name. And it's Joe, by the way, for Hagen. Uh, we'll interview some people in between <laughs> the not, second and third packs. It's not Joe. You're sabotaging him. <laughs> you monster! <laughs> I just want to see Joe get in. <laughs> just get Joe in here. Get some, get some of that Joe get wisdom. Yeah, get Joe wisdom. I came for Professor Hagen, MDD. Um, it's Stephen Hagen. Yeah. Uh, one vote for Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Joe <laughs> got him. Uh, it worked out. All right. So Kitchen Finks. Um, I mean, there's no real aggro deck here, so... Malira, Malira I see, but Kitchen Finks is just... It's an infinite life. It's an infinite life, but, like... Does infinite life... There's there's decks here that are going to mill you out. Like, yeah. there's the Ashiok. Uh, Blyden can take Brain Freeze. There's plenty of ways for, for Hagen to die uh, not on life, so I'm not sure that that's what he wants here. Assassin's Trophy. Ooh. To catch all. Cody, well, Cody branching out into, into needing some green mana, though, here. Does he have the mox? Does um, not? He he, no, yeah, he does. I'm pretty sure. I want to double check. He has he does not have no mox. way to generate green mana as of this moment. Uh, he's going to need to pick up some way. He does have the arid mesa and I think another fetch. So he has arid mesa, bloodstained mire. Bloodstained mire. So he could certainly pick up. Um, I mean, the red green. Uh, he could pick up stomping ground. Yeah. Or or Taiga, Taiga if Taiga's not gone because Overgrown Tomb Bayou and Bayou are both gone. Yeah. This, this is where it gets a little tough in these mid picks because like you start seeing the plan most people are doing. Yes. And you can start saying, hey, maybe I need something. Ooh, Brandon took Dark Depths. Ooh. Uh, did he take crop rotation earlier? Uh, crop rotation no, went to crop. Joe. Yeah. I think this is the most interesting part of the draft because in the first the first 15 picks you can kind of get what you want a lot of the time. In the last 15 picks people are just kind of cleaning up, adding things to their deck that they might play, picking up sideboard cards, but this, it's this middle of the draft where people really make the picks that I think matter the most. Yes. Uh, Jeff just took Xantis Swarm. He's Ooh. really trying to make people leave him alone. Yes, he says, hey, stop hate drafting me. I'm going to have a great sideboard for you. Deal with it. Uh, we need a prison deck with chains and that stupid mask card. Um, there is. You want to do chains of Mephistopheles Uva mask? Is that is that what we're talking about? Oh my god! Black white, like maybe a. 
I'll say it, a Pakula style. Yes, a Pakula style. You, so, okay, so so Mark, what Mark needs to do is Mark needs to spend his remaining 22 picks uh, completely shifting his strategy and moving into Uba stacks. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> and instead he took rebound. Can I get a Kappa in chat, please? <laughs> Bottled Cloister? Sure, Bottled Cloister. Um, careful study. Yep. You know it still hasn't been true. Uh, Faithless looting hasn't been uh, hasn't been picked, has it? Uh, no, nor has uh, serum visions. Nope, no serum visions. But we're we're picking careful study. Chains and puzzle box. I know puzzle box has been picked in VRD before. It's just a question of how many times. Probably once. Let's see. It's a fairy apostrophe. Brandon takes puzzle box. No sign. Auto for message for reasons. <laughs> I like how the mod hit that. Like. The auto mod did not like takes puzzle box. <laughs> yeah. Woof. That's hilarious. STL VRD. Yep. So Elaine is taking Dovin Hand of Control here, I assume, for the taxing effect. It's so funny. The auto mod does not like the term puzzle, puzzle box. Puzzle box. Oof. <laughs> it's super funny. Uh, our auto mod just caught like three people trying to use the term. Uh, puzzle box. Puzzle box. And, <laughs> and I was like, huh, what's going on there? Uh, Dove in Hand of Control. So yep. that's another blue-white control card. A good Taxes your opponent. And that's a, uh, that's another an, another pick aimed directly at Jeff. Because it's going to make those artifacts cost one more and make it a lot it harder. For, yes. Everything or just artifacts? It's artifacts. Uh, it's some class of... It's it's groups of cards, one of them being artifacts. Uh, Lavina will go late because there's no one else that can draft it besides Elaine. Yeah, she, she but, has no reason to draft it until like the 40th round. Yeah, she can take Lavinia anyway. But she, she took it like, unbelievably early the first. She <laughs> did. She took it like third round. And yep. We were crushing her for it. <laughs> we were like, "What are you doing?" Um, dove in hand, hand of control. control. Uh, artifacts, instants, and sorceries. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Does Elaine have Thalia? No, Thalia is not on the board yet. Elaine could do it, but it makes her deck struggle. Well. Yeah, it makes all of her free spells cost. Right, use. whereas Dovin just just aims itself right at your opponent's stuff. Yeah, um, this and it is, slows this is tough. This down. is where the draft definitely slows down because mm -hmm. this is this is hard. You're now looking. You have the base of your plan. There is different styles too. I remember at your draft, um, was it Hagen that basically backdoored Infect around this point? This was that was uh, Daniel Zelensky. Daniel Zelensky. He uh, this is right when he. Switch. He started taking well, like switch. he just he, kept it secret. He showcased his plan. He was like, "All right, now it's time for Glistener Elf Blighted Agent." Uh, that know, is the second spell. artifact land. Just as a heads up. Yeah, we did we did have uh, Seed of the Synod taken a few rounds ago, round eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is when he really just took good green blue cards. And he won that draft. He was the winner. Yeah. So I mean, everyone wasn't prepared for it. I think green blue is a little under drafted in this format, honestly, as a color combination. It's able to interact in ways that matter. Ancient Stirrings for Alec. I think that's a great pick for him. Now, could he have gotten that later? Probably. Probably. But it's going to be a very powerful card in this deck. <laughs> Just had to mute my mic. Oh yeah, I died. you're good. Um, I'm glad you didn't die. That was yeah. good. Uh, green blue is always best cube sealed deck. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it just doesn't seem to ever get drafted. Those catch because people just get so stuck on blue. Or yes, uh, the I think ability I, to just do these hyperlinear cool combo decks. I think people really uh, kind of shoehorn themselves, really, really shoot themselves in the foot, and I count myself among this group of people in, in the last VRD by just sort of like saying I'm going to draft this powerful linear strategy and then just nailing that strategy to their chest for the entire draft and never deviating. And I think that that moving moving into into different colors, reacting to the draft is so important. Being able to change what you're doing, and I think uh, I'm really excited. I hear what you're saying. I yeah. No. Say, yeah. I'm really excited for Alec to like 43rd pick draft Immortal Sun. Oh yes. To tinker against all these Lane. all these planeswalkers, all right? All these planeswalkers. Elaine is playing. I think Immortal Sun would be a fantastic sideboard card for that deck. Uh, disrupting Shoal from Mark. Yeah, we're getting to some wild factor fiction from Joe. Uh, yes. Can someone please draft the Kethis combo. It's a little hard to do with only hard with only you know. one Mox. Um, Opal. Uh, I guess you have other Moxes. Right. You can play regular Mox and you can play the Amber. There's a few different ways to do it. Yeah. 
it'd still be a little tricky. <laughs> uh, fact or fiction from Joe? Interesting. Fabricate from Jeff. Yes, fabricate. Uh, what's, it's triple blue, so it's a little hard, but um, whirl of invention. Whirl of invention. Uh, reshape is also an option that has not come up yet. Yeah, I was thinking of legendary, not historic. Uh, right, you yes. You correct, Papa Ed. ABU Moxon are, are historic because they're artifacts. Yeah, I was thinking of legendary But they're, effects, they're right. not legendary. Um, Green Sun Zenith from Brandon, but not a lot of targets for it. But 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 Kethis cares about um, cares about legendary though, right? Not historic because Kethis is not the from Kethis, Dominaria. Right? Just a card I'm not super. Yep, it cares about legendary, so we got to have those uh, those legendary yeah. cards. You For some reason, I thought it said historic. So you got to have opal and amber. And There's really no way to know. It would be really hard. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Hagen has drafted my least favorite card and maybe Magic's entire history. Collected Company. God, I cannot stand that card. Now, now, why is that? Because uh, you're playing Pachinko instead of Magic the Gathering. <laughs> um, you don't like these Hearthstone effects where it's like maybe something good happens to you and maybe not? No. That's not fun for you? No, I don't. It's terrible. <laughs> I, don't, I don't enjoy that kind of design either. Um, I'm, I wonder if a Dryad Har Harbor hate is coming. In what mm. way? What does Dryad Arbor hate look like? So I, I think Dryad Arbor should be drafted by Brandon now that he has a green sun. But uh, right? Do you, are you saying like? Do you think Dryad Arbor is going to get hate picked by someone? I mean, Cody, I guess could do it. But Cody took bad. Frantic Search, which was a great, which is a great took pick. Karn without pants. Yep. Just fine. Uh, Enlightened Tutor. Mm. Okay. I guess he has Chromox and ability. To yeah, use. he can. But but Chromox won't you know he's gonna have to to imprint a white card if he wants to cast Enlightened Tutor with that. Uh, Malstorm, another Dryad Arbor hate card is Lightning Bolt. Yes. Uh, Fatal Push is another one. Uh, have to exile. Lava Dart. Lava Spike. Zap. Flame Jab. <laughs> Forked Bolt. Shock. <laughs> Flare. Yes, Naveen, I do remember when I got a sportsmanship warning. Um, <laughs> Oh, it's 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 real talk day apparently. Yes. Um, how did I get it? What did I do? Naveen, can you remind me of the card that got me a sportsmanship warning? I got very schmarmy um, towards someone. I find that hard to believe. Oh, I'm in love with the Coco. Do you remember the song "I'm in love with the Coco"? Yes. So I was playing a Coco deck. I was playing a Bance Spirits Coco deck. Oh yes. And it was stupid, <laughs> and it wasn't very fun to play, but it was a good deck. It was a good deck, though, yeah. I remember doing pretty well with it, and this one guy played Coco. It was like a green-white Coco deck, and he was telling me about just how amazing the card was. Sure. He, like, coco for nothing or something like that. <laughs> and then on his end of turn, he had to coco main phase because, like, he was he needed creatures or he was going to die. And so I waited till the end of his turn, and I coco and I hit, like, the exact two cards I needed just to win the game. And then I was like, I'm in love with the Coco. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was being a jerk the entire time. That got you time. a warning? You sang a song and got oh, a warning? Oh, no. I like, did it really loud okay. in his face and yep. swung for lethal. That'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine thinks I'm laughing at her Shadow of Doubt pick, but I am laughing at Alex. I think the Shadow of Doubt pick is... is that's a that's a card that you want. Do, now, do yeah. you want to pick it here in the in the the middle of the draft? Uh, draft? I don't think so. Hey, Throne of Geth. There it was. <laughs> <laughs> We've been waiting for that. Throne of Geth. Honestly. Yes. No, we did. Yeah, new New Ashiok is better, and and uh, new but New Ashiok is already in Mark's deck, yeah. so she needs I some mean, it's way a static to. Ability is just right. better. Have you ever uh, fetched for land after casting a shadow deck? Yep. Mm. Yep. Feels bad. Did it on Moto. Mm -hmm. Was not happy. Mm -hmm. Um. Into Master of Ethereum. Ooh, so he's really he, he really is every other pick I think Alec is 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 picking for one of two different decks. And I'm trying to figure out where his deck is gonna lie. I hope it doesn't those. lie in the middle, because it's gonna be really bad if yes. it lies in the middle. I think there is like a I would love to see a uh, the dice bolt deck, but uh press X to doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Fork Bolt is actually a high pick in PRD. Yes. Elaine picking up the Tundra here. Yep. Archmage's Charm. Now that card went... I took that in the 40s in the last draft, and I think Mark has, has grabbed it a little early, especially because he could have just taken... Negate. Negate. <laughs> 
that's what I love about vintage Earth history is like you can draft next to someone and they'll just take yeah. the card you should have taken. You just be like, it's oh my so god, good. I just wasted this pick. That happened to me a couple times last draft where I was just like, you know, hey, word of invention finally showed up. Oh, was, I took I took reshape when transmute artifact was still available. That was very bad. Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> that's a tough look, my dude. <laughs> yeah, it was not good. Yeah, Archmage's charm. I've, has counter spell been picked? The card counter spell. One sec. Because I want to say the card counter spell is still available. Nope. Never mind. Mark has it. Was taken that makes Mark. sense. A million years ago. Look at my use of the control F. Oh, function. that good That's control a... F. I'm glad counter spell. That's a business degree working for you. Hey, I mean, look, I, 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 I have a master's in Excel. I get it. <laughs> Or I could have just waited on chat because they're <laughs> far more in tune. Yeah, I mean, they, but but it was faster. It was yeah, faster yeah. to search. Corsair Prefix. That is a card that should have been taken by now. Yes, uh, and and yet Oracle of Moldia still I, out there. I can't believe Hagen hasn't taken Oracle. I um, I am. I mean, I think Brandon or or Hagen are both both really in need of this Oracle of Moldia. Corsair is a great card. Don't get me wrong. And Corsair does let Brandon go off with fast. It box. has not been picked yet, Popo Chad. I. Just can't believe it. It should be picked by now. Now, do you think Brandon is using Courser instead of Oracle to mitigate the fast bond life loss? Is that yes. what he's worried about? In, yeah, it's not infinite, but it's a loop right. um, where you don't lose life. Uh, lands decks play it a lot. Yep. Uh, like the Canadian Highlander lands deck. Yes. Does it, and it's pretty gross. Yeah, I've seen that in Canlander. That's yeah, right. If you have the Crucible and a fetch land, you can literally just take everything out of your deck and then only have gas and with a deck that's based on wheeling that looks like his as much. I don't really know what his game plan is. Cody takes Blood Crypt here, which is interesting because I do feel like he wants... He, he took the Twilight Mire a couple picks ago, but that's not a fetchable green source. Uh, yes, I mean, I think he needs a stomping grounds. Yes. Uh, oh, Hagen took Yogmoth. It's Yogmoth. Ooh... Look at uh, this. We will be streaming the games. Um, yes. We're going to try. We have actually someone off the side. Who was it again? This it's uh, Kyle, Kyle Richter is going to try to make sure. Kyle Richter right now is building all of these decks as these drafts come in with our uh, proxies. God bless him. Um, and we are going to be for sure uh, streaming these games. It'll probably be like a five-minute break between the draft to actual game time. Yes, I can talk about Veil of Summer. It happened. Okay, good. Uh, Veil of Summer just got picked up by, by yep, Steven. We have Yawgmoth and Veil of Summer. Yes, yeah, lots these of are about. great, great cards. Veil of Summer is a new card from, from M20, but but first let's get to Yawgmoth. Uh, sure. Uh, oh, I forgot. There's a bunch of cards in okay. Yawgmoth. No, there's... there's <laughs> you, yeah. Oh, it's... There's only 16. You're good. Oh, and... But, 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 there he is on the right. So this is another great a great card with like Vizier of Remedies and things like that. You can he can go off, proliferate, sacrifice creatures, do do a bunch of nonsense. Basically with if he has Hoffman. a kitchen things out, you yeah. can get infinite life while permanently wiping his opponent's board. Yep. Uh, which is a fantastic while drawing way. his deck. Yeah. Uh, great way to take over the game if you're Hagen. Yeah. Um, but and, and then you can you can take over the game, you can cast a big uh, What's the card? The dinosaur thing. Finale. You can cast a big finale and attack for a million. Yeah, or yeah. just, you know, beat them to death over time. But Veil of Summer. Oh my gosh. I was talking about this card in my podcast uh, about hate cards and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, this card's main deckable. It's absolutely a main deckable card. It is insane. Uh, it just, one, it's a green cantrip. Yep. Uh, it's a green cantrip. And then it will protect your stuff. It'll counter your stuff. And it does it till the end of the turn. So it's... Not only protection in the moment, it's protection for the rest of the game. Yeah. For the rest of the turn, I should say. Any creature with undying, yes. Oh, Shallow Grave pushes Cody even closer to the old Tin Fins archetype here. Oh, Brandon just took Urkel's Recall as well. Ooh. That's super rude. Um, Jeff is going to have... Jeff is going to have a silver bullet against him in every game. Yep. Uh, which is really unfortunate. That is tough, because his deck is so cool. I'm, I'm depressed yeah. about that. Humility. Humility from Elaine. Oh, hey, Serum Vision's got taken. Yes, finally. Yeah. Reshape uh, from Jeff. Tarmogoy from, from Joe. Opalescence JK. He's like, yeah, Alex's not going to pick. Yeah. <laughs> Hangerback Walker, just another. Rebuild might be better in this format. It's I, I I think theoretically you submit one main deck. Now, no one is... So everyone has access to each other's decks. Right. Deck lists. So you submit your main deck. 
and then you play with that. Right. Because if I knew I was playing, when I played that green deck that had like a lot of variable sideboard cards, yep. and I knew I was playing against, like let's just say, Jeff's deck, I would have had seven copies of Rexage. Right. Uh, and I would have played every single one of them. Yeah. And then if I would have played against the lane's control deck, I would have taken all of those out. Right. <laughs> like, but that's why you gotta you got to have yeah. one main deck, otherwise it's just... Or are you talking about the card rebuild? Yeah, I think I think rebuild. I was thinking of like yeah, because that's got cycling. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. Yeah, if you have. Sorry, to, I was thinking of deck construction in between rounds. When right, I was right, yeah. Or continuous construct. Right, which we don't do. We just yeah, do the one no, main deck. You get one deck. Hangerback Walker and then Tormod's Crypt. So Alec is just trying to make sure that he has game against the uh, the various graveyard strategies. Oh, I here. do not think I get what you're saying now. I do not think Hercules Recall will be in Brandon's main deck. No. no, no, no. Uh, but it will be in the sideboard and it will come out yep. multiple times. Well, a card like Rebuild, I still wouldn't want to main deck it. Um, but no. You could more stomachingly main deck it if you it has cycling. If you felt like you had to. Yeah. But I don't think there are enough good good deck good targets for rebuild here. No one's taken upheaval yet. There is no one playing the upheaval deck no. right now. Uh, it's a green blue. You've seen it get drafted in like vintage and legacy drafts. Meltdown from Joe. Let's uh, let's, let's talk about that. meltdown. That's a spicy one if I remember. Right. Um, because I, I was expecting like pulverize and things like that, but meltdown is here. Destroy each artifact with total CMC X or less. Wow. So for one red mana, it destroys all mocks. Yep. Meltdown will just delete all your zero mana artifacts. And now here, 21 rounds after Crucible was taken, Ramanac, Ramanap Excavator has shown up. And I know I know how you feel about that. You are it's ridiculous. I, like, I, I, I agree. I think the, the Excavator is fantastic. Like, I mean, I'm glad I got drafted, but it's ridiculous. Faithless Looting getting drafted also pretty late, honestly. Oh. Uh, uh, second, second Sunrise, yep. Jeff, Jeff is doing unfair, unfair things. things. Mox Monkey is being invoked in the chat here. I, yeah, Gorilla I love Shaman. Some Mox Monkey, man. Yep. If only someone was playing red in this draft. Yes. Uh, second Sunrise. Uh, eggs card. It's terrible. I mean, it's good, but uh, like, <laughs> terrible to play against. Hagen Murderous Red Cap. Hagen is now getting win conditions. Hagen cannot read chat. The players are not in, in chat as far as I understand it. Yeah, no, they shouldn't be. They should not be. If you're in chat, get out. Brandon. <laughs> he was all yeah. in chat before this. Vasir, another. Brandon has this plan. I'm not worried yeah. about him. So Hagen's like kind of turning into this like. Yeah, he's Abzan aristocracy. Reminiscent of the old Project X deck from like the Time Spiral standard yeah, with the Crypt wow. Champion combo, mm -hmm. Sapphire Daughter. It's that same thing, Probably but just took updated. Liliana Death's Majesty. Wow, I that's the that's I the five mana Liliana, right? Uh, that's, that's the, the Amonkhet one. Yes. yes. Well, I guess one of the five mana Lilianas. So it mills you, it reanimates things. Hagen does not have Pod yet, but he can wait on it because yeah. no one else will take. No one else will take Pod from him. Yeah. Uh, he can also wait on. He's not playing blue, so. He no, he's not going to take um, the new creature that does no. it. No, but he could take Neo form if he was really feeling it. That would be. I don't think it'd be good, but he I mean, could do it. the amount of undying creatures he has. And actually, yeah. Acceptable. And especially the amount of silver bullet creature he, creatures yeah. he has, it could actually, actually be good. Actually, it probably be okay, honestly. Yeah. Uh, same with. I mean, he'll probably take Eldritch Evolution instead, though. That's be true. Easier to cast? Yeah. Neo, well, Neoform is... All right, guys, we are just about... Oh, wow, Winter Orb. Ooh, Winter Orb. Look it's at really that. It's really for a Winter Orb. <laughs> Faith Reward coming in after Second Sunrise. That makes sense. I don't know why he took them, though. They're, no one's going to fight him for that. By Force, by but, Joe. Yep. By Force, another another artifact hate card. Standstill from Caterberg. Really? Standstill. Interesting. I don't know how Caterberg wins a game, but Does he's going to draw some cards. Is he going to just... Are we going to see him pick up like a Mitra's Factory and a Fairy Conclave late and just beat people down with lands? Are you talking? What, are you talking about like the Jeskai Standstill deck from Legacy? Was that yeah, just like a Landstill deck? <laughs> even a yeah, Landstill deck. Oh god! I mean, it looks Seems like, that's like a Mark card. It is a Mark card. It, Landstill is a Mark Mark type deck for sure. All right, guys. As this round ends, if anyone wants to put any final votes in for who yep. we'll be interviewing. Uh, just as a heads up, we have already interviewed Jeff and Alec, so we have Elaine, Mark, Joe, Brandon, Cody, 
and Joe, Joe Two, <laughs> aka Stephen Hagen. <laughs> you're, if you want to see him, you're going to need to vote for Stephen or Doctor Professor, PhD, <laughs> MD. Yeah. Interview Mark. Got you. So if you want to interview Mark, you're going to want to type exclamation point interview and then Mark, and then that'll get you in the the voting. Uh, uh, exclamation point. Yeah. Tell. Yeah. But I think Mark is up. He definitely had a couple. Yeah, Mark had a couple votes. It seems likely that people are going to want to talk to him, especially after that standstill pick. Yeah, I feel like if you do get him in chat, you should definitely ask him how he wins the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll keep your chat up as well. So we're definitely going to get Mark, it looks like, and then either Joe or Elaine. Do you want to do the interview this time around? Uh, you know, I will do the final round because I just uh, I gotta drink some water. I have a little cough. I've Sounds good. Heard. Yeah. Unless, Unless you want to. No, no, that's fine. No, okay. If you got a cough, you should get water. I will. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. Uh, Elaine, write the Twitch bot. <laughs> I think Mark wrote the Twitch bot. Yeah, Mark probably wrote the Twitch bot. He's yeah. got a true name nemesis. He's got an Ashiok. What else you need? You know. That's true. He does um, have the true name. And he can just wait with the Eshiak. <laughs> Elaine with a wave to Pakula in the chat here with her meddling mage pick. I respect that. Now let's make sure we get the right meddling. Oh, oh that's the wrong meddling mage. No, no, no. That's not it. Uh, go up. Uh, uh, nope. If you go back and then scroll down, there's uh, see where it says plane shift up near the top there? Yeah. Well, that's that's our guy. There he is. <laughs> all right. And then an S champion. S champion from Alec. Okay, so let's see. Meddling mage and singleton. <laughs> mage and singleton is questionable. Agreed. Oh, um, oh no, but she's called out the Alara Reborn art. Oh no. Oh no. Looks like uh, we're getting Mark in here. I think based on the votes. Mark. Then uh, was it Joe? It was Elaine? either Joe or Elaine. I let's think they were Elaine. tied. And then we'll put Joe in no matter what next one. <laughs> Alright, uh, right. I'm going to get chat up for you, and Sounds then I'm going to go get some water. And if you toss me the mouse so I can yeah, of course. switch around names and whatnot. Uh, let me pull that up correctly. Alright, uh, we'll you. get Mark and then Elaine. In awesome. For you right now. Thank you. All right, so I think we're going to get Mark in here first. So I'm going to switch his name on. Hey, Mark. Your name mostly fits in our little uh, little name zone here. <laughs> well, yeah, just that. So, uh, Mark, the chat wants to talk to you. First of all, uh, Avi says hi. Uh, hi, Avi. <laughs> but they want to talk to you. It, it sounds like they're, they're interested in your deck, especially some of these later picks. Uh, we were particularly mm -hmm. interested in the standstill. What's your plan here with that? Yeah, so my thinking is uh, I need to have some way to actually recoup cards, and Library of Alexandria is great, but there's a lot of Wasteland effects running around. So I need to have something to... Uh, hey, Naveen. I need to have something to actually get me back. And uh, with the amount of free or really cheap counter spells I have, I imagine there's a turn where I can go, like, turn one Daze or turn one uh, turn one Force Spike mm -hmm. and then just resolve a turn two standstill, and then I can just sit there and, like, sculpt my hand. Right, you just wait. Absolutely. Exactly. And then, like, whenever they actually pull the trigger and do something, I counter it in the Mystical Tutor and go find Time Walk. Yep. Uh, my deck doesn't really have win conditions so much. Sure. Uh, I, I would like to do more in that realm, so, like, Terramander's high on my list. Okay. Um, uh, and then maybe, like, an Invoke Prejudice or Nimble Obstructionist, but, like, I just don't have the density of win conditions, so I need to find other ways to generate value. Right. Because I'm not going to end the game quickly. No. That's for sure. So, do you plan to stay mono blue here, or are you planning thinking about? Yeah. Okay. So, like, I mean, just I didn't want to have to fight for mana. Right. Um. So, in the world where I am venturing into another color, it's just like hard to justify doing so. Yeah. Um. We were talking about uh, early on in the draft, you potentially branching out into red before Joe took the Kiki 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 Jiki and Splinter Twin back to back. Yeah. That was definitely on my radar of like, okay, if thirty pick thirty, nothing's been taken out of either. Uh, twin, I could go that way, or in fact, I still could go that way. Yes. I don't see a great reason to. Um, like, 
my mana situation wouldn't be hard to pull off, right? I could make 10 picks and splash into something yeah. else and spend 5 getting mana for it. But it's just like, right now I have, I just ran through here, and I have 27 playable cards. Mm -hmm. I, so I already need to make cuts from my list as it currently stands. Um, and that doesn't include the lands. So I'm just like, I mean, if I ran to another color, then why did I waste all these picks taking a bunch of mana? And that might be some cost fallacy, but hmm. I don't know. I think I think it's reasonable to just like sit out a bunch of counter spells and draw spells and see what happens. Yeah. Because um, yeah, if I were going to right now, it'd be very easy to grab Painter Servant Grindstone. It would be really easy to um, to, to grab Thopter Foundry and just like throw in a little bit of black. Uh, but yeah, I, I was really hoping when I got the time walk that I could pick up a bunch of uh, pick up a bunch of walkers, but Elaine just stifled that. Yeah, amazing. she she slammed her her foot down on the brake on that for you and just took all the walkers away. Yes. Even you know even going so far as to take cards like Jace Memory Add up just to say no you 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 don't get anything. Yeah, I, th I thought about also getting the new Jace, the one that is the Doomsday Wing. Mm, yes. And going that way. Um, Wielder of Mysteries. Yes. Yeah, that's the one. Um, but no, I don't think so. I think I'm happy in mono blue. Uh, I am still hunting around for like what for, for what the actual win condition of the deck is, but I think I'm looking at it right now, which yeah. is just cast a Delver of Secrets and hope to get there. A Delver, a true name nemesis, something like that, and just attack your opponent to death, or just ash yock them out and wait, right? Exactly. Sometimes that's, that's the plan. That's, that doesn't seem wrong, right? Like I'll probably pick up a Blue Sun Zenith at some point, mm -hmm. just for like, on turn 30, kill somebody. You gotta end the game somehow. Right. Um, but yeah, like, Personal Tutor is also high on my list, but the more I look at it, I'm like, Time Walk's good, but Time Walk doesn't give me the value that I was hoping to get. Because I was hoping to get, like, the little, the, the two mana Jace, yeah. and three mana Jace, and just like, okay, I'm going to do, do broken things with that. Um, but now at this point, I, I think that just having the Mystical is reasonable, Mystical and Merchant Scroll. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that... I think the uh, you know the planeswalker plan was good, but I still think you're going to generate a decent amount of value just taking an extra turn, you know, to get set up, get something like standstill out there, or or play a play a creature threat, take another turn, and then just be ready to counter something. Correct. Uh, the things that I'm worried about are things like Jeff's, where he has uh, Xantid's Form and City of Solitude back to back there. Yes. Um, but I, I don't. He has a lot of broken things he can do, but he doesn't have a lot of broken things he can do in quick sequence, right? So right. If, he, if he wants to try to go for resolving a City of Solitude, I counter that, then he can resolve one of his pieces, that's fine by me. Yeah. Uh, he would have to, like... There, there has to be a sequence where somebody resolves three spells in one turn for me to really get screwed on this. Yeah, he's he's going to need time uh, to, to get through your counter spells uh, by baiting you with things like City of Solitude and Xanthid Swarm. Correct. I saw Popo mentioned Urza. I looked at Urza, and I literally had it pulled up on my screen, and I'm just like, I don't have the artifact density for this. <laughs> I could easily see Alec or um, Alec or Jeff jumping into it, though, because that card's excellent. Yep. So. Do you think, other other than you were talking about uh, about Jeff's deck as a, as a potential area of concern, although you did you did mention that he everything would kind of have to go right with a City of Solitude type mm -hmm. effect, uh, what other decks are you worried about? Are there, are there decks you're looking at and thinking, mm, I don't think my strategy beats that? So I think that Hagen's deck can easily get underneath mine. Mm -hmm. If he just resolves a turn one ahead of Death Rite Shaman, I'm just like, well, I guess I lose the game. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, so yeah, I, I, there, are, there are any of the decks that have the one mana threats. So um, Alec could do it as well with the Ink Moth Nexus. Uh, but like a lot of these decks are playing a little slower. Yes. And as long as I get to turn two and there's no threat on board, I feel pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's certainly a concern that somebody slides something underneath me there. So That makes sense. Yeah. All right. You want me to grab a lane? Yeah, that would be great. Cool. Well, thanks, Mark. Yeah, Good sure. luck in the rest of the draft. Thank you. You need another drink? Uh, yeah, I would love one. Uh, a Natter Day, Budweiser, or uh, A Budweiser sounds great. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. I'll be right back. Enjoying these, these local beers. Yeah. It's muted right now. Perfect. Oh. Hey, Elaine. Uh... This is for you. Uh, the mic is muted, so you're gonna have to press the the button. It's on the it's on the cord. Oh, okay. If you, it's the that Logitech logo. This one? Yes, it's with the blinking light on it. Okay. And I'm Hi. Gonna... Hey, Elaine. I'm Hi. Gonna, I'm gonna get your name fixed here so that you're not Mark. I am, in fact, not Mark. I agree. And save. So. So yeah, I completely wasted this pick just just so that I could be here. <laughs> <laughs> and I succeeded. Um, 
Yeah, yeah so. so. People were already interested before that in your deck, I okay. will say. Well, I will tell you that in the last draft, I second picked Dark Confidant. Mm -hmm. And it was very good. <laughs> um, I expect Meddling Mage to be a bear. Yes, I, I think Meddling Mage is probably a lot worse in this format, unfortunately, than Dark Confidant. Yeah, yeah there were so, so many there were so many games where I was just like, okay, one for one you. We'll both help it. Then slam, slam Dark Confidant and win the game. But... Right, Meddling Mage does not, unfortunately, do that. Um, but but tell us about your deck. I mean, obviously you're you're drafting blue white control, which is in your wheelhouse here. But this was this the first time I've done that though? Sure. But was that the plan going in? Was oh, this what you wanted to do today? I zero plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was absolutely no planning involved at all. I just was like, well, if my first pick ancestral recall, I should like do ancestral recall stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you have the chance to play draw three cards for one mana, I think that's a great a great chance to take. Um, I am I was curious about a couple of the picks here. Okay. Um, the Dovin Hand of Control stuck out to me. I thought that was a great pick. Who, who are you sort of aiming that at? Is that is good against almost everybody. Mm -hmm. um, it does a lot of things. If somebody decides to back go into Infect like last time, it is insane against that. Um, but otherwise, it is a one-sided, like, it's a one-sided Thalia. Yeah. So, like... <laughs> right, and, and regular Thalia is not really something that you seem like you would want in your deck here. Um, as much as I like Thalia, I don't know if... Yeah. Yeah. That, that doesn't seem like it would be... Now, we are being asked why you didn't take Ashiok Dream Render before Mark got to it. Um, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, you should also be asking me why I took Cryptic Command instead of Mystic Confluence, why I took Mana Leak instead of um, Miscalculation. Yep, we did, we did ask that in the booth here when you took Mana Leak. We thought, hmm, maybe Miscalculation would have been the pick here. Yeah, um... Turns out I'm not good at this. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. This is this format is very difficult. This format is very difficult. That is true. And also, like, I'm a standard player most of the time. So right. Like, I don't. I don't know. I mean, okay. Last time I picked like all of the standard planeswalkers. I picked like thought erasure and like um, what was it like? Angrath's rampage, and they were insanely good. But, like, Angrath's rampage was very good last time. I will yeah. say. Um. I wish it was better against you, but um, <laughs> it, it was not. Also, like, with all of these things, I don't have Kess, and it's, it's really sad because I can't play Kess. Yeah, no Kess, but you do you do get to play your, your chosen blue-white control. Um, I do have one, one question about Energy Flux. Energy Flux? Energy Flux, in the ninth round. Yeah. How did how did we get there? How did we get to a to point where fair, we needed Energy Flux? was picked before Energy Flux. Mm, that's true. So... You should be. You, you should have asked Mark about. That. I should have asked Mark about Null Rod. Okay, that's fair. I didn't ask Mark about Null Rod, but uh, Energy Flux is that. Do you think that's why? Is that going to go in your main deck? Is that widely ap applicable? Um, it it could if I get more looting effects. Sure. I right now I have the Jace Wins Prodigy and that's it. Right. So it's like. And you yeah. didn't you didn't get the careful study right I did that not went get the careful to study yeah. or the. Uh, frantic search, which mm -hmm. I should have taken. Frantic search, that was probably a mistake. Frantic um, search, but is a there's great a lot card. of there's a lot of bullets. <laughs> Elaine looks pretty prepared for artifacts. Yes, yeah, between true. energy flux and Kataki, that is that is true. Uh, Stony silence also in my colors, mm -hmm. um, which is which might happen or might not. I'm not sure. Um, but Blinden doesn't seem worried about that. Also, can we talk about how like Blinden just like completely like I don't know how this happened because like it, a third pick you're just supposed to take the time vault deck because it's like insane and he just like was able to what yeah yeah you can take time vault very early but but Blyden managed to to get it fifth and he was saying the story he told me, and I don't know if this is true because I wasn't yeah. out there, but the story he told me was that he was he was he was talking down on time ball. He, he was, was saying, "Oh, you ball. should you really shouldn't take it that early. And the stats show you should take it seventh or eighth. Like, and then he that that meant that he sandbag he got it fifth. And I was just like, "Is that is that is that how it happened? Is that the real story? That is how it happened. Oh my god, he was full of shit. <laughs> 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 you know." Me in second pick, I can't do much about that. Right. I'm going to take Recall over Time Vault. You have to take tomorrow, Recall over Time Vault right? in that it's seat. Like, I mean... It's like the first pitch in like baseball, where like the first one is Black Lotus, the second one is Recall, and then the draft starts. 
La Alex disagrees. Last VRD, the commentators were talking down Time Vault, and then I got it, and they were they were you know they were kind of right, but mostly because I drafted the deck badly. But if 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 a competent drafter had you been also in my went seat, off, uh, turn two I, I made, did so. go off on turn two a couple <laughs> times. Soul Ring is an interesting consideration, but yeah, pick three Time Soul Vault Ring is runs, I think real. Uh, went tenth. Yeah, Soul Ring did not go in the first format or the first draft because we forgot about it. Yeah. Not because, because like, we didn't think it was good. We just forgot about it as that happens. All right. Well, it seems like people want to get back to drafting action. So just one last question for you. Who are you worried about? You've got your, you've got your, your draft kind of figured out. You've got your strategy thought out. Who are you worried about here? Uh, well, I, you're mistaken about my strategy being thought out. <laughs> um, honestly, like, I mean, all of the decks are strong. Like, this is a high 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 variance format, like, I'm worried about opponents going off on turn two and me not being able to do anything about it. So sure. I think that's kind of where I'm at. Um, and then I'm also worried about my deck just malfunctioning and me not being able to close out the game. Yep. So that's a consideration. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully you don't get turn two comboed off too many times. Uh, thanks for coming to chat. Good luck in the rest of the draft. Uh-huh. Have fun. We will. <laughs> I'm good. We can power through the rest of the draft and then I'll take my break at that point. Did the outside of the. It looks like cut off on the outside now. Did I do something? What looks cut off? The, the draft scene here. Oh, yeah. It's just, you just scrolled down a little bit. Oh, I see. Well, no, I mean the. Uh, like you can see the top of Meddling Mage is cut off here in the. No, 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 in the, in OBS. You see what I mean? Maybe th this might be a job for Control-Z. I might have done something. Nope. I was supposed to reverse when I Control-Z. There are things that got shifted up a couple places. Yeah. Or, well, because uh, the names are also cut off on the bottom here. Yeah. Live troubleshooting, folks. It's our favorite oh. thing to do. Setup. Right, this yeah. This, like, is, this, was mine, this is Mark's setup, and yeah. he's, of course, drafting. It's like, oh, yeah, obviously it makes sense to do this. Right. Meanwhile, you're like, I wonder if I zoomed it in somehow. Yeah, that's not what it looks like. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way to just, like... Okay, it looks like we're, we're back to picks, though, so let's... Uh... Let's focus on that hope of Girapur from from Alec trying to shut out interaction here. Yeah, we'll get that fixed in a minute. Um, yeah. Or by it, at least I'll do that besides. Uh, hope of Girapur, just a. Up, oh, your mic is off. Oh. All right, and I'm back. Uh, hope of Girapur, <laughs> just, just a. a... Alex is a Death, death Star. <laughs> um, I don't get. Yeah, yeah sure. sure. Why do you play Hope of Gear for? You know, I'm uh, not it's a sure. It's one-mana artifact. You can play it on one. And you have to connect. Uh, you have to connect to activate it. Yeah, like, it's a tough... It buys you time. It buys you... Where'd you go, Hope of Gear for? There it is. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, into Active Authority, into Flash Freeze, into Dispel, into Desert Seeker. We'll catch up to those in just a second. Uh, man, that is zoomed in. One second. Active Authority is not Active Treason. Active Authority is a, a different card. It's a commander card that hates uh, hates on artifacts and enchantments in a, a weird, weird way. If you if you hold control and then pull the scroll wheel back, will that change the zoom on the... No? Okay, that didn't do it. That ain't it. All right, anyway. so it's a card that's going to be able to... Hope you're for it. Yeah, it never, never really showed up. up. It was it's not a slow and it's weird. Yeah, you got to connect really with it. Interact. Active and authority though. That's a that's a card that I think we should. That's the uh, Aether Revolt. Uh, it's from Commander. It's from Commander. Oh, I'm thinking of the Crackdown. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah exile, exile, and then, yeah, you can give it away, mm. and it'll exile a second one. Yeah, no, this is, uh... Yeah, the three red red Phyrexian Act of Treason is Act of Aggression. Yeah. Um, which is an interesting card, but uh, Ray of Command, I think, would be... Yep, I like that. Uh, and Urks, Flash Freeze next. Uh, yes. It's gonna be... Flash Freeze will be, will be reasonable. Kind of target red or green spell. It's, it's... It's, it's gonna, gonna work against. against it's a sideboard card. It's, like, it's about all I can say. A sideboard card against Hagen, like. And Curry to a lesser extent. Yeah. Maybe Joe. Well, actually, it's a sideboard card against Joe. It's a sideboard card against Joe. That's true. Yeah. Uh, dispel. We all know what that does. Tezzer at the Seeker. I mean, it's just gonna be tutor up what he needs. Uh, treachery has not been picked. It's honestly a little slow. It's sure yeah. it's free, but five like the... mana. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, the whole draft is active authority. Undo. Uh, we did it, guys. We uh... undo. Well, uh. Quick advertiser break as we get back. <laughs> hey, <laughs> all right. Have, uh, this stream is sponsored by uh, <laughs> Act of Authority. Uh, Act, if you need to just to exile an artifact or enchantment, you look no further than Act of Authority. Let's just say, um, three enchantments, all of them being Act of Authority, doesn't work out well. It does not save your work. Well, this is a Google Sheet, so um. Ideally, we should just be able to control Z out of this. Uh, if you control F on the Google Sheet, yes, you should be able to see, I believe. But other other people will not see what you want. Why? People will see a dystopian now. Yeah, that's true. Oh, God. I guess if you control F on the sheet, people will see where your cursor is. That's true. People um, might see your cursor. We, no one has picked bribery. No, yet. bribery's not here yet. Really, oh, man, this is... This is amazing. This is a tragedy. We've really, we've done it this time. Who did this? I don't know. How did how did All they right. fill everyone's column but Hagen's with active authority? Who, so good. He, um, Hagen, by the way, picking Bane of Progress, a card I think is fantastic in the the big green decks. Hey, we fixed it. Good job, team. Hagen went in. <laughs> uh, huge shout out, by the way, to um, OTOT. Uh, thank you for following, as well as MTG Beers Hunts and Mike. Uh, Miran, or Miran, Miran. Uh, appreciate the follows, guys. We really do. Uh, and thanks for joining us. We're having a good time. Hope you are as well. Yeah, it's great to have uh, folks here for this. Yeah, so Painter Servant just got drafted, by the way. Uh, let's not forget about that. That is a combo card and a half. Who gets the money if you use your free sub? Uh, I'm sure Mark will put it toward uh, improvements to the stream. Yeah, it would almost 100%. Actually, I know for a fact. Yeah, it would go that is exactly what it would. Better mics, better cameras, more cameras. Yep. Uh, us being able to do this a little bit more often. Uh, yeah. Um, wow, thank you. We really appreciate it. Thank though. you for that prime, prime sub. sub. That's fantastic. Ooh. Yeah, for sure. It zoomed in a notch. You see how it's up there? Not? Yeah, we... Uh, Although that might just be the OBS, and let me double check. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard to know. Uh, cool. Let's continue. Uh, we have Iona, Shield of Emeria, Great Reanimator target, shuts down, monocolor, Bane of Progress, Artifact Hate card, Crater Hoof Behemoth, a card that just wins you the game, especially yep. when you have a bunch of little elves. Uh, Brandon was able to wheel uh, the Grindstone with the Painter Servant. That's a com two-card combo. Uh, he might be playing just two card combos now. Yeah, I don't really know. Brandon where he's just go. picking up this two card combo out of nowhere. Chromatic Star for Blyden, just trying to just fly he's through just, his deck. He's just doing what he's doing. Lance, uppercut, FX. Uh, thank you for the follow. We appreciate it. Uh, Star over Sphere. Um, is Blyden doing something else to sacrifice his artifacts? Because otherwise, I feel like Sphere is the pick, right? Uh, no, he doesn't have a crack clan ironworks. Yeah. Like that. Joe just took a burning wish. Ooh, uh, interesting. That's a spicy one. I wonder what his plan is with that. Um, well, it's a sideboard getter. Right. So, like, it's a golden bullets, but I don't. See, I mean, it gets meltdown. Like, is by force also a sorcery? I guess you can. I guess you can just pull. Some sorcery speed bullets out of your sideboard. Yeah, yeah. my force is a sorcery, if I remember correctly. No, no one took fractured identity. Um, not yet. Not yet. Are Elaine's the only person who would really be interested in fire, uh, fractured identity, though. Uh, Petramander. Terramander is one of the cards that Mark was saying he was interested in. Yeah, little uh, little just up little myself. little Terry. Little Terry. Uh, little Terry is here to uh, so to beat people up. Blue Delver, I guess. Yeah, just no one uh, took Stoneforge. Uh, I'm not convinced Stoneforge is actually good that enough to great. play. It's really slow. It's very slow. Uh, there's only like three artifacts and equipment in this 
format that yep. you can really get away with playing. Uh, uh, one of them, them honestly, doesn't, doesn't do it with... So, so artifact, artifact hate's really, really common in this yeah. format. Like, it's just... This dr Jeff, Jeff does have transmute. transmute. That's I mean, that's one card, and, like, he has transmute, he has reshape, but that's not, like... You know what? Like bot is down on Terry. Sorry, <laughs> but well, uh, the, the, yeah, no one's ever picked Terry. No, no one's ever chosen it before. So devout decree. Okay. That is a M twenty eight card. Uh, yeah, yeah it is. I always, I always thought this was a cons of Tarkir card, card, part of that color hate cycle, but it wasn't. It yeah. was a uh, celestial purge. Yep. Uh, welding jar and mirror retriever for Alec. Man, that's huh. That's interesting. Uh. I don't... Welding Jar is a 45th pick. Yeah, I don't understand. Uh, and Mirror Retriever is, is not on the board most of the time. Uh, uh, interesting, interesting that Vela decided, decided to make an appearance. <laughs> I don't know why that For happened. you casual commander aficionados in the room, like myself, Vela is Isn't a card like for eight us. Mana to cast? She cost, that's why you casual commander only. Not not for not for CEDH. But yeah, yeah. she costs a million. So Mirror Retriever is a really tricky card that you can do a lot of very interesting loops and combos with mm -hmm. in conjunction with a lot of cards. It would make more sense in uh, Jeff's deck, I think. Yeah, you see, Mariotta, you said incoming KCI. KCI, KCI makes way more sense in Jeff's deck. Um, yes. Alec getting that makes me think he might be interested, but then why wouldn't he have just taken that instead of Welding Jar? Elaine hates forests. She really hates forests. She crushed me because, that because she just drafted Acid Rain. Man, I, I had Tsunami and she had Acid Rain, and we both... <laughs> In game two, I tsunami her. In game three, she acid ranged me, and it was one of the most unfun games of Magic. At what point do you just pick like spectral shift and just and just turn your opponent's tsunami into acid rain yourself? Get out of here! That used to happen in standard. I used to play boil in. I used to play against boil in standard. I would sideboard in spectral shift. What a terrible card! Joe just took Guild Drake, which I don't think is very good. Yeah, I guess. You get control of a blight steel. Yeah. But then give your opponent another turn to do something with it. And Blyden has taken the KCI here. Yeah. As one might predict. Shut that down. That makes more sense. Zurin Orb from Brandon. Ooh. And Brandon is. Brandon told me he was going to be throwing haymakers these final 15 picks. Yeah, no. Brandon said he was going to be heavy on the memes. Cody took Packrat, which is. Oh, Packrat's a great card. I wonder when someone will take Cluster Storm. Uh, probably won't. Um, yeah, it's just not very good. Um, it only hits. Uh, it just Instant is a little too narrow. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's there's there's cards. It doesn't hit that you play want. Lockers, It doesn't hit artifacts. It's kind of narrow. Helm of Obedience. He's already got the Leyline of the Void, so Helm makes sense. Does he have white? He could get uh, rest in peace as well. He could. Uh, he does have re he he does have white. He could yeah, just he should do that. He could nab rest in peace right here. Yeah, I'm gonna just scroll this down a notch for y'all. Hey guys, as we said, uh, after the draft, we're going to have like a quick interview or two, and then we're going to go straight into playing. We actually have someone in the background uh, making all these decks for them, so they don't have to go build these guys. Yeah, so, uh, Kyle is working on getting all the all the decks ready, so we should be able to go right into play. Uh, after, after a short interview, we should have just uh, continuous content for you. Yeah, and sorry I didn't see it, uh, Mitria Madia... Sure, I'll go with that. Patreon <laughs> Madia, thank you for the follow. I uh, didn't see that, but we always appreciate it as always. Uh, all right, where were we? Uh, so instead of taking Helm Leyline, he's taken Choke and Helm of Obedience. Interesting. So he just wants to to hate out these blue decks even there's not more. Not many blue decks. It's no. Like there's like two and a half blue decks. There's just not a lot of islands in this draft. Yeah, and also this has like been a weirdly brown draft. Yeah. Like, Two decks fully committed. Um, Brandon's all over the place. Like I don't know how he's ever actually going to cast this Leovold, but I believe in him. Uh, I mean, he's got all those fetches, right? He has he has like three or four fetches. Yes. Uh, spell Pierce is much better. Yeah, it, it did already go, but Spell Pierce is much better. But there are still, you know, like I would I would take it's would, a good value card. Yeah. It also is a reanimator yeah. to a degree. Yes. But uh, I would take like Quench or Rune Snag or or you know, your pick of bad mana leaks before I took mm -hmm. you know. Relic of Progenitus, just a tramping graveyard hate card. Yep. Scrap, scrap trawler. Oh. Oh, yes. scrap trawler, it's happening. Well, I mean the mirror tree was gone though. That's yeah. pretty painful. Still, there's still plenty of there's like ways to do it. Yeah. Those are the two easiest. You know, it's it, there's even if it's not infinite, there's still a lot of value that can be gained from those scrap trawler triggers. Yes. 
uh, Pyroblast. Uh, yep, we're getting we're getting into this part of the draft where this people is, pick these hate cards. That I think this are is, early. I think this is like inexperienced showing. Yeah. Uh, you just don't need these yet. Like you can get five or six of these at the very end. And as someone who who succumbed to inexperience multiple times in in my own, I have no idea what you're talking. About. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's bribery. Mark has gone for it. So Mark is trying to react to these Ionas and Emrakuls and Blightsteel Colossi with bribery. I'll mainboard it. Yeah. Um, I think I think he will mainboard that card. I mean, he should. Let's look at what we got. We have Alec with a uh, with the Blightsteel. Blightsteel. Yep. Elaine has. I mean. Not a lot. Not whatever. a lot. But he can... Joe has any number of things, honestly. Yep, just... Uh, Hagen has big green things. Cody has reanimator targets. Uh, Brandon has a Leovold. Sure, not great. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's uh, or a Painter Servant, just to take the combo off the line. It's good against more than half the decks. Yeah. It does not take the combo off the line. You should not bribery a Painter Servant. No, nope, don't... Everything into it. Don't bribery the Painter Servant. Don't bribery Painter Servant. Don't do it. Come on, take the... Tell them in performance! <laughs> I like that. I'm going to pull that up. Rite right of Passage. Ooh. Whenever a creature you control is dealt damage, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. The Now, Alec could have had this 45th. No one knew this was a card. Yeah. Guaranteed. Nobody knew this card existed. I forgot about Rite of Passage. He also took a Junk Diver. Junk Diver. A fantastic a kind of card. A real card. Yeah. Is that a rare? Yes. It was a rare in Urza's Destiny. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> It took me a second. I was like, wait. Um, let's. I dare someone to pick Rampaging Ferocity. Again, in a mono red deck, that card is great. Yes. Like, oh, here's Council's a Judgment, Vendelkin Shackles. Mark taking the all caps of Vendelkin Shackles. Thrun the Last Troll. Joe reacting immediately with Thrun the Last Troll to say, you need Shackles this, nerd. I don't like that nerd. pick at all. <laughs> Thrun's fine. It's, it's so, so slow. I mean, like, Thrun is fine, but do you really need that right like i would if i was if i was joe i'd be taking every possible like conscripts yes uh just start taking conscripts i would, just, I would just start taking the conscripts yep um and then just be like all right i have 17 like ways to combo off instantaneously <laughs> Rite of Passage is for Alex. Alex has uh, hardened scales. Brandon took Mind Slaver. Ooh, interesting. I am blown away by these picks. Yeah, he's he's doing something. It's it's hard to. I don't know. I he's... think he might have deviated from the plan that he told me because I no longer understand what he's doing. But I believe in him. He's t he's t picking. Oh, he's gonna get Clarion Academy and Thespian Sage. I bet. Right, and he can get uh, ruins he really too. Get mana though. So, what are your thoughts about? Uh, Signets and bad mana rocks. I mean, I think signets and bad mana rocks are important in this format. I think, like, if you're not getting out ahead on the board, you need to be getting out ahead on resources in this format. Unless, unless, unless you're a linear combo deck, in which do your linear combo thing. Yeah, yeah. But if you're not getting out ahead on the board, then Cody just took Stitcher Supplier. Ooh, but then cards like cards like signets and and you know, Fell War Stone or whatever, Mind Stone, things like Mox that. Mox Monkey is still sticking around. Yeah, Mox Monkey is still yeah, here. And there's really no red players, unfortunately. Watching this makes me just want to play red. Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest, like, the next time I do this draft with these people, I'm just like, I'm on a red, have a nice day. Prowling Serpapard. Um, uh, Cody, yes, could very easily get Gak. I don't know how good it is. I don't think Gak would be very... You know, Gak would be hard for him to cast. He doesn't have a lot of ways to fill his graveyard. He has Entomb and a couple of discard effects and the looting, but he doesn't have a lot of reliable ways other than the Stitcher Supplier to dump cards into his graveyard. Uh, Miryatha is asking... He's like, glad Hagen took Red Cap, but is his fixing really good enough to support it? It's hard to say. I don't know that he needs the red cap necessarily. He has other ways to win. He has like other the ways red cap is the most direct way, but yeah. I mean, it's just always having your opponent's creatures dead. I did like your Gak tweet yesterday. I didn't press like on it because I'm bad at social media, but I did enjoy it. Necrotic Ooze from from Steven. Uh, I mean, Phyrexian Juggernaut. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of other combos. I mean, Necrotic Ooze. I mean, all of his creatures. Uh, like You correctly called Thespian Stage for Brandon. 
Yeah, yeah. Collective, collective Brutality, it's actually, actually a really good That's a fantastic card. Uh, I'm kind of surprised it went this late. Well, yes. I guess I'm not, because there's not very many black players. There's not a lot of black players, and but, uh, it's a niche card, but I think go it's great up. for him. If there's other black players. Yeah. Duress, life gain against an aggro deck, also the ability to just kill off a creature. Like, it's a very strong card. Duress is also still out there, I do want to mention. That's a card I expect him to pick up uh, took thoughts he's already. a little later. Sure, but he, you know... Yeah. He might want to sideboard that in against a deck like a lands just to try yeah. to make sure that he can just one for one some honest. of her counter spells. Yeah. Yep. Repeal. There's not a lot of card draw out of a lands deck. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Elvish Spirit Guide. Mm. I don't really. That's interesting. A null, another hate card for all these artifacts floating around. Yeah. Jeff is just. I don't think he cares. I think he's just like I'm just putting my head down. No. The rest is quite main deckable. I agreed. No, 100% is main deckable. Yep. Uh. A oh, null is a, is, a, yeah. is a strong pick here. Um, Elaine has a lot of options open to her just because there's not a lot of white. And here's the Dovin's Veto that we talked about like two hours ago. Yeah. Arcbound Worker, that's a 1-1 one, one with uh, Modular. Well, it's a 0-0 zero, zero with Modular. Alec one. copying some cards off of a Modern Harden Scales. Oh, except there's Lightning Greaves as well. Protection. There's not a lot of removal. Like, no one's taking Fatal Push. Yeah, no, I, I, no I mean... No one's taking Bolt. No one's taking Bolt. Yeah, no one... Right. There's basically no red in this draft. I'm really disappointed by that. I, like, I obviously, I get why people want to do these linear... It's also, though, there's a lot of first-time yes. like, short history drafters, and as you were saying, it's really fun to draft these, like, insane yeah. linear combo decks. I do think they're a little bit weaker. Um, and, and but here's the thing. In, in This is the third VRD we've done here in St. Louis, yeah. right? Like, this is... Once we, once we get deeper into this format, I'm not saying that we're going to solve this format because gosh i, I hope we can. don't like i don't think it's possible and i hope we don't but i think the deeper we get in the 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 more refined some of these strategies will become and the better draft reactions we'll see from some of these yep. players uh japzer japzer thank you for following appreciate it divert yeah <laughs> elaine elaine saying hello to me by picking divert a card i did get her with last time uh, not a card that you see a whole heck of a lot, but it is a sweet one. If you like misdirection without pitching cards, Divert is the card for you. Mark, Mark picking up the Isochron Scepter here, uh, depriving Joe of it when we thought he might be interested in uh, it. Miriafa, I actually agree with that. I think the opening honestly mm. might be pretty much solved yes if everyone kind of sticks to the script but most people don't is the catch because they think they're smarter than the opening yeah that's um, the thing is if you if you try to art sm outsmart the the traditional pick order you can yeah, really throw then, it off yeah so and also yes there's probably a bolus citadel combo deck floating around chromatic sphere uh, another card he's starting to take uh, joe's starting to take the pester mites um mm -hmm. it's better than the average card yes uh but I think TNN, True Name, Nemesis, and Council Judgment are the most obnoxious. Uh, wait, Council Judgment wasn't a commander card. It was a, it, no, uh, it's a conspiracy card. card, but it's still a multiplayer focus. Yeah, card. it's still a multiplayer focus format. Yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, so the opening should honestly be Black Lotus, and then there's a argument between Ancestral and and Vault, and Vault, but it should be one of those two at two and three, and then one of like maybe red mox or green mox and then like soul ring somewhere in there you think like, you think red mox before sapphire i mean sure you can play sapphire everyone's fighting for i i really take a lot of stock in the fact that i have to fight over blue so i think that i think that that right there says that even the opening is not just right yeah. if if we're if if we can argue about which mox to take mark in the third six, scepter yes mark uh, took which the he has scepter. A lot of targets for which is i think that's fun. great for him yeah he probably needs that yeah Chromatic Sphere for, for Do you Jeff. think Lotus is better than Ancestral? Yes, yes. actually, I think Time Vault's better than Ancestral. Uh, just because the decks you can build with Time Vault are so much more threatening than casting Ancestral Recall. Yeah, Ancestral, Re Ancestral Recall is a card where you have to... It says, I'm going to do a lot more work after I cast this card before I kill you. Whereas Time Vault says, hey, I'm going to kill you right now. Yeah, Time Vault's like, so what you got? Uh, Steven taking Bitter Ordeal here. That's a card that he, he nabbed from me last time after I mistakenly took and Extract and forgot about it. For Infinite. Yep. Uh, so that's another combo piece to mill out his opponent. Mm -hmm. Bitter Ordeal, a great card um, to take at this point in the draft. I love this card. I built a... Um, I remember when I was very new to Magic, I built a... Psychogenic Probe, the one that every time you search, you shuffle your library. Yes. Uh, so you would 
just do this absurdly ridiculous combo, uh, and then bitter ordeal them, uh, killing them with the probe. That's and a great so you'd one. You'd create like a grave. You'd create a grave storm of nine. Yes. And then bitter ordeal them and just smile. Even if your opponent, uh, even if your opponent can't um, can't sh search their deck for some reason, you still get them with all those good shuffle triggers. Yeah. So even if there's like a Leon and Arbiter, I'd or ask a for them for the triangle shuffle, shuffle, and then I right. put it down and be like two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like I said, uh, I have an unsportsmanlike minor to my name. Um, <laughs> hey, I get it. I, I This is the way Brandon I play, too. or upheaval. Yep. Uh, Liliana's Triumph, a good uh, sack effect. Uh, Field of Ruin, great land hate card. Uh, Alter Dementia. Um, I'm seeing in chat, I thought it was Lotus Ancestral, Time Vault, Sapphire Jet, Ruby, Emerald, Time Walk. Uh, that is that is definitely some of the conventional wisdom, but if you look back through these drafts, a lot of people do do disagree with that. Now, I, I will tell you, Brandon wanted that bitter ordeal. That was his plan. That's what he wanted. He wanted to fire all those all those fetch lands into the garbage, and then and then bitter ordeal somebody real good. Nice. And well, I mean, I think he's moved away from it. Yeah. No, he, he was clear in the middle of the draft. That's why I was saying I don't think he's doing it anymore because he did move pretty far from that. Flooded Grove. All of Alex. What is all of Alex? I, I am Alex. Herbman's I am Alex. That's a weird way. <laughs> weird way to spell brain freeze. Ice concept very spicy. It's very good. spicy. Flooded Grove, good. Conjurer's, Conjurer's Bobble from Jeff. Let's put God, that on the board God. here. I hate that stupid. I don't hate it, it's just, sure. <laughs> uh, Hopper All-Star in Vinestorm. Oh, yes. Vinestorm. Do you know Vinestorm? Oh, my gosh. It's Will you Caravex Torch someone for 23? Mm-hmm. Please stop playing game lands. So I said what I said. Brandon took Flooded Grove. I feel like I would have taken uh, Waterlogged Grove in his seat. There was the green-black... Uh, land taken. Yes, that. Uh, up, nurturing yeah. peatland got taken a while ago. I feel like if I was Brandon, I wanted I wanted uh, waterlogged grove instead of flooded grove, because flooded grove is the is the filter. But I would have taken that that good uh, horizon land. Uh, Mark took cluster storm, so to show up, uh, firely islet, the red blue horizon land taken. Yep. Yes, with his crucible. He doesn't have the oracle and will die yet, but he did basically say it's like I'm very interested in that card. Hoping one of these blue players plucks up a deck refresher. <laughs> so just like a Felden's Cane or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that doesn't Felden's Cane won't stop uh, Elaine, for example, from getting killed by Ashiok. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone's deck has some pretty massive holes. Uh, I think Jeff's is very linear, but it really like if you get that uh, if that. Forge gets sniped like he's Ooh, yeah. he can't win. Yeah, if, if like if I'm if I'm Mark here, I'm thinking about taking just like a forty fifth pick acquire or something just to get that Mystic Forge. Tell us about the holes. Okay, so weaknesses in the decks. All right, cool. Uh, we'll start from the ones that I can easily tell you about, and then the ones where I won't. Uh, Jeff's deck, not Jeff's deck. Brandon's deck has zero theme. It is all over the place. Yep. I has no mana ramp, and it's just kind of all over the place. I don't know how he wins the game. Like, sure, he might play a Karn on turn five, but that might not do it. A uh, few win conditions, yeah. Uh, let's move on to Cody. Cody is either playing a reanimator deck, or he was kind of doing a storm deck, and he's kind of in between both of those. He doesn't really know what... It's more in the reanimator, but now he's kind of, like, missing out on the reanimator train. It's just not a strong reanimator deck. Most of the strong reanimator decks are... Grixis, they're just like playing blue and red for more like the faceless looting effect yep. and card draw and being able to protect themselves. He's all in mono black reanimator with not as much all in as he possibly could have. No, he'd, he'd be he'd be better served to be more linear. Hagen's mana is a disaster. Yes, his mana is very bad. His mana is awful. That, like I, those double black cards are gonna kill him. Yeah, like he's gonna be stuck multiple games with that. Um, I believe, like, his deck is very good at what it does. I think he's got the right sideboard cards with Collector Oof and Force of Vigor. Yep. Uh, Hagen has win cons, by the way. Hagen has Vizier with a bunch of other random stuff. Um, Brandon, you cannot take Bitter Ordeal. You can't do it. It's gone. 
there. Stephen is, I can hear Stephen talking about how last time I took extract and that reminded Brandon to take, or reminded no. Stephen to take bitter ordeal. <laughs> I added the yoink and I don't know if he likes that. <laughs> um, Brandon just assuming he can get bitter ordeal whenever he wants. No, sorry, dude. Altar of the bruise. I respect that. I don't think it's good. It's not good. great, but it's great. <laughs> uh, Joe has a pretty solid beginnings of a teamer deck. Yeah. But he was really diluted in what he actually was doing. His, those through the breaches and other cards, honestly, he might not even play. Yeah, it's, he doesn't have anything to do with them. Yeah, like he should have just been like teamer twin. Yeah. Uh, or honestly, red blue. He's going to have some trouble closing out games. Yeah, it's like he's just not as consistent as he should be. Joe uh, has sneak attack. Joe has sneak attack, yes. Uh, Mark has very few win conditions. He has yeah. a very good control deck with very few win conditions. Yes, 40 so card decks. So he's going to... Huh? I was just saying yes, 40 card decks to the Jets. Yes. Uh, who has sneak attack? Joe has sneak attack. Sorry, that was already said. Uh, Elaine has a pretty solid, like, super friends list mm -hmm. that, again, has very few things and also could really struggle against the reanimator and Jeff and the decks that just say, I'm going to try to kill you now, um, if she ever taps out to, like, play one of these planeswalkers. Yep. That's her big problem. She's going to have to keep up free spells or counter spells while also, like, keeping, like, alive against Jeff. Because Jeff is threatening, it looks like, to win the game yep. on turn three and after that. Like, you have to be prepared for Jeff to win after that. Uh, Alec is playing a pretty unknown deck that I honestly don't think the power level is high enough for what yeah. he's going to do. He's got a couple cool cards, but then he's wasted a lot of picks on, like, things that he didn't need. Uh, yeah, he doesn't need that um, that that enchantment, Rite of Passage. That, that card's not... I don't believe that card will do anything. Oh, we should scroll the picks down. Ah, uh, yes, you're right. My bad. Uh, yeah, and then if I'm forgetting anyone. All right, the chat's in. Because we have eight kinds of browsers open. Perfect. Yes, we can allow that. That's fine. Uh, and then... Was that it? Was that everyone? Um, Hagen, Cody, Brandon, Jeff. Yeah, Joe. I think we no, covered everyone. Covered so everybody. Like where the, where's Fire Covenant? What where is, is Fire Covenant? Yeah. What is Fire Covenant? It's a meme. It's a meme, but it's also it's like... pretty legit. It's meme. a reasonable card. Yeah. Uh, Leyline of Sanctity for Hagen, protecting himself and getting the Dustwatch Recruiter for, for mana combos. Living Wish for Joe. Mm. Cunning Wish for Mark. What's Joe going to Living Wish for? That's a great question. He's got the Living Wish and the Burning Wish. What I don't if, think he has a lot of targets. Ooh, that's a good question. Ooh, elves, yeah. I believe elves has been drafted. In I a think so. Registry. I think it's possible. Not you're not going to fight anyone over cards. Yeah. The only thing you're going to fight over is if there's another green player for like the natural order crater hoof. But that's really it. Alec taking dark steel citadel and then following uh, up with mem knight. What was I pulling up? Living wish. Living wish, maybe. Yeah. Concordant Crossroads Elves, that did happen, yes. Yeah, I'm not sure what the plan is with this Living Wish. It doesn't seem like he has targets that he really wants. In his sideboard, right? What's that? It said from his sideboard. Yeah. But I don't see anything. I don't see anything. It didn't do well, too slow. That makes sense. That makes sense. I could see that, really. Uh, it seems like it'd be too all-in on, like, generating the mana in the early turns. Yeah. Instead of, like... That's where I think, like, decks that play Strip Mine and Wasteland have such an advantage. Oh, my gosh. Because they can gosh. interact in those early turns and then do their thing. I think, yeah, like like we were saying earlier, talking about the bad mana rocks, like, uh, generating a resource advantage in this format, unless you are a linear combo deck, generating a resource advantage is what you want to do in this format. Yeah. Which is why I think like those prison and stack decks are legitimate. I agree. Because they can. Mark has taken Invoke Prejudice, a card which um, uh, I, I don't I don't really want to show it on the stream, but also I think people want to know what it does. So. So I have a story about. Uh, it's a, it's a much more innocent story than... Uh, so first off, uh, this artist is bad. Yes, Harold uh, McNeil, don't. He's don't, not. Just whatever. Please so. don't give him money. Yeah. Um, second off, this card is pretty good. Yeah. 
uh, it does a lot of stuff, but basically you can pay X to counter spells. Yes, he was a literal Nazi. Yes, that is unfortunately true. Yeah, so while... <laughs> Hooray, we're getting it off the screen! Thank hey, you, Alex! We, uh... <laughs> It took two hours before we got to the Nazis on the internet. <laughs> nice job, too. Oh, we, we did so well. Nah, just KKK. Whatever. Uh, I don't care. He's a trash. Yeah, uh, bad person. So his other card that is even remotely playing play, playable, Enduring uh, Ideal. Ren enduring Renewal. Enduring Renewal. I used to play the Extended Eggs uh, Blasting Station combo. With yes. That. And that deck was sick. That's a sweet deck. That was like Mem Knights and Blasting Stations. <laughs> Oh man, that deck was a ponder. That was bad oh. when ponder was legal. Joe has taken Fire Blast, and I'm not. Like... Yes, you have to pay double the cost. Yes, fi fi Yes, the the gather ID of Invoke Prejudice is one four eight eight. Yes, yes, that is true. Yeah, there's a lot um, of weird, terrible stuff. It's about not that. good. Next, um... yeah, moving on. <laughs> Ash and Rider. Ash and Rider, another great reanimation target. Agreed, man. Yeah. You have to fire blast those last four points of damage. I just realized Joe just took a fire blast. Yeah, that's what I was. I did. Fire. I don't like. Like, does did he mean red elemental blast? Yeah, like pyro. Oh, pyro. Because he has it. pyro blast. Did he? Did he mean red elemental blast? Is what I'm wondering, and I think maybe he did. Rex agent blood artist for Stephen. Rex age a great pickup in at forty I'm round so forty one. Rex age went 41. It is unreal that that card is available this late. Because yeah. that card's busted in this format. Just it's just it's just a two for one. It's just a two for one all the time, always. It's just always a two for one. A dragon that steals a creature or a planeswalker. Drag dragon lord Silumgar. Uh, that card costs six mana. Uh, De Deputy of Detention has not been picked. It honestly might be the fiftieth pick from forty fifth pick from Elaine. I wouldn't be shocked if uh, Elaine she gets took Lavinia that. and Deputy. Yeah, she'll get Lavinia and she'll get Deputy. Knight of Ottoman has also not been picked, although that one's Hagen could also play that as well. Uh, he's green white. Or Mankind. Yeah, there's been a lot of. This has been a very interesting draft. Yeah, Knight of Autumn, Manic Vandal, uh, Octavia Orangutan. Um, Viridian Shaman. These are uh, all cards Ristic you can play. Y. Thank you for the follow. We appreciate it. What was the card I was going to look up? Rex Age. Release the Gremlins. Yes, the better Manic Man. Though. Ooh, release the Gremlins. Yeah, it looks like... Ooh, that's a fun card that just got drafted. Oh, uh, Brandon just took Oracle Moldiah, so now I believe his deck might actually be able to function if he draws that. Um... Sorry, did Hannah's custody just get taken? That's what I was just about to say. What?! Oh hey, my um, gosh! Just Blyden just going for the the discount uh, uh, Leon and Abunus here with Hannah's custody, not not wanting to pay for Leon and Abunus. Uh, Diablo Marcus is Mark Caterberg, Yes. Yes. P what? Power and toughness of what? Oh. Hannah's custody does not it's have. It's an enchantment. Don't worry, it's not yeah. blocked. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lean and a bonus is a two-five, but Hannah's custody is an enchantment. Seaver Exarch, Chain of Vapor for Caterberg. Yes, yeah, is a uh, last couple picks. You should see some more. Let's say all around answers like Chain of Vapor can just answer almost anything and, for a turn at least. And also, here's people are saying, okay, well, they're they're really evaluating what's left. Because well, there's so much in there's green and so red. There's so much left in. I mean, there's so much left across the board. Yeah. There are thousands of cards available, and hundreds of them are playable here. Cleansing, Cleansing. Nova. I guess it doesn't hit Planeswalkers. It does not. Oh, wow. Yes. Or destroy all artifacts and yeah, enchantments. It's just a flex. Yeah, it's a good flex card. Liquimental Coating and Vault Scourge for Alec. He's backdooring Infect a little bit. Wait, Vault Scourge? No, Vault Scourge doesn't have an effect. That's just a lifelinker. Yeah, he's just backdooring. Liquid Metal Coating with Karn is a nice little... Yep. Vault Scourge with the 1-1 one, one counters. Mark going for Curfew against the Reanimator deck and the uh, the the Sneak Attack here. Curfew. It's... Uh... Yeah, it's from Urza Saga. I think it's yeah. an instant. And, yeah, it's... There it is. 
ridiculous card. Skycloud Egg. Yeah, it's, um, Curfew is an old anti-reanimator piece of sideboard tech. Hannah's, Hannah's Custody may turn off Vault Key, yes, but it does not turn off uh, Blyden's deck. He can yeah, still... he can still activate... Uh, he can still hurl his deck onto the table. Yeah, and he can still sack things to KCI yep. through that, so it won't really affect anything. He will... And then second centerize it all back. Yep. You know what? I want to see Jeff. I think it's like one mana too slow, but I would love to see Icar Wellspring and Jeff. Oh my gosh, Icar Wellspring would be so Icar wonderful. Wellspring. It might be too slow. Yep. I don't know. Yes, Hannah's Custody, unlike Leon and Abunus, does turn off Falky because Abunus gives Hexproof and Custody gives Shroud. Mm -hmm. Elaine is taking some niche cards over Colonnade. She is. Yeah. She also might just get 45th pick Colonnade as the catch. Yeah. If she. Uh, if Tide she remembers to take all in. I don't know. I think he already has everything else he would ever need. Yeah. Um, Compulsive Research from Brandon, just, just one of the best blue cards left, honestly. Isn't, that isn't the blue one from Kaladesh better? P Padim? Are we talking about Padim? Padim, Counselor. Of mm, yeah, Padim, the four mana one. Uh, it's really slow, though. It is. It's four mana instead of three. Yeah. Hannah, Hannah's Custody is the kind of card I would expect Blyden to remember, yes. Abunus does cost five. Yeah. Uh, three white, white. Uh, will Hagen go for fourth pick natural order? I don't think I don't think we have. Uh, Hagen has a natural order. He does not care. have a natural order deck. He doesn't have enough small creatures. Yeah, I don't think natural order is. Well, he has. Um, yeah, like two small creatures. But like I'm talking like elves. Yeah, like, he he has a noble hierarch and a death right shaman yeah, that he could. I'm talking like you and you're playing six or seven elves. Yeah, right. You need a lot more elves to do that. Yeah, then you natural order for who? Yep. Yeah, that card has not been picked. Uh, recurring Nightmare, grindy mid-range reanimator card. Yeah. Good. I don't know how I feel about that, honestly. I don't think it's great in his deck. Gifts, Gifts for Brandon. Given. I mean, make his opponent make a mistake. Sure, I don't really know what he's gonna. What does his gift pile look like? Uh, Thespian stage. Well, the the crater hoof pick is is not for um, natural order. He can he can finale into it. Yeah, he can finale. He it. can yeah, he can cord into it. Oh yeah, he has. Yeah, I mean, he can get out of his deck yeah. a crater hoof and at the end of the day you only need two other creatures really to kill someone right. with a crater hoof yep um he also has combos and other stuff like that so like what i'm saying natural order you need small elves yes because you're sacrificing one of them to get it oh there's a baby on cam baby on cam hello baby baby off cam <laughs> uh yeah so he i mean sure natural order is a great card but i don't think his deck wants it because he doesn't have enough he did get Duskwatch Recruiter. He's got like the Mana Sinks. He's got the traditional Vizier of Remedies combo cards. Yep. Do you think so? Diabolic Intent here. It's it's DT, but you're required to sacrifice a creature. What what makes you pick a card like that over, say, Cruel Tutor? Not knowing that Cruel Tutor exists. Okay, fair. <laughs> uh, abusing his ETB effects with all of his reanimator creatures. Uh, his all of his creatures that are coming back. Uh, like his undying creatures. Oh, yeah, yeah, his undying creatures. Okay, that makes sense. But, no, I... I mean, I, I at least I understand how uh, we got there. I'll bring there. up Cruel Tutor in just one second. Yeah. It's basically DT, but you lose three life, if I remember correctly. Two oh, and it puts the card on top of your library. Mm. I, I'm thinking no, of... Infernal? Grim, Grim, Grim Tutor, Tutor is one black, black, pay three life, is yeah. the card I'm thinking of. So that's Cruel. Yeah. And then, yep, they... Look at that. I forgot I forgot Cruel Tutor was bad vampiric. I meant Grim Tutor, yep. Yeah. Chat's just got us. Grim well Grim Tutor. I don't even need a comment. Yeah, Chat's I don't know. just got me covered. Grim Tutor does cost double black, which is hard for, for Steven. Yeah. I don't know how he's casting anything double black. Uh Regisaur Alpha from Joe. Imperial Steel is fixed vampiric tutor. Cruel tutor is bad vampiric, bad vampiric tutor. Vampiric. Let's let's be real. <laughs> like it's it, Imperial Seal is acceptable vampiric tutor. Cruel tutor is unplayable vampiric. I've cast Cruel Tutor in my life more times than um, I would care to admit. I guess Regis or Alpha is not a bad Splinter Twin target. Someone's someone's future tr sight dream has come true for Blyden. It seems like he may have forgotten about experimental frenzy, he said very quietly. Um Regisaur Alpha, Reggie. I did not think we'd see Reggie today. I don't think I'd ever see Reggie in this format. I mean, it's a five mana Splinter Twin target. Yeah. It kikis really nicely, Phyrexian Furnace. It does, yeah. 
I agree with you. <laughs> I agree, I agree with that. Uh, Regis or Alpha before Carnage Tyrant. Brent, I, I do like tutors. You know I love tutors. Dockside Extortionist has not been picked yet. That is absolutely true. What is Phyrexian Furnace before I... Phyrexian Furnace is a... It's Scrabbling Claws, but, yes. but worse. Yeah. Why did he... Scrabbling Claws is still around. Yeah, Scrabbling... People are just flexing their... Um... Yeah, their knowledge. Mark wants people to have to keep graveyard order because that's what Phyrexian Furnace requires because it will exile the bottom card of target player's graveyard. Re yeah, Relic was already we, picked. Relic though. was taken though. Yeah, we knew that. Um, I as someone like okay, my wife played Phyrexian Furnace in middle school. Like, it's a card that you can play, and I don't mean in in middle school, although she probably did. I mean in the format middle school. <laughs> oh, that, I thought that's what you were saying. I was like, are you kidding me? Like... I mean, my my wife did did start playing in Ice Age, so. Nice. <laughs> I think Lanny's another graveyard. Kate. Well, she took a Glacial Fortress instead. She no Lavinia, no Deputy of Detention, wow. and no Celestial Colonnade for Elaine. Mm -hmm. Mark taking the Fairy Conclave as predicted. No uh, Carnage sure Tyrant. Just just Dino Dino Time. Life uh, finds a way, I guess. <laughs> Look at Spic 45, man. What do you want? We got jokes now. Is it time for Experimental Frenzy? Is it time Is it time for that card? Maybe. I mean, I hope so. Because it's better than Future Sight in his deck. It's way better than Future Sight. And he mentioned it. Well, I didn't, even, Academy, I didn't even give him the idea. He Colossal knows. Dreadmaw or Bust. <laughs> I mean, Clo oh, I Bless. do love Colossal Dreadmaw. I do not. <laughs> hey, let's just keep putting... Let's put a 6-6 six, six Trampler for 6. Jeff already has Mystic Forge, so he's, he's in colorless Future Sight land already. God, that'd be hilarious to just draft one of these and just, like, pick all the Judge Breaker cards. <laughs> <laughs> just make everyone's life miserable. Oh, my God. Somebody's going to do that now. Somebody's going to do that when I'm here. They're just going to they're just gonna give me a migraine. I think people have spent way too many cards on not lands. I think you're right. <laughs> Strongly uh, agree. Lands are very powerful. Yeah, I believe in my mono green deck, I drafted around 12 lands. What will Brandon Gifts for? I don't even think he knows. To Brandon be will perfectly honest. Brandon might be playing seventy-five cards in this deck. I don't know what he's doing. I want to see him last pick Bolas' Citadel. Brent Brent did Brent Yard picked a made a Bolas' Citadel combo deck last time, and uh, it was better than it ended up doing, but it just didn't quite pan out for whatever reason. Uh, in my opinion, the best decks are Elaine, Mark, and Cody. Uh, mm. I think Blyden... I don't know how good Elaine's... I think Elaine's deck is not going to lose. I don't know. Elaine's deck is good. It's Seal of Cleansing for Blyden. Just foregoing Experimental Frenzy yeah. here. I don't know. I, I don't think... think I like that. I mean, Seal of Cleansing is good. Don't get me wrong. I like Seal of Cleansing with his, his you know various... You going to watch this VOD back. Yeah. Like, Man, you guys talked a lot. An S about me. You guys. <laughs> we talked a lot of crap about everybody. everybody. I literally spent three minutes explaining why everyone's deck sucks. I mean, that's the, that's the commentator's job, though, is yeah. to sit here and pretend that we're better than these people when yeah. they're playing and we're not, I mean, right? That's our job. <laughs> I mean, I'm not playing right now. I'm yeah. 0 for 0 for the night. Yeah. 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 I'm undefeated. I'm, you know, I'm yeah. here to, I'm just, to, to drink beers. I'm and, drinking a Natter Day Light. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Vilas, Broker of Blood, blood coming in with the Kareek. I guess that's pretty good. It's a cute little combo. Playcrafter doesn't do anything. I mean, it makes other people... You Commentators can... are always better, that's why... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's so why my, we... My favorite part is like when I used to like stream Arena for like 10 seconds, mm -hmm. was like I'd have like four people in chat and they'd be like, you're an idiot. Oh, like, yeah. just that all the time. Oh, like, no. Like, thank you. I'm, I have a clock. I'm burning rope right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I can't make a, a, like, if I make a commander video on Moto, and I just, like, I'm here playing for fun, all of the comments on YouTube are just like, here are the ten mistakes that I've decided you made. I'm like, my dude, I'm trying to have fun. Chat is better than commentators, which is better than pros, which is better than casuals. I mean, that's that's why uh, we have chat lethal, because chat lethal is better than regular lethal. Uh, we all tireless know. Tracker, final Ooh. pick for Brandon. That's actually a good card. Tireless that's Tracker. That's one of those cards that 
should be drafted earlier. Uh, no one drafted green, really. People, no one drafted red at all. People underrate green cards. People underrate gonna, red gonna, cards. I'm just going to add... Um, <laughs> Where is Bolt? <laughs> I'm just gonna add my own little uh, comment, comment to, to the chat. chat. I uh, had the... I had lightning bolt last time, and it served me very well. Just like as just just to kill cards like collector oof. Half the time, it's bolt plays that aren't lethal. Yeah, that's why chat lethal is the best lethal because yeah. chat doesn't just kill their opponent; they kill their opponent in a way that yeah. no one else can do. So let's uh yeah, I agree with that. Let's give these decks some names. Yes. Uh, so we got mud. It's like uh, mud, mud, mud proliferate or something. Yeah, I don't even know. I haven't used one of these split keyboards in so long. Oh, the split keyboards are so so hard for me. Uh, but I have I have so much carpal tunnel. I should probably get one. Yeah, they're really good for your hands. Yeah. Uh, blue control. Hey guys, uh, just as a heads up, as I finish this off, we are going to probably take one interview and then actually really just start matches. I'm just giving our decks names. Uh, Teamer. I'm going to go snag call? somebody for yeah. an interview. For sure. Teamer Te twin. Teamer twin. That sounds right. Uh, Jeff, what are we going to call that? Uh, just like it, eggs, that's just eggs, eggs yeah yeah uh brandon um i mean he's he's just Eric's a <laughs> anime club <laughs> perfect a plus uh cody is playing reanimator and then we're going to call that what abzan Abzan Vizier. Uh, who haven't we talked to? Uh, let's talk to. Did we talk to Joe already? Uh, let's talk to Joe. Yeah, I'll talk to some Joe. Hey, Joe. All right, Joe. Uh, check to see if your mic is muted. It is. So click on the button. It's right in your lap. It's the big middle one. Okay. All right, Joe. So how was your first draft? Uh, it was interesting. How do you feel? Um, it's a pileup of cards, I guess, but it should be fun. Yeah. So uh, let's see if chat has any questions for you while we wait. Um, so uh, you drafted Team or Twin is what I was naming it. Yeah, that's probably the best thing to go with it. Uh, his, his people are saying your deck looks fair. Um, okay. Eric's better anime club. Uh, yes, that will be the new name of the deck. Uh, tell Joe glad you took Carnage. People were excited that you took the dinosaurs at the very end. Yeah. Um, so on turn seven <laughs> in your first game, why are you going to miss lethal? <laughs> <laughs> on turn seven. Uh, um, I didn't know what chat was going to ask, but here they are. Um, so actually, I have a few questions. Let's look at your draft real quick. Uh, so you start with Mox Ruby. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you took Mana Drain yep. into Strip Mine. Uh, so, and then you eventually took Ren and Six. So mm -hmm. Mox Ruby, I don't think anyone's going to argue with that pick. Very yep. good. Uh, you missed on Time Walk, but whatever. Uh, people miss all the time. Uh, Mana Drain, why did you take a counter spell so early? Um, Obviously, it's like one of the best ones in the game, but like... Yeah, and I mean, it's probably going to be one of the few counter spells I probably run, as long as I get proper mana fixing, probably yeah, not. for sure. Um, at least sell the pool. I'd rather not get mana drained, especially if I'm dropping something big like either Kiki Jiki or like um, Sneak Attack. So I just don't want to get hit out early with that. Yep. You can speak up a little too. By the okay. Way. Mics are a little quiet. Um, so that's cool. Uh, we have Ren 6. Actually, I really liked that pick, honestly. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to be playing some like red-green kind of stompy deck for a hot second. I was like, oh, sick. It's just going to be like super grindy and people are going to be miserable uh there's like wreck sages and acidic slimes and stuff like that and you mm -hmm. obviously f flew away from it but i think that card's pretty cool um mm -hmm. why not like crucible because you had you had strip mine already why I not did. like crucible or uh 
common up excavator instead of Renin six. Um, I Maybe thought about a little easier to cast, but like a getting little... ramen up later on. Um, mm -hmm. but of course, Brandon picked it before I kind of did. We were just kind of looking at each other, waiting for who's going to pick what. So. And I was, and I guess for Protein Hulk, my plan was actually to maybe put some Hulk combo in there, but toward the end, it just kind of didn't materialize. Yeah, you took that Hulk, and we got super excited because you had taken the uh, Sneak and the Through the mm -hmm. Breach. So I was like, oh, he's going to do some crazy Hulk shenanigans. Can you get any of your Kiki combo off with Hulk? Like, is that still um, potential? Like, if Hulk dies, surprise, it's a Kiki combo? You might want to double check on that. Yeah, I I'll don't know. To... I'm sorry. Um, I'm you... probably, I don't think so. Um... Because I almost thought about putting like body double and some other stuff in there and just mm, try to get sure. it super spicy, but um, yeah, yeah I kind of noticed toward the yeah. end that it wouldn't be, I guess, feasible because I'd have to keep shoving more cards in. Yeah, for sure. And I rather like pick up like Living Wish. I can actually like either tutor for pieces or tutor for Hulk maybe. If yeah, I so to. that was another question I was going to ask. So you have Living Wish in a main deck, it, I assume. Mm -hmm. What are you going to get it with it? Like, what are you looking for? Um, probably going to be. I'm thinking about either Carnage Tyrant, but I probably will, will main board that. Um, let's see. I was also thinking about maybe, maybe putting High Force in the Meltdown in your sideboard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you can't really get it with Living Wish, I guess. Uh, Burning Wish. I did have that too. Burning so. Wish. Okay. Cool. Um, it was really for any of the pieces that I didn't put in. Like World Spine Worm is also kind of a fun one, I thought. Because mm -hmm. um, it's. That would be fun to kind of either breach or sneak attack in. So. For sure. Now, here's another question. Did you mean to take. Fire Blast instead of Red Elemental Blast. So you took 40 second, 41st pick overall after Living Wish Fire Blast, the Sack 2 Mountains mm -hmm. deal 4. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, so you took Fire Blast earlier. Yeah, I was thinking... And I was like, oh, he's trying to take Red Elemental Blast or something like that. Well, you know, at this point, it's just going to be fun. So. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I'm so... Like, I think that's awesome. Like, it's a finisher. It's, it's a finisher, man. You yeah. know, you can Cunning Wish for that I in the late game. And just wait, it's a sorcery. Oh, wait, never mind. You can probably not Cunning Wish for that. It'll just be fine. It'll be just fine. Uh, yeah, you're just going to get someone with it. I mean, I think uh, Splinter Twin is a really great target on Register Alpha. I'm excited <laughs> to see the Mega Beats <laughs> with yeah, all the Yeah, and I have really that. wanted to kill a Jace with it. That's the other point. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Um, yeah, so I think your deck's going to be pretty fun. I think you're going to have a couple tough games. There's a couple of, like... Jeff, you're going to have to interact with a lot, you know, but uh, I think it'll be pretty cool. How was your first draft? Did you enjoy it? Uh, it was definitely cool. I mean, it's, tough, it's different. Right? Yeah. It's, it's so very much, different. So many things happening. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, awesome. Uh, you have anything? Is Fire Blast a sorcery? No, it's an instant. Uh, so it just gets to, it's just always there. You never know yep. where it's going to happen. Uh, I like the Tarmogoyf pick. I like the Negate. Um, mm -hmm. So you're going to play Sneak Attack and Through the Breach, or are you going to... That's the plan, because um, I really do want to either... Yeah, I mean, you're going to World Spire Worm someone or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Cool. So. Uh, awesome. And well, some early hate. So, so what do you think your record's going to be? Are we seeing a 7-0? Um, no. <laughs> um, if I go 3-4, and four, I would be happy. 3-4? So, that's not bad. Yeah. Well, I believe in you, Joe. Uh, Thank you. Appreciate it. I hope you do well. Could you bring in, by the way, on your way out, uh, could you bring in Cody? Sure. Awesome, man. Appreciate it. Thank yep. you. All right. That was Joe Wisdom. We're going to bring in Cody real quick, and then uh, Dex should be getting constructed right now, and we'll be starting pretty soon. All right, guys. Uh, up next is Cody, uh, who had the... Reanimator deck. Hey, Cody. Come on in. I uh, got the headphones right there for you, and it's on mute, and you can just click that middle button in the middle. Uh, just keep going down, that, that big one. Yep. All right, Cody. So, you drafted Reanimator. I did. Uh, how you feel? Uh, pretty good. Uh, I was kind of sad that Jeff took LED, but, I mean, yeah, I had, I mean, it's I had kinda, to take a pick. Your deck doesn't really work with LED, does it? Uh, I can do some fun stuff with it, but yeah, it's probably, I valued it too high, maybe. For sure. Uh, well, I'm going to get up chat real quick, and then I'm going to look through. Yeah, so, first question, uh, Carrick, why so early? Uh, ever since that card got spoiled, I've just loved it. Um, Alright, so a little bit of a fan pick. I yeah, guess. basically. You could have had it at 45th, is what they were trying to yeah, say. Yeah, I mean, but I had to make the statement with the Villas yeah, yeah, at 45th. Um, 
But, For sure. Yeah, I mean, just... Um, are you going to be playing Villas main deck? Yeah, probably, because oh, cool. re reanimate, yeah, draw eight when I cast it. Um, that is true. So uh, it just gives right, me some so power. Let's look at the early. I actually really liked your first three picks. Mm -hmm. Four to a degree, but I really liked your first three picks. Yeah. Um, Jet, where it went, that was good. Soul Ring, that was mm -hmm. good. Uh, the only thing that really got skipped for you was Time Walk, but you weren't playing a Time Walk deck. Was right. Enough, but whatever. Yeah, I... Uh, Vampiric Tutor, also very good. Uh, so, we have three picks, and then you were lucky enough to pretty much be... The only one only doing it. black player right. at the table, which usually is not the experience. Mm -hmm. So congrats on that. Uh... Sire of Insanity was one of your reanimator targets. Yes. So that's you. Let's go over your reanimator targets. What is Carrick? Uh, I'll pull up Carrick on the chat real quick for you guys. Uh, Carrick is a new commander card. Uh, basically, it means all your black mana can get paid with Phyrexian mana, if I remember correctly. Correct. Yeah. Uh, should upload. Should be on chat for you guys if you want to see what Carrick is. Uh, so we have Grizzlebrand, obviously. Right. We have Iona, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, Chainer, Nightmare Adept. I thought that was actually one of your better picks. I really liked that yeah. pick. Yeah, Ch Chainer. I don't know how your your man is okay for it. Yeah. Uh, but you'll make it work, honestly. I right. Think. Um, I don't know how much I feel, honestly, about the Liliana five mana and the heretical killer Liliana. What were those? Picks? Um, it just I was kind of running out of steam. Um. Yeah. Kind of unsure. Uh, I always... No one did pick Inquisition, yes. Uh, which, yeah, it's fine. Duress um, probably was the better pick. Anyways. Yeah, I did a, uh, a vintage cube draft, and Liliana Death Majesty was... Phenom. Phenomenal. Yeah, so. that's fair. Yeah, I mean, she's a very good Planeswalker. Yeah. Uh, I like the Cabal Therapy. Yogwill. I guess, like, if you lose your reanimate, you get to go for it again type yeah. of thing? Yeah, yeah, basically. All right, cool. Um, Entomb, good. Uh, do you have any other graveyard fillers besides... Uh, uh, Chainer and Entomb? I took Packrat um, is a good yeah, graveyard right. filler. And Faithless Loot. Uh, and the Stitcher Supplier yeah, yeah, yeah. does okay, some cool, work. Cool. Uh, Collective Brutality also lets me discard yeah. some cards. No one picked the rest either. I, I'm aware. Uh, <laughs> in chat, I was kind of like, I can't believe no one's taking all these great green and black cards. And right. no one was playing red, so whatever. Uh, no one was playing red. So you got a lot of rituals. Mm -hmm. For a second there, I thought you were going to start doing Storm stuff. I'll be honest, uh, which I was very glad you didn't. Cause yeah, I, 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 I thought about it, and then I was just like, I it's kind of hard to pull off, and no real payoff for it. Yeah. So. Cool, cool. Um, any picks where you were just like, oh my god, why did I make that pick? Anything that you were like, oh Jesus, what am I doing here? Um, the frantic search was a little iffy. Um, it helps me fill my graveyard, though, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I'm going to run it. Um, yeah. How many... Uh, Reanimator targets? Do you think you're gonna run? You're gonna run. Um. We're, you're definitely gonna run. Uh. I'm sorry. You're definitely gonna run Iona. Yes, and Gristlebrand. And Gristlebrand. Um. Probably carry. Er Obviously, only Villas. Is <laughs> <laughs> yes. Chat. Uh, chat. Only one hundred percent Villas all the time. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Um. So you're gonna run those two. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think you should run Liliana just because it's a value card. Pack right. Rat, you're playing. Right. Probably. Uh, where is it? I don't think Ashen you're on Tides about. Okay. I don't know if you're on Tides about. It's yeah. a pretty tough card. To play. Well, I was I was looking at it, and my mana curve at that point was basically one and two costs, so mm -hmm. it felt okay. And with the rituals in Yogg, I can just chain spells to bounce everything if sure. I have to. But uh, it might be a sideboard situation. Bring in against certain decks. For sure. Well, how are you feeling? Are you feeling pretty confident? Um, okay-ish. <laughs> on a scale of one to eight, how would you say you did on this draft? Uh, considering it was my first one? Yes. Um, one being the best, eight being the worst. Probably three or four. You heard it, guys. He thinks he drafted better than five other players. Uh, no, I'm we'll joking. Um, how do you think you're going to go? What do you think your record's going to be? Uh, hopefully not 0-7. Hopefully uh, not 0-7. I don't think you're going to go 0-7. I think you'll probably do okay. Yeah, I mean... I bet it's going to be like a 4-3. Top four, half three. at least. Yeah, I, I could see a 4-3, maybe a 5-2 out of this. Like, mm -hmm. There's a couple decks I think you just don't match up super well with. Yeah, Like um, Jeff's deck, I don't know how you really interact with. Yeah, but, Jeff's uh, deck is kind of hard. Uh, also, uh, Steven's deck uh, with the Leyline of Void is... Yes, the he's going to be main decking Leyline of Void. Yes. Almost, certainly. It's, yeah. Well, especially since he has the um, Home of Obedience. Do you have any... Yeah, it's exactly... Do you have any way of really 
interacting with that? I know you're a monoplactic. So uh, that's why you took the Assassin's Trophy. Yeah. Um, just, and the Twilight Mire. Um, just pray. So, yeah, just pray. Yeah, and then, like, a forest, I guess. Right. With your Field of Ruin. Uh, yeah, Field of Ruin. I mean, I have... Uh, I have the Twilight Mire, which is okay, yeah. but it's not fetchable, so it's kind of rough. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see. Well, uh, I wish you luck. I think you'll be fine. Okay. Uh, congrats on your first V, <laughs> sorry, STL VRD. Yep. That's what it, we like to say is the cool kids. Um, <laughs> I think you're doing great. Uh, good luck. And did you have a name for this deck? I was just calling it Reanimator. Reanimator is fine. All right, yep. cool. Uh, so I currently calling Brandon's deck Eric's Anime Club. <laughs> um, we got Eggs, Abzan Vizier, yep. Blue White Control, Mono Blue Control. I think mm -hmm. it's going to be fun. I think... Uh, a, lot of, a lot of different decks. A lot of different decks. I was really shocked how little Red got drafted, honestly. I, I was too, actually. Like, honestly, no one would have faulted you if, like, after, like, pick four, you looked around and you like, I'm going to do Mono Red. Screw it. <laughs> like... Like, Could be just take all the tutors and just mono red it. Just mono red it. Like just yeah, you got your jet, you got your soul ring, and you took like the two tutors, and you like you look around like there's no one playing <laughs> red. Screw it, I'm gonna take goblin. Uh, goblin guide. Go no goblin. Um, the three mana one. Uh, the rival master. Yeah, ra I'm just taking goblin rival master. I'm just gonna start laying. Just, just turn one like, rival like, master. Because like, no one's gonna fight you on those cards. No. Games would be quick. Games would be real quick. Yeah, it's like you do that, and like Hagen's just like, oh no, like, I'm so dead. <laughs> right, just dies before he does yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You, I feel like that's the funny part is like uh, Brandon's deck is Sultai Mist stuff. <laughs> no, 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 Brandon's deck is Eric's Anime Club, uh, also known as Sultai Mist stuff. Um, yeah, no, 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 I feel like you would have just like one, two, three. You would have just decimated four people and the five people, and then just gotten your teeth kicked in by two of them. <laughs> like, Probably yeah. that's exactly what would have happened to you. Yep. You would have lost so bad to the combo decks, and then so like, bad, no interaction at all. Yeah, you're just like, yep. does Bolt stop this <laughs> eggs deck from going off? No, no it does okay. not. Hmm. A braid might, but no. Yeah, no. Brandon is gonna win a couple of random games with these two card combos. He's just gonna draw them. He's just be like, all right, good luck. It'll be interesting. Well, uh. Thanks again. I think your deck's getting built for you, which seems pretty nice, honestly. Uh, I believe in you. I think you're going to do great. Uh, and, yeah, you feel free to go out there and kill him. Okay. We'll have you on camera at some point today. And, okay. And uh, I assume perfect place. Probably not, but we'll see. I said I assume perfect place, and <laughs> okay. that's all you get. Okay. Uh, all right, man. Well, thanks. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. All right. Yeah, could you mute the mic when you're out? Yeah, cool. Thanks. Looking at pick... 11 time twister it's sad to see how the mighty have fallen yeah i think his deck is pretty solid um are you talking about cody's deck or are you talking about brandon's deck there uh i guess is where i should say i think there were some mistakes in this draft i agree this is a really hard format to do talking about brandon's uh <laughs> around 13 thoughtsies yeah, um, Brandon's deck has a bunch of two-card combos that can steal a game. I don't know how consistent it's going to be. That's, I think, his biggest problem. I see he was going for kind of a meme. He wanted to draft a Gravestorm deck because he thought it would have been hilarious, which is like, hey, more power to him. Uh, can we officially cut Time Sister from Power 9 and Soul Ring instead? <sighs> Probably. Uh, the thing about Time Sister is it's just so hard to use correctly. It's so hard to do. Oh, hey, sorry, I missed a few people. Uh, Crazed Carl, thanks for following. Uh, Halen, I uh, appreciate the follow as well. And then Vintage Mountain Goat, that's a great name. Uh, thanks for following, I really appreciate it. Uh, DT and Two Wheels seems distant. No, like, I agree, like, I think he's going to be able to find the cards to his combos, but the problem is I don't know how fast he is, and people just don't pick lands. I 100% agree with you. Uh, not enough lands were drafted easily. Like, and that's happened in pre prior drafts, and then some people do it instead. Like, I drafted a mono green deck that had 13 non basic lands. Uh, I was very happy with how it ended up. I think I like five two'd it, uh, but whatever. Um, nice, yeah, humble brag. That's all I do. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we have, I don't know. Uh, Brandon's going to do struggle against decks that can counterspell his things. What made it work? Uh, what made it work was I was the only mono green player on the table. I was pack one, Black Lotus. 
Yes, it was VRD. Uh, one. I was pack one Black Lotus, and then I took Channel Strip Mine as my second and third pick and looked at the table and said, I dare you to take a green card. Uh, and they didn't take any green cards. And um, how would this change if there were 16 players instead? One, it would take so much longer. Uh, I don't think people realize this was almost a three-hour event. Like, obviously, the drafters get faster as they do this more. The first time you draft this, it's really hard to draft. You just There's so many things. Your brain freezes up. Um, when have I just got wrecked? Uh, I'll explain a few of those stories while I kill some time. Uh, so 16 players, there'd be a lot more dilution. There'd be a few more combo decks, and there'd be a lot more two-deck colors two color decks like there you'd see more red you'd see more white you'd see like a green white deck probably that had some stack pieces or something like that uh things would be a little bit rougher because the power nine still exists even in soul ring so those final like five or six drafters are really missing out on some of those like super powerful cards in portland we do a synchronous rotisseries that take a couple weeks to do the draft position don't think we could scrounge up 16 players though uh, yeah, that'd be cool. The 17th VRD should be 16 players, the winners of the previous ones. Add twos is needed. Oh, that would be so cool. If we get to 17 of these, oh man, I'd do that. Oh, I mean, how did your green deck work? Mono G usually I think is weak because it lacks interaction and speed. So you played, I played all of the elves, um, like the Noble Hierarchs and the Land of War Elves. I played like five or six of those in my main deck. I played three main board copies of Rexage. Uh... Cool, thank you. Uh, just as a heads up, the first round is going to be Caterberg versus Hagen. Uh, that'll be starting in just a minute. Uh, so that was my interaction, just destroying artifacts. And then I had the ability to begin strip locking people on turn one uh, with Black Lotus and Strip Mine. Uh, so I literally just didn't allow people to play Magic. That was how I did it. I played Mono Green, and then I would natural order for Hoof if I had to. Uh, but honestly, I won several games just beating in with a Rex Age while my opponent had zero lands. Uh, which is not the traditional way Mono Green wins, but it was what was open for me. Uh, it was great. The only games I really lost was when I mulled into Oblivion, because I literally couldn't draw a land to save my life. <laughs> um, like, I was unable to cast one of my six one-mana uh, elves, <laughs> like, multiple games, and I was just like, this sucks. Um, I had a great time. All right, so guys, I'm going to set up the OBS real quick. I'm still looking at chat, but as I said, it's going to be Hagen versus Caterberg in the first uh, you can always check out the draft order. Are you commentating with me? Awesome. Uh, come and join us. I think Eric's taking a break. He sat here for like four hours straight. Uh, there's your headset. I'll change everything up in just a sec. Uh, could you shut the door? Actually, that's 